Je les salue. Hein? Voilà. Bonjour, chers collègues. Euh, je vous en prie. Permettez que nous prenions 15 minutes pour mettre tout le point à l'ordre du jour.
Okavango Delta is a fragile ecosystem and remains one of Africa's most unspoiled and authentic wilderness areas. Its serpentine meanders from the Panhandle, resting deep in the Kalahari Sands, a home of flora and fauna, a home to many culture where men and beast live side by side. Play the guitar, let the sounds of your guitar resonate as I tell them about the beauty of my country. Ha. My brother, play the guitar. Let the sounds resonate as we tell them about the beauty of our country. Pouvons reprendre nos travaux. Nous pouvons reprendre nos travaux, chers collègues. Good morning. Salut. Nous pouvons reprendre nos travaux. Comme d'habitude, nous observons une minute de méditation ou de prière silencieuse. Merci, chers collègues. Nous commençons notre travaux, nos travaux de séjour par une série de communications. Je voudrais vous annoncer de l'utilisation de la plateforme Zoom. L'étiquette et la documentation. Honorable membre, puisque nous nous réunissons virtuellement, je souhaite annoncer les directives et l'étiquette suivante concernant l'utilisation de la plateforme Zoom au cours de cette session. À garder le microphone en sourdine. Après que la parole leur soit donnée, les membres sont priés de garder leur microphone en sourdine. S'agissant de l'interprétation, la réunion se déroule dans les trois langues officielles, à savoir l'anglais, le français et le portugais. L'application Zoom dispose d'une fonction d'interprétation. Dans la barre de mini, au bas de votre écran, cliquez sur l'icône « Interprétation ». Sélectionnez la langue de votre choix et cliquez sur « Désactiver l'audio original ». Si les honorables députés souhaitent prendre la parole 
pendant le débat, ils sont priés d'utiliser la fonction « lever la main » accessible en cliquant sur le menu de participants. Concernant la communication avec le président, veuillez utiliser la boîte de dialogue pour communiquer avec le président. S'agissant de l'étiquette de la réunion, tous les membres sont tenus d'être filmés pendant toute la durée de nos travaux. En assemblée plénière, à des fins de diffusion en direct. Les membres du secrétariat et du personnel de soutien devront désactiver leurs vidéos et couper leur audio. S'agissant de la documentation, il est rappelé aux délégués que toute la documentation relative réunion est disponible dans les trois langues officielles et peut être consultée sur le portail fourni par le secrétariat. Le 29, s'agissant de l'anniversaire de l'indépendance d'un de nos États, à savoir les Seychelles. Les Seychelles va commémorer le 45e anniversaire de son accession à la souveraineté nationale et internationale le 29 juin 2021. Je souhaite au gouvernement au et au peuple de Seychelles, un joyeux anniversaire des 45 ans de leur souveraineté. Concernant les annonces par le président, afin d'optimiser les temps de parole et de permettre à davantage de membres de débattre, le temps de parole des membres a été porté à quatre minutes, conformément à l'article 33, paragraphe 3 du règlement intérieur. Il est rappelé aux honorables députés que pour des raisons de précision et l'enregistrement du procès verbal, ils doivent toujours communiquer leur nom, leur pays, lorsqu'ils sont appelés à prendre la parole. Y a-t-il d'avis de motion S'il y a des collègues qui ont d'avis de motion, ils peuvent prendre la parole. Indeed, Honorable President, we have notice of motions from Honorable Rosie Bistoke. We also have a notice of motion from Honorable Marie Anne Marie Bilambangu. A notice of motion from Honorable Marie Jean Damasi Bulamali from Madagascar. We may proceed in that order, Honorable President. D'accord, merci. On commence par l'Honorable Bozi. Honorable Bozi, vous avez la parole. Il sera suivi de l'Honorable Anna Marie. Bon, euh, merci, le, Monsieur le Président. Bonjour, Monsieur le Président. Bonjour, tous les membres honorables. Et bonjour, tous les membres du secrétariat de, de SADEC. Euh, 
de toute façon, je présente toutes mes excuses pour la séance de hier qui avait terminé dans une façon non désagréable. Je suis convaincue que l'ordre du jour d'aujourd'hui sera bien respecté, Monsieur le Président. Alors, pour la part du gouvernement de Seychelles et des peuples seychellois et moi-même, le membre de l'Assemblée nationale de Seychelles, je vous remercie, Monsieur le Président, pour, faciliter, pour encore féliciter Seychelles avec, euh, à l'occasion de notre 45e anniversaire de notre indépendance. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Merci, merci. L'ordre du jour sera respecté. Merci, chers collègues. Merci beaucoup. Now I will, present, I will present my motion, Mr. The President. I'm Rosie Bistoke, Honorable Rosie Bistoke from the Republic of Seychelles. I give notice that today, Sunday, the 27th of June, 2021, I shall move that the 49th session plenary session assembly to adopt the report of the joint session of the Standing Committee on Food, Agriculture and Natural Resources, Human and Social Development, and special programs and gender equality, women advancement and um, youth development. I stand to move, Mr. The President. Merci. Nous allons la poursuivre. Dès que les deux collègues qui restent à intervenir auront terminé. Merci. Collègue Anna-Marie, vous avez la parole. Merci, Président, pour la parole m'accorder. Avis d'émotion. Je notifie que ce dimanche 27 juin 2001, je demande et la 49e Assemblée plénière adopte le rapport du caucus régional des femmes parlementaires. J'ai dit, Monsieur le Président. Merci. Nous avons bien noté et nous allons l'adopter. Honorable Jean d'Arc, Honorable Jean d'Arc de Madagascar. Euh, bonjour, euh, Monsieur le Président. Euh, merci de m'avoir euh, donné la parole et merci. Euh, bonjour euh, aux collègues euh, qui sont présents. Euh, je propose la motion à mon nom, Monsieur le Président. Merci. Merci, hmm? Merci Madame. Hmm? Merci, Madame. Merci, Madame. Merci, Madame. Merci, Merci, Madame. Excusez-moi, Monsieur le Président. Mmh. Euh, je peux oui. parler oui. Et oui. Je donne avis euh, qu'aujourd'hui, le 27 juin 2021, je propose que la 49e Assemblée plénière adopte le rapport du comité permanent sur l'égalité des sexes, la promotion de la femme et le développement de la jeunesse. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Excusez-moi. Merci. Nous, après ces motions, nous poursuivons nos travaux du fait que les deux motions qui ont été présentées par les deux collègues, que ce soit le motion, la motion relative à l'alimentation, l'agriculture, les ressources naturelles ou 
la motion relative au développement humain social, les programmes spéciaux de l'égalité des sexes, de la promotion des femmes et du développement de la jeunesse, ces deux motions font partie du sixième point que nous n'avons pas pu traiter hier et que nous traitons aujourd'hui. Donc, avant d'aborder l'ordre du jour de, de ce matin, terminons d'abord ces premiers problèmes qui viennent de faire l'objet de deux motions et euh, nous pouvons alors, je vais alors à mon tour donner la parole au secrétaire général pour qu'elle nous donne l'ordre du jour du sixième point. Le sixième point de l'ordre du jour que nous n'avons pas traité et nous commençons avec ce sixième point ce matin. Madame la secrétaire générale, vous avez la parole. Good morning, Honorable President. Thank you very much. Notice of motion of the report of the joint session of the standing committees on food, agriculture and natural resources human and social development and special programs, and gender equality, women advancement and youth development. Merci, Madame la Secrétaire Générale. Donc, il s'agit avis de motion pour l'adoption du rapport de la session conjointe le comité permanent de l'alimentation, de l'agriculture et des ressources naturelles, du développement humain et social et des programmes spéciaux et de l'égalité des sexes, de la promotion des femmes et du développement de la jeunesse par l'honorable Rossi Biscotec-Toc. Honorable Rossi Discothèque. Honorable Rossi, vous avez la part. Vous avez un avis de la motion? Merci. Merci, euh, Monsieur le Président. Euh, je m'appelle Rossi Bistoquet. Merci, Bistoquet. Monsieur le Président. Bistoquet, Merci. voilà. C'est ça. Oui. Euh, Monsieur le Président, I beg to move that this plenary assembly to adopt the report on the joint session of SADC PF standing committee on food, agriculture and natural resources, human and social development and special programs and gender equality, women advancement and youth development yeah. to the 49th plenary assembly session of the SADC parliamentary forum laid on the table of the house um, today. Four credentials, uh, we have a committee uh, of human resource and uh, I will proceed uh, with the, uh, the joint session itself. We have as chairperson of the committee, uh, Ms. Honorable um, uh, Helena Honorable Ndebele. The joint session was held under the theme social accountability and oversight of the implementation of the SADC regional commitments in the health and agriculture. The welcoming remark, the chairperson, Honorable Beta Ndebele, who is the chairperson of the committee, of the standing committee, thank all members. Um, and in presence, we have uh, the SG, uh, the Boemo uh, Sogema, Sogoma, the SG, uh, Miss uh, Julie Middleton, manager of uh, PSA consortium, consortium, and her team as well of all resource persons, for affording time to participate into the joint session. Um, Honorable Ndebele noted that the SADC had adopted many robust protocols that contain the region's development goals in different thematic areas. In her welcoming address, this is uh, the SG, 
stated that the meeting was timely given the social and economic importance of both health and agriculture sector sectors in the Sadek region, which had since 2020 been profoundly affected by the COVID-19 epidemic. I will go further to um, uh, the, uh, the uh, number five, strengthening social accountability into the Sadek region the background on PSA Alliance and highlights of the 2019 Regional Budget Summit Committee, Julie Middleton, Consultant Project Manager of PSA Alliance. Ms. Julie Tan Middleton expressed her gratitude for the opportunity to engage with MPs and inform the joint session that the Partnership for Social Accountability Alliance was aimed at improving accountability and gender responsiveness in public health management particularly in the areas of HIV AIDS and sexual reproductive health services for adolescents and youth and agriculture provision of services to smallholder farmers. Ms. Middleton informed the meeting that the PSA hoped to achieve its objective through the facilitation of implementation of its oversight selected SADC regional commitments across the five SADC countries, namely Malawi, Mozambique, Tanzania, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. She also stated that the PSA project interventions were principally guided by the promotion of social accountability system that was based on the integrated five-stage process, namely planning and resource allocation, expenditure management, performance management, public integrity, and oversight. Mr. The President, enhancing social accountability into the implementation of SADC regional commitments through public sector service uh, accountability monitoring, Mr. Mr. Rachel Ngongo. Mr. Ngondo informed the meeting that the PSAMA, PSAM, was committed to work with interested multisectorial groups in order to understand and contribute to addressing particular social problems originating from systematic public resource management failures. She highlighted that most of the problems emanated from the poor policy formulation and implementation, misuse and abuse of public resources and disagreements between technocrats and politicians regarding the type and focus of service delivery mechanisms. She stated that it was imperative for public resource management we should include a functional social accountability monitoring mechanism that ensure the provision of adequate access to goods and services, as well as the realization of civil, political, and economic rights. In that regards, um, uh, we adopted uh, uh, the right-based approach to the social accountability monitoring tool. The tool was helpful in the sense that it dealt with critical issues and questions at every stage of the process. I will go further because uh, the report is quite uh, comprehensive, Mr. President. Interrogating SADC commitments on sexual reproductive health and rights for adolescents and youth people, Mr. Percy Ingwerume, social accountability specialist, made a presentation on interrogating SADC commitments on sexual reproductive health and rights for adolescents and young people, he indicated that the SADC region was under obligation to fulfill the sexual reproductive health and rights commitment, which was made at different levels. At a global level, the re region had a commitment to realize the objectives of the Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs, especially goal three, number three, on health, and number five, on then gender equality. It was noted that the SGs, SDGs 4 and 10, as well as the 1990 HIV treatment target, were also important in the attainment of sexual reproductive health and rights objectives. At the continental level, the region was a party to Agenda 2063. The Africa We Want revised Maputo Plan of 2016, 20, 2030, and the Abuja Declaration on Health Funding. Plenary deliberations that went on, they were the re following recommendations. In ensuring deliberation, the meeting resolved the followings. A, noted the financial limitations that had led to the project being confined to five countries 
and the indirect benefit of the other countries to the work of the SADC PF plenary assembly sessions and joint committee meetings, members pleaded projects in the future to include all SADC countries. B, express support for the work of the PSA Alliance in promoting public awareness for increased and social accountability in project countries. C, reiterated that the challenge in the agricultural sector of declining productivity despite increase in funding needed to be urgently addressed. D, noted that some instruments such as Agricultural Food Security Vision 2050 were too futuristic and it's presented monitoring and evaluation challenges. E, lamented, we lamented on the lack of SADC regional rural development policy and strategy, adding that this needed to be addressed. F, reiterated that the SADC governments needed to have political will and capacity to meet the respective stated financial targets for health and agriculture. We welcome the SADC PF's innovation of developing and adopting model laws to facilitate domestication and regional commitments. G, loaded the focus on agriculture, especially small older farmer farming, which was predominantly spearheaded by women in view of the fact that the SADC was generally food insecure due to climate change now exacerbated by the COVID-19. FH noted with concern the prevalence of malnutrition and obesity and called on governments to address through food security and nutritional programs. I called her for smallholder farmers to be supported beyond mere subsistence and grow food for the market. J called for the social accountability in the SADC region to be enhanced through continuous capacity building around the five key processes, and this should be in turn addressed systematically through public resource management failures. And K called for strengthening of the policy advocacy engagements at the regional, national, and local levels in order to ensure the effective implementation of regional commitments in health, sexual reproductive health services, and agriculture. Uh, number six, implication of the social accountability challenges in the service delivery, a focus on food security and agricultural services for smallholder farmers was done by Mr. Joe Mzinga. And uh, Mr. Mzinga focused on ac social accountability gaps in the provision of agricultural services and proposed action that parliamentarians could undertake stated that planning and resource allocation suffered from lack of consultation, resulting in priorities of smallholder farmers being exhausted from the process. The meeting was informed that there was a lack of planning and reporting frameworks at district level and ministerial levels of the SADC countries were generally not allocated through money on research and development. The general lack of data with official reports lacking the necessary statistics for stakeholders to engage meaningfully was stated as one of the existing challenges. There was a strong call of action which was made on SADC countries to endeavor to realize the set target of 10% allocation to the agriculture sector, sector and domestic resources should gradually replace reliance on external resources. Uh, if we go to the implication of social accountability challenges in service delivery, a focus on sexual reproductive health for adolescents and young people presented by Percy Nguerume, social accountability specialist. Mr. Nguerume stated that although the African Union, AU countries in 2001 agreed to commit the at least 15% of their annual budgets to improve the health sector, the current average annual allocation was about 5.3%. The dilemma of financing the health sector was amongst other things exacerbated by the global recession in emanating from the effects of COVID-19, the decline in donor funding, corruption, and misalignment of priorities 
respective SADC ministries of health and other implementing agencies should be made to account for any compromises regarding the management of public resources, as well as their failure to implement the recommendations from the author, Auditor General, Ombudsmen's, Parliamentary Committees, and other public integrity institutions. At the same time, he also stated that Parliament should review the introduced laws that could reduce the cost of essential HIV and sexual reproductive health life-saving commodities. Laws should be, as he stated, um, enacted to ensure access to and adequate utilization of sexual reproductive health and HIV services by um, adolescents and young people. At the plenary session, the, the following discussions were made and those are the recommendations. The meeting del uh, deliberated and resolved as follows. A, raise concern that the general health questioning being administered with COVID-19 vaccination seems to be compromised people's confidentiality. B, noted with the concern that young people had to obtain parental consent before accessing sexual reproductive health services, as such as family planning, adding that me a mechanism could be found to address parental concerns while enabling young people to freely access sexual reproductive health services. C, it was urged to select governments and stakeholders in the health and agricultural sectors to ensure broad-based participation in the provision of sexual reproductive health services, pre-budget consultations, and program implementation in the health and agricultural sectors should identify and include priorities of intended beneficiaries. D, it was called for youth, people with disability, and other vulnerable groups to be specifically be catered for in terms of budget allocations and for the young part youth participation in pre-budget and other development initiative consultations to be equal to the benefits they will draw from these initiatives. E expressed concern that up to 70% of national budget in the SADC region are extremely support, externally supported by donors and called on SADC countries to as, address the capacity gaps in review collection and leakages through illicit financial flows. G called F, sorry, called on countries to revisit some of the tax incentives they give to multinationals and examine the overall benefits to the country. Public private partnership or PPPs should be explored as they held potential addressing capacity and investment gaps, and they were important for improving service delivery. And at the same time, we called for human resource audits to be undertaken in order to address public resources loss through ghost workers, resources were often lost through uh, incomplete capital projects and failure, and the failure to optimally use such projects upon completion, and this should be addressed. H urge parliamentary parliaments to investigate public institutions, uptake of audit and other recommendations and propose corrective measures. The audit of public institutions and the oversight work of the Public Accounts Committee should be done timelessly to ensure that corrective measures are taken immediately. The role of SADC parliamentary in enhancing social accountability in the implementation of regional agreements. Mr. Shuneni Kash Kurashi, SADC PF Program Manager for Democracy and Governance Parliamentary Business for, for Focal Person. Mr. Kurashi informed the meeting that Africa's economic regionalism was from the beginning led by the executive and characterized by shallow institutional frameworks to the inclusion of other branches of the state such as the judiciary and the legislature. SADC identified and expressed commitment to work in different thematic areas and the SADC PF accordingly established programs and standing committees, which were in tandem with the SADC's thematic areas. Mr. Kurashi informed the meeting that the SADC PF championed the promotion of implementation of regional commitments through the work of standing committees, the Regional Parliamentary, Parliamentary Model Law Oversight Committee, 
and the uh, uh, Women's Committee, Regional Women's Committee, these structures as well as the plenary assembly sought to ensure that the parliamentary perspective on matters of the model laws. The resolutions by the SADC parliamentarians were shared with national parliaments, which in turn share them with minister member states. Resolutions of the plenary assembly were particularly important for drawing the attention of member states to critical matters that affect the region including issues of health and agriculture. Mr. President, I beg to move. Thank you. Je félicite Madame l'honorable Rossi Bistoquet pour cette brillante présentation. À présent, je vais permettre à l'honorable Talita Mona Gotala de débattre de l'appui à la motion. Honorable Talita, vous pouvez intervenir. Thank you, Mr. President. Can I? Madam President, I rest to support the motion on the report of, of the joint session of the SADC PF Standing Committee on Food, Agriculture, and Natural Resources, Human and Social Development, and Special Programs, and Gender Equality, Women advancement and youth development what that has been ably moved by the honorable Bertha Ndebele, the chairperson of the HSDSP committee. Mr. President, I support the mover of the motion. Even before the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, both the health sector and agriculture sectors in the southern region have been experiencing challenges. The COVID-19 pandemic has merely worsened the situation. Therefore, there's no better time than now to enhance social accountability and oversight of these two critical sectors. Mr. President, with regard to the health sector, let me clarify a pertinent, a pertinent point that has been made by the mover of the motion. In light of the increased COVID-19 infections in the Southern region, it is now a matter of urgency that certain countries access the COVID-19 vaccine. The onus, therefore, is for the national parliaments to ensure effective 
implementation through greater social accountability and oversight. Mr. President, let me also underscore another important matter that the mover earlier alluded to. There's a lot of potential that resides in smallholder farmers that if properly harnessed could improve some of the food insecurities that the region faces. However, in most cases, smallholder farmers are not consulted in the planning process resulting in their priorities being excluded from the process. I therefore support the proposal that smallholder farmers, especially women, should be engaged meaningfully in the agriculture sector. Mr. President, finally, I clarify the movers' sentiments that the government needs to have the political will and capacity to meet the respective stated financing targets for both the health and agriculture sectors. Mr. President, I second the motion. Thank you. Merci, Honorable Talita. Je soumets ce rapport à débat. Les membres qui souhaitent prendre la parole doivent l'indiquer en utilisant la fonction « Lever la main » sur la plateforme Zoom. Honorables membres, nous vous rappelons que pour des raisons de précision de l'enregistrement du procès verbal, vous devez toujours communiquer votre nom, votre pays, lorsque vous êtes appelé à prendre la parole. Le débat est ouvert. Ces des collègues qui veulent intervenir peuvent se faire déjà inscrire. Quel pays? Namibie. Hello. Celestial. Good morning. Honorable members and Sadek fraternity. Am I audible? Um, okay, thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Philippus Vido Catamelo from Namibia. Uh, just two or three comments first on the report that is before us. Um, the, the first is uh, the report, I don't know, maybe as a newcomer, will be, I might be ruled out of order. But uh, I just wanted to allude that Honorable uh, number seven and number 10 is exactly the same person from Madagascar. For the sake of respect, not pronouncing the names differently, I will maybe just stop there and say, maybe just a correction on that one. Number seven and number 10 is exactly the same person. Uh, furthermore, the report indicates on the page four, two, that the joint session was chaired by Honorable Bertan de Bele, but uh, it is under the signature or submitted to us under the signature of Master Andre Leon Tumba. So maybe they, I don't know, but I know Master Andre is in, uh, 
uh, chairperson of the Committee on Food, Agriculture, uh, and so, and this was a joint committee, maybe just a correction in that. And on the issue, substantial issue I wanted to raise, uh, as a member of the Agricultural Committee, it's commendable that we've got an envisage, uh, and it, I read verbatim to say a strong call of action was made on certain countries to endeavor to realize the set target of 10% allocation to agricultural sector and domestic resources should go gradually replace reliance on external resources. And on one of the key emphasis, maybe 10% is the measure in, in terms of input, but we should also have some kind of a safeguarding mechanism or monitoring and evaluation as to per se, when we reach a study countries, the 10% of allocation of the budget to agriculture, what is the output? What is the envisage output? What is the benefit? For example, if a country like ours, let me take, uh, for example, if Namibia is at 5% and the agricultural output contributes, for example, 1% to GDP, it will automatically imply that when we reach 10%, there will be a significant increase in terms of the GDP contribution of that particular sector. So I just wanted to tie in to say, as much as we look at the 10% as an input factor, we should also maybe create within SADC an evaluation of all those set targets so as to achieve. And this goes also to the health sector and any other sector. Uh, I think with that, uh, I stop short of the uh, comments and then really comment to say the drive of agriculture is the only one that will lead us for self-sustainable and food security for our people. Thank you. S'il n'y a plus d'intervenants, je redonne la parole à l'honorable Rossi Istoquette pour répondre aux préoccupations du collègue de la Namibie. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, thank you for the uh, intervention throughout the debates. Mr. Philip from uh, uh, Namibia, um, uh, you are just my, like myself, I'm a newcomer. I uh, was administered the oath in um, October 2020, so I'm just new, just like yourself. And of course, when it comes to the duplication of members, which is true, there needs to be a correction of number seven and number 10. Uh, for Madagascar. And uh, the other one is the signature on uh, the, uh, the, the report. Um, uh, we mentioned that uh, the chairperson, Bertan Debele, was a chairperson, and that the, the report was signed by Andre, Honorable Andre Leomba, and probably the secretariat would have uh, a response to that one. In relation to number four, the last question. The 10 percent, the 10 percent increase in agricultural uh, finances versus uh, the donor factors, and uh, of course, like you mentioned, you rightly said, Mr. Philip, uh, there should be an evaluation by the SADC um, uh, to ensure that uh, once the the limit has been reached, what next? So this again, I will leave with the uh, the committee to decide upon the new uh, um, uh, meetings. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Merci, merci. Merci par ces réponses. Le débat sur ce rapport est clos. Je mets alors au voix l'adoption du rapport de la session conjointe des comités permanents d'alimentation.
de l'agriculture et des ressources naturelles, du développement humain et social et des programmes spéciaux et de l'égalité des sexes, de la promotion des femmes et du développement de la jeunesse. Y a-t-il d'objections Honorable President, there's a new hand from the delegation of Namibia. It has been up. Collègue de la Namibie, vous avez la parole. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'm again very sorry that Namibia is taking a second bite at the cherry. Uh, my hand was up before. I just don't know why I wasn't recognized. Um, I want to really thank the honorable member for the report that has been moved. It's very informative and very encouraging to see that um, SADC is moving towards setting targets of, of, of expenditure in our agricultural, agricultural sector. Sometimes when you look at the various and respective national budgets, um, it's quite laughable when we don't allocate enough money, yet we talk about self-sustainability. My voice today, one wants to add to the involvement of the youth and the young people in agriculture and food production. It is so that agriculture in many instances uh, is seen to be an elder male um, fraternity, just like sometimes you have the legal fraternities in the respective countries' uh, views. Uh, in, in perhaps because it, it has become or it is quite unattractive to the, to, to, to the younger people, maybe because of the hardships and the hard work that is associated with it, but also cardinally access to land in terms of uh, a young person. Uh, in, many, uh, in many countries, and the laws in many countries makes it pretty hard, and here we focus on especially women, but it is the same, the same goes for the young person. Maybe it is about time that we as a SADC body or, or SADC countries put place in measures in place that ensures that, attract, that, that agriculture becomes attractive to the young person. Make it easy for young people to access and to be able to afford land. Make it easy as Asari countries to ensure that we mechanize our agricultural sector, that the young people know that well, the days of hard work in terms of agriculture is perhaps long gone. That now, is, as a young person, if you go into agriculture, the government is able to, through, I suppose, this 10% or perhaps more, be able to subsidize your agricultural venture, be able to give you machinery to embark successfully on, on, on in, in the agricultural sector. If we do this, and we know that it's now a threat and common cause that the African continent has the youngest uh, population. And it is very opportune for us as SADC to harness the imagination and the energy of the youth to ensure that we become self-sustainable. In as much as we are encouraging women to take part in these ventures, in these ventures, it is pretty important that we do not let go of the opportunity that we have in terms, in terms of the youth youth energy and imagination. Lastly, um, uh, Mr. President, if I may be allowed, uh, I want to add my voice to what the Honorable Katamelo next uh, indicated, that we must perhaps map, map out the objectives that we want. And it also talks to the interdependence of certain countries in Africa with, from one another in terms of production. One example that one wants to use in, in respect of Namibia itself, our biggest export market for the Namibian beef, which I happen to think is very much in demand, I'm talking about beef, um, is the, the European market. Yet 
you have such a huge hunger for meat in countries like DRC and, and, and all these other southern countries. Perhaps it, it is then important to start mapping out our agricultural needs and outputs to ensure that our investments are targeted towards, uh, to, towards supplying one another in certain countries and thereby enlarging markets for, for countries that, that really have small populations. You have Botswana, you have, you have Namibia with populations of less than 3 million. Uh, if we if we if we if we map out the needs of our agricultural needs in the respective countries, we will be able to invest uh, or make our investments in such a way that firstly we can produce for us as SADC before we can start exporting. And if we do that, we actually uh, enhance our bargaining ability with these export markets or outside export markets like Europe, like China in the US, uh, in the US. Uh, sorry, Mr. President, I forgot to, to, to indicate my name. My name is uh, Vipwa Kuye Muharukwa from Namibia. Thank you very much. Merci, colleague. Votre intervention est pertinente. Effectivement, nous devons créer des échanges d'informations sur nos richesses agricoles, économiques et autres. Et c'est aussi important de créer des conditions pour motiver les jeunes à s'adonner à l'agriculture. C'est important. C'est important. Cela étant, comme il n'y a plus d'autres intervenants et qu'il n'y a pas d'objection, le rapport de la session conjointe du comité permanent d'alimentation de l'agriculture des ressources naturelles du développement humain et social et des programmes spéciaux, ainsi que de l'égalité des sexes, de la promotion des femmes et du développement de la jeunesse et du mât adopté par l'Assemblée plénière. Honorable Président, chers collègues, Honorable parlementaire, distingués invités, nous voici donc arrivés à la fin de l'ordre du jour d'hier. Et nous allons maintenant passer à l'ordre du jour prévu pour aujourd'hui. Donc, nous commençons nos travaux avec un premier point à l'ordre du jour. J'invite Madame la Secrétaire générale à lire les premiers points à l'ordre du jour. Bien entendu que l'ordre du jour a été distribué à tout le monde. Vous connaissez l'ensemble des points que nous allons examiner au cours de cette séance. Madame la secrétaire générale, vous avez la parole. Thank you, Honorable President. Notice of motion for the adoption of the report of the Standing Committee on Democratization, Governance and Human Rights. Merci, Madame la Secrétaire générale. J'invite la présidente du Comité permanent de la démocratisation de la gouvernance et des droits de l'homme, l'honorable Jérôme Augustino, à présenter la motion pour l'adoption 
de, du rapport. Muito obrigada, senhor presidente. Bom dia, caros colegas. Senhor presidente, venho solicitar a aprovação por esta Assembleia Plenária do relatório da Comissão Permanente de Democratização, Governação e Direitos Humanos à 49 Assembleia do Foro Parlamentar da SEDEC apresentado à mesa desta Assembleia no dia 26 de junho de 2001. Quelqu'un appuie le rapport, la motion, s'il vous plaît. Quelqu'un d'autre qui appuie la motion. Hmm? Les collègues de l'Afrique du Sud. Vous avez la parole, chers collègues. Thank you, Honourable President. I rise to second the motion. Thank you very much. Merci, cher collègue. Je donne alors la parole à l'honorable Agostino pour présenter les rapports. Muito obrigada. Senhor Presidente, a Comissão Permanente de Democratização, Governação e Direitos Humanos, guiando-se pelo seu mandato disposto na linha D do artigo 42º do Regimento Interno do Fórum Parlamentar da SADEC, realizou a sua reunião estatutária em formato virtual, no dia 13 de abril de 2021, na ocasião das sessões dos, das comissões permanentes do Fórum Parlamentar da SADEC, no quadro da 49ª Assembleia Plenária, subordinada ao lema o papel do Parlamento na proteção do constitucionalismo e do Estado de Direito na África Austral. Perspectivas e desafios. Por questões de economia de tempo, não vou aqui apresentar a efetividade, temos todos o relatório. 3.0. Boas-vindas pela Presidente da Comissão. Na sua locução de abertura, a Presidente da Comissão, deputada Jerônima Agostinho, observou o constitucionalismo e o Estado de Direito estão no centro de uma democracia sustentável e os parlamentos são o fulcro da proteção. Para o efeito, declarou a reunião que os parlamentos devem servir-se do seu mandato constitucional para assegurar a observância dos vários princípios que sustentam o constitucionalismo e o primado de direito. Os referidos princípios, declarou a presidente da comissão, incluem a separação de poderes entre o parlamento, o executivo e o judiciário a independência do poder judiciário, as garantias processuais, os processos equitativos que, para aqueles que forem acusados de ofensas criminais, respeito pelos direitos individuais, responsabilização no processo
IT. Hello. We we seem to have lost Mozambique. Kindly give us a moment, Honorable President. D'accord. Vous avez quelques secondes. Is it we still conducting them? As the day begins to break, Mozambique is back, Honorable President. The President is muted, IT. D'accord, on poursuit alors notre homme. Madame, vous avez la parole. Continuez. Muito obrigada. A Presidente fez saber que tendo em consideração o que precede o foro parlamentar, tinha organizado esta sessão de desenvolvimento de capacidades sobre o papel do Parlamento na proteção do constitucionalismo e do primário de direito na África Austral, 
para os deputados membros da Comissão Permanente de Democracia, Governação, Direitos Humanos, membros de outras comissões permanentes do Foro Parlamentar da SADEC e parlamentos nacionais, a fim de, primeiro, aumentar o nível de conhecimento dos deputados sobre os princípios de constitucionalismo e primário de direito no sistema democrático. Segundo, identificar as oportunidades e os desafios a que os parlamentos fazem face no cumprimento de seu papel de proteger o constitucionalismo primário de direito através do intercâmbio de experiências comparativas. Terceiro, aumentar a capacidade dos parlamentos da SADEC de levar a cabo a sua responsabilidade constitucional de defender e protagonizar o constitucionalismo primário de direito. E quarto, criar consenso sobre as áreas prioritárias de ação com vista a reforçar o papel do Parlamento na proteção do constitucionalismo do primário de direito em todos os Estados-membros da SADEC. A presidente da comissão concluiu a sua locução manifestando a sua gratidão aos dois preletores, professor Lovimor Maduco e meritíssimo juiz Wangil, que foram convidados para orientar a sessão de criação de capacidades. Agradeceu também aos parceiros, a GZIZ e a Agência Austríaca de Desenvolvimento, pelo apoio financeiro para este evento. Desejou deliberações frutuosas a todos e declarou a reunião oficialmente aberta. Moção de solidariedade, apoio a Moçambique em face, em face da insurgência. A comissão <coughs> apreciou uma moção de consolidação de apoio a Moçambique em face da insurgência no norte daquele país. A moção que foi apresentada pelo vice-presidente da comissão, deputado Berga. Depois da deliberação sobre a moção, a comissão expressou a sua preocupação pelos textos da insurgência sobre os cidadãos, em particular mulheres e crianças. Isso a comissão decidiu. Alinear, manifestar a sua profunda preocupação pela deterioração da situação de segurança no norte de Moçambique, onde estava a decorrer a escala das hostilidades levando a vítimas mortais e afetando os cidadãos de todos os países da SADEC. Bem, reiterar a importância da paz e segurança em Moçambique e na região da SADEC para a segurança humana, a consolidação da economia e da democracia, bem como o desenvolvimento econômico. Recordar o projeto de resolução adotado pela 48ª Assembleia Plenária que apelava a SADEC para prestar apoio a Moçambique no sentido de paralisar os insurrentes. Congratular-se com a decisão da dupla troika da SADEC de 6 de abril de 2021 de enviar imediatamente assistência técnica a Moçambique para prestar apoio às Forças Armadas do país. Reiterar a importância da preservação da vida de uma ação rápida, visando a, a subjugar os insurentes e assegurar o regresso à normalidade para o cidadão comum e para, a trans, e para as transações de trocas comerciais. Enfatizar que Moçambique é um país irmão da SADEC e, como tal, tudo o que lhe acontece afeta a região toda e deve, portanto, ser uma preocupação de tudo. Suplicar os Estados-membros da SADEC para se apoiarem mutuamente e trabalharem juntos no sentido de fazer com que a situação em Moçambique fique sob controle, uma vez que o impacto seria sentido em toda a extensão da região. E recomendar à Assembleia Plenária para análise e adoção às resoluções da Comissão sobre a moção de solidariedade e apoio a Moçambique. Comunicações e deliberações 
sobre o papel do Parlamento na proteção do constitucionalismo do Estado de Direito na África Austral, perspectivas e desafios. A comissão acompanhou uma comunicação apresentada pelo professor Lovimor Maduco e uma intervenção do juiz Wangel sobre o papel do Parlamento na proteção do constitucionalismo e do Estado de Direito na África Austral, avaliando as perspectivas e os desafios. A comunicação ressaltou que o constitucionalismo se refere a uma situação em que há cumprimento das disposições do, da Constituição e pressupõe que a própria Constituição tem boas disposições ou limita o exercício do poder e restringe o abuso do poder. O constitucionalismo prende-se, portanto, com assegurar que há poder governamental limitado e que há freios e contrapesos no exercício do poder dentro dos limites estabelecidos pela Constituição. Relativamente ao Estado de Direito, foi esclarecido que este conceito implica igualdade perante a lei e, sendo assim, Toda a gente segue a lei e não faz nada fora dessa lei. Isto significa que existem leis antes do exercício do poder. E o exercício do poder deve derivar-se da lei. Contudo, não são todas as leis que subscrevem o Estado de Direito. As leis draconianas e antidemocráticas que retiram os direitos dos cidadãos não cumprem os requisitos do Estado de Direito. No que diz respeito ao papel dos parlamentos na proteção do constitucionalismo do Estado de Direito, foi enfatizado que o parlamento desempenha um papel central na salvaguarda da separação de poderes entre os três órgãos do Estado, nomeadamente o parlamento, o executivo e o judiciário. O Parlamento deve exercer os freios e os contrapesos sobre o Executivo e não, se, e não ser uma instituição que se limita a aprovar o que lhe é apresentado para a democracia prosperar. Um outro papel fundamental do Parlamento na proteção do constitucionalismo do Estado de Direito desempenha-se através da legislação. Por isso, os parlamentos não devem abrigar-se da sua responsabilidade principal de legislar mediante a delegação excessiva do referido papel, porque isso seria um atentado ao constitucionalismo e ao Estado de Direito. Os parlamentos devem também fazer com que o, o conteúdo das leis que fazem, proteja e não atropele os direitos dos cidadãos. Os parlamentos devem garantir que a democracia participativa não se limite às eleições, assegurando uma participação pública genuína e significativa na legislação e nos outros processos parlamentares. Foi também destacado que a maioria parte das constituições da NASADEC, tais como as da África do Sul e do Zimbábue, por exemplo, requerem que o Parlamento garanta uma participação pública genuína no processo legislativo. Isso é fundamental em é assegurar que os cidadãos tenham voz nas matérias que os afetam. Para se salvaguardar o constitucionalismo e o Estado de Direito, é imprescindível que os parlamentos desenvolvam mecanismos internos visando assegurar o cumprimento da Constituição. As medidas devem, devem incluir a criação de uma comissão que aprecie, examine cuidadosamente a legislação por forma a garantir o cumprimento da Constituição e da primazia de direito. Os parlamentos devem também propiciar um espaço para a iniciação de legislações 
por outros órgãos do Estado que não sejam o Executivo, incluindo projetos de leis iniciados por deputados. Os parlamentos têm também o dever de desempenhar um papel constitucional exclusivo, nomeadamente através da aprovação de um voto de não confiança no governo, examinando cuidadosamente nomeações públicas, tais como as de juízes e comissários de traba que trabalham em comissões que apoiam a democracia, tais como as comissões eleitorais propostas de destituição e eleição de presidentes. Um outro papel muito importante e saliente do Parlamento é a fiscalização, o monitoramento e a responsabilização que geralmente ocorre sobre o olhar atento da opinião pública. O Parlamento cumpre esse papel exigindo que os, os venham ao Parlamento para prestar contas, submetendo, ao governo, submetendo o governo perante as comissões parlamentares, recebendo petições das mãos dos membros do público, analisando relatórios de outros órgãos constitucionais e assegurando que o judiciário seja independente. Recomendações. Tendo deliberado sobre as intervenções ligadas à apresentação do, da comunicação, a comissão decidiu o seguinte. Exortou o foro parlamentar a colaborar com parceiros tais como a Associação de Advogados da SADEC, para assegurar a iniciativa de desenvolvimento de capacidades a longo prazo em toda a SADEC para parlamentos e outros atores, tais como oficiais de justiça, membros do executivo e profissionais da comunicação social sobre o seu papel na promoção da democracia, na, na, na promoção de, da democracia, incluindo através da proteção do constitucionalismo do Estado de Direito para elaborar instrumentos de conhecimento sobre as referidas iniciativas. Exortou os Estados-membros a cumprir o tratado da SADEC na elaboração das suas leis, regras e regulamentos visando a consolidação da, do constitucionalismo e do Estado de Direito. Suplicou aos parlamentos para não seguirem cegamente as imposições dos partidos políticos, mas deixar-se guiar, deixar guiar pela sua consciência, uma vez que a sociedade conta com a boa vontade dos parlamentares a título pessoal. Exortou para uma abordagem colaborativa entre os parlamentos e a sociedade civil na conscientização da sociedade sobre os conceitos gerais do Estado de Direito e do constitucionalismo, particularmente em assegurar a promulgação e a implementação da legislação que garante a separação de poderes e o empoderamento dos cidadãos no sentido de participar no processo democrático exortou o Fórum Parlamentar da SADEC a reduzir o fosso no seu engajamento com os cidadãos com a implementação de programas extensivos de sensibilização das comunidades sobre questões chaves, tais como o papel do Parlamento, das instituições que apoiam a democracia, a independência do judiciário, dos outros órgãos do Estado, na promoção do constitucionalismo e do Estado de Direito. Exortou os parlamentos a desempenhar um papel decisivo no combate à corrupção, uma vez que a má governação e a corrupção privam as comunidades dos seus direitos e enfraquecem a primazia do direito e o constitucionalismo. Exortou o Fórum Parlamentar da SADEC a explorar a possibilidade de elaborar uma lei modelo sobre o papel dos parlamentos na promoção e proteção do constitucionalismo e do Estado de Direito na região da SADEC e facilitar a sua incorporação pelos parlamentos-membros nos ordenamentos jurídicos internos. 
apelou ao Foro Parlamentar da SADEC para fortalecer as suas estratégias visando a facilitar a transposição das leis modelos para os ordenamentos jurídicos nacionais pelos Estados-membros, incluindo alguns mecanismos de monitoramento a fim de superar as lacunas atualmente existentes em termos de implementação. Decidiu realizar uma conferência anual regional de alto nível sobre o Estado de Direito e a proteção do constitucionalismo com diferentes partes interessadas, incluindo membros do Executivo, do Judiciário, parlamentares, comunicação social e a sociedade civil. Senhor Presidente, terminei a apresentação, submeto a apreciação desta plenária. Muito obrigada. Contações. Merci. Honorable. Agostino, pour cette brillante présentation. Quant au sujet de la démocratisation de la gouvernance et des droits de l'homme. Je vais à présent permettre à l'honorable Darren Berga qui a souhaité apporter la motion de débrasser la vie à la motion de ce rapport. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. I wish to second the reports of the Standing Committee on Democratization, Governance, and Human Rights to the 49th Plenary Assembly session, so ably moved by the chairperson of the committee. Uh, the report covers important issues that should be given critical attention. Uh, Mr. President, constitutionalism and the rule of law are the conditio sine qua non for building sustainable democracy in any country. As one of the primary institutions of the state, parliaments have a shared responsibility to protect and ensure the realization of constitutionalism, the rule of law and human rights and to implement the state's obligation in the respect alongside the executive and the judiciary. Mr. President, I concur with the motion in calling on Parliament to protect democratic systems of government, in particularly the participatory elements of democracy, which obliges Parliament to facilitate public involvement in the legislative and other processes of Parliament. It's uncon it's incontrovertible that democracy can only function optimally if members of the public are sufficiently informed about the activities of parliament and if they are given a genuine opportunity to meaningfully be involved in those activities. Parliaments in the region should therefore ensure that parliamentary democracy does not end with the elections and take deliberate measures to make its committee and processes more accessible to the public including mobilizing the media to provide information to the public about Parliament. Mr. President, in expressing my support for the motion, I wish to reiterate the resolution of the Standing Committee expressing solidarity and support to Mozambique in the face of the Cabo Delgado insurgents. Accordingly, I wish to restate the call by the move of the motion for SADC member states to take swift collective action to end this insurgence in Mozambique. I also wish to echo the view shared by the mover that in order to ensure the protection of the constitution and the observance of rule of law, parliaments ought to safeguard the separation of powers between the three organs of states by exercising checks and balances of the, on the executive. Indeed, parliaments should genuinely scrutinize the draft laws tabled by the executive and ensure that it is the legislature that passes laws rather than the laws passing through parliament. 
dare I say, sometimes at the speed of an unidentified flying object. Mr. President, I encourage, I'm encouraged by the decision of the Standing Committee on DG and HR to convene annual high-level regional conferences on the role of Parliament in protecting constitutionalism and the rule of law with other stakeholders, including members of the executive, the judiciary, MPs, media, and civil society. And Mr. President, as I conclude, I wish to call on par of parliaments to operationalize the benchmarks for, democ for democratic legislatures in Southern Africa, which was adopted by this plenary assembly in Swakopmund, Namibia in 2010, as a way of creating internal mechanisms and capacities for ensuring protecting constitutionalism and the rule of law. I second the motion, Mr. President. Thank you. Merci, Monsieur Darren. Certainement, nos parlements doivent devenir des temples de la démocratie, de la bonne gouvernance et de droit de l'homme. Si nos parlements ne brillent pas par la défense, la promotion, le respect des droits de l'homme, la bonne gouvernance, la consolidation de la démocratie à travers de lois que nous votons, nous ferons une négation de notre existence en tant qu'élu et représentant du peuple. Merci. À présent, je mets les Je soumets le rapport à débat. Le collègue qui souhaite débattre doit le signaler en levant la main. Honorablement, nous vous rappelons toujours, pour des raisons de précision de l'enregistrement du procès verbal, Vous devez communiquer votre nom, votre pays, chaque fois que vous êtes appelé à prendre la parole. Merci, collègues. Les collègues qui souhaitent intervenir peuvent se faire inscrire. Thank you, Honorable President. In this order, Namibi, um, Eswatini, Zimbabwe, two hands from Zimbabwe, Mozambique, Namibi, Zimbabwe, two hands, Mozambique, Eswatini, and Mozambique. I believe the hand for Mozambique is a, it's not the same hand for the mover. I think it's the honorable speaker who has raised his hand. Raise her hand, apologies. In that order, Honorable President, those are the hands for now. Merci. Les collègues de la Mozambique, de la Namibie plutôt. Les collègues de la Namibie peuvent prendre la parole. Um, we can't hear Namibia. We can't hear Namibia. Please move closer to the microphone. Okay, we can hear you now. Thank you very much. Thank you very, Thank much, you very much. much. Thank you very much, President. Utara Mordu from Namibia. 
would first like me to say that we are in full support of the recommendations in the motion to Mozambique in terms of the security uh, interventions that SADC has placed. It is indeed time that SADC places our conflict resolutions that are robust, that are effective, and this is a great move into the, the democratizing, democratizing our nation. Secondly, I would like to say, Honorable President, and I would like to extend in terms of the precision of the report, they do state some of the challenges that we do face as a region. But however, do not entail the reflective um, description of the true issues and challenges that we face within the regions. If Honorable President allows me, I would like to bring a practicality into my statement as I continue with my, my intervention. Honorable President, the first thing I would like to go into is the on page four, um, paragraph one, talks about uh, constitution, constitution refers to a situation where there is an adherence of the provision of the constitution and limits abuse of power. Honorable President, this statement is indeed true. But however, this is not the reflection in, and I, can, and I can give you an example of the case of um, protection of the parliamentarian's rights. Firstly, <laughs> honorable president, two members of parliament were illegally suspended in our Namibian parliament. In this report, it does not give recommendations as to how the SADC Parliamentary Forum can deal with issues in terms of addressing and, and correcting the actions of member parliaments, especially in terms of them bridging the constitution. This is not clear and, in, and we do not know in which position does SADC PF fall in when it comes to disciplinary measures of um, uh, member parliaments. The second thing, Honorable President, we would like to address is that Parliament is robbersome, indeed, as stated in the report, when addressing issues of national interest, issues of human rights, issues of corruption. Now, I'd like to go into the fact that corruption is an issue that has not been placed in this recommendation as it should be. In, in, and I would like to recommend that within the assembly that we come into an, an urban definition of what, cor of what human rights is. We believe that corruption is a human rights crisis. And it is one that stigmatizes and that stops the development of the region in terms of integration, in terms of trade, in terms of further developmental projects within the region. And it should have been addressed into how SADC PF is going to deal with issues such as corruption that continues to economically uh, suffocate, especially young people within the region, further ensuring that we do not get developed and we do not get uh, the necessary human rights that we need in terms of the natural laws of the right to life. Another point, honorable uh, president, I would like to look into is the, it is very much evident that in our country and in the region that we do come from a colonial uh, background of colonial injustice. But however, this has not been put in the report stating in the case of colonial human rights issues in terms of ensuring that we right the wrongs that have been done in the past. I would like to give you an example, Honorable President. In my country, Namibia, there's current negotiations on the genocide. Nothing from, none, none from side, no solidarity uh, statement has been put out. No procedures have been placed in terms of holding Western countries that continue to, 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 to um, uh, undergrade and continue to look down in terms of the sovereignty of African countries in terms of negotiation, negotiations on um, human rights issues, especially ones that looks into the colonial injustices. Currently, Honorable President, we would have expected that the committee would look into this issue, not just because, of course, we are excused that we are new members, but however, this genocide touches on and, 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 and directly in um, affects two uh, countries such as 
South Africa and Botswana who have through history become the host of some of the descendants of the genocide who have been directly implicated and should be on the forefront in terms of showing, ensuring that Germany is held accountable in accordance to the international law. Another uh, issue that we would like to stretch out is on uh, border risk management. Honorable President, there is no recommendation that talks to how SADC PF is going to deal with border tensions that happen around borders. Now, I am very much grateful uh, to the hosting country being Botswana because it gives us the opportunity to address this issue. Honorable President, Botswana has been uh, their BDF forces ever since 1990, ever since independence, they have been allegedly harassing and murdering people on the Sambesi region of Namibia on the Chobe River. These issues are ones that should be stressed and should have been uh, uh, on the agenda of the Human Rights Committee to ensure that what are the steps that we put in place when member states of SADC continue. In fact, if I would enlighten the House, 2018 was an agreement that was a treaty agreement that was signed between Namibia and Botswana. This did not take place in terms of them uh, um, um, playing according to the deals and ensuring that they do their part in bringing peace and stability. That was not the case. And we'd have, we would want to know, and I would like to ask the House, how do we deal with this issue as SADC uh, parliamentary forum to ensure that member states of SADC are held accountable in, in contravening the agreement, uh, treaty agreements that are signed between the two states? I thank you, Honorable President. Merci, chers collègues. Uh, chers collègues, je vous prie de respecter les quatre minutes pour les interventions. Restez dans les temps impartis. Les collègues de Zimbabwe, il y en a deux, les deux interviennent à tour de rôle. Collègues, vous avez la parole. Yes, Honorable, Honorable President, Honorable uh, Daud Ndiweni will come, then Eswatini, the Mozambique, then the last Zimbabwe will come to break up the fairness. Thank you. Thank uh, Honorable Augustino for mm -hmm. her report. D'accord, oui, oui, les Zimbabwe peuvent intervenir, oui. D'accord. C'est le tour de Zimbabwe maintenant. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. My name is Dao Tindiweni from the Parliament of Zimbabwe. I'm connected. Kindly proceed, Honorable Ndiweni. We can hear you. I would like to thank uh, Honorable Augustino for her presentation on the Committee of Democratization, Governance, and Human Rights. Mr. President, I would like to add on the committee uh, on the role of parliament in protecting const constitutionalism and rule of law, a case for Zimbabwe. The parliament of Zimbabwe is custodian of the constitution. The Constitution of Zimbabwe outlines that Parliament has the mandate and power to protect the Constitution. Section 299 of the Constitution gives Parliament the power to monitor and oversee expenditure by the state, all commissions, institutions, and agencies of government at every level. In essence, all executive organs of the state in the national sphere of government are accountable to parliament on the use of public resources. Practical examples where uh, parliament of Zimbabwe has observed the constitution and rule of law. 
Mr. President, our parliament through com the committee system, government departments, agencies, and institutions have been called to account for their actions, such as the use of public resources. Section 141 of the constitution stipulates that parliament must facilitate the public in its uh, legislative process. This is one of the constitutional provisions that has been implemented by our parliament, Mr. President, where the public, public hearings are conducted for all bills that are presented before it. Section 149 of the constitution speaks on the right to petition parliament. The legislature has received several petitions from the general public, which it has taken into consideration. The duration and dissolution of parliament has been religiously followed according to section 143 of our constitution. This provision outlines that parliament is elected for a five year term, but this may be cut short due to extraordinary reasons, which include the refusal by the National, National Assembly unreasonably to pass the appropriation bill. Section 148 uh, of the Constitution, Mr. President, confers parliamentary privileges and immunities on presiding officers, members of parliaments, which include freedom of speech in parliament and in all parliamentary committees. Section 152 of our Constitution, Mr. President, provides that a parliamentary legal committee shall be established to consider any bill or statutory instrument to ensure that it does not contravene the provision of the constitution. This is one of the ways in which parliament lives up to its responsibility as the custodian of the constitution. Mr. President, uh, we have challenges that we face. Uh, number one challenge is resource constraints by the parliament to effectively conduct its oversight and lawmaking uh, law responsibilities. Parliament of Zimbabwe does not have full control of its own budget and has to rely on disbursement released by the executive. Secondly, language of bills is often uh, and largely in English. This may hinder full comprehension by some legislators and may curtail their full participation in the law-making law process. I thank you, uh, Mr. President. Merci, colleague. Le deuxième collègue uh, du Zimbabwe peut aussi intervenir. Honorable President, if you are me, um, Zimbabwe will come last after Eswatini and Mozambique. D'accord, Mozambique. Merci. Mr. President, Swaziland, eh? Eswatini. Eh? Eswatini. Eswatini, d'accord. Eswatini. Thank you very much, uh, President, for the opportunity to uh, offer some ventilation remarks on this uh, report. First, may I say this is an excellent articulate report presented and we congratulate the team the presenter in particular for ably um, presenting the report. Uh, President, I would like to echo and support the intervention, very pertinent one by uh, Namibia on the issue of uh, the insurgency in our sister country, Mozambique. Mm -hmm. 
Mr. President, the problem since this report was crafted still continues unabated. Maybe as a plenary, we should uh, register once again, reiterate our concern on the, on, on the situation. And to that effect, and in this regard, if I may say, President, uh, we should put on record, welcome the strategies that have been agreed upon by the heads of states and government in the recent uh, meeting held in Mozambique, particularly on the same subject, that we are behind them, we will always support them in their endeavor to bring order, peace and stability in Mozambique, particularly in the Northern region. The second point, Madam, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Honorable President, is um, just a comment or maybe a clarification on the recommendation nine, um, uh, Roman figure nine of paragraph 5.2. Whilst I have no qualms with that recommendation for an annual regional high level conference, I am requesting that it be unpacked. Is it at uh, the forum, uh, our forum, SADAC PF forum, or at the mainstream SADAC forum? Um, just, uh, it's food for thought. In other words, I'm just uh, inquiring, wanting to know about the modalities of such a recommended annual regional high level conference. Uh, such things as uh, funding, maybe as I said, is it uh, at SADAC PF level or is it at mainstream SADAC level or what, uh, President? I am, I haven't uh, uh, introduced myself Senator Isaac Magagula from the Kingdom of Eswatini's Parliament. I thank you, uh, President. Les collègues de la Mozambique. Eh, obrigado. Meu nome é Carlos Manuel, Mozambique. Eh, Sua Excelência, Senhor Presidente do Foro Parlamentar da SADEC, Sua Excelência, Senhores Presidentes dos Parlamentos da região da SADEC, Senhora Excelentíssima Senhora Secretária-Geral, meus pares e excelências, eu gostaria de apoiar o trabalho realizado pela Comissão e tecer algumas considerações sobre a situação de insurgência que nós cá chamamos de terrorismo em Cabo Delgado. Excelências, no que concerne a situação sociopolítica e econômica do país, é de referir que a nossa jovem democracia tem vindo a ser ameaçada desde o ano de 2017 pelos ataques de grupos armados na região centro do país e de bárbaros, bárbaras ações terroristas na região norte, mais concretamente em algumas zonas da província de Cabo Delgado, caracterizado por assassinatos e decapitação de civis. 
o nosso primeiro e maior desafio neste momento é o combate aos ataques violentos contra as populações perpetrados pelos terroristas, um fenómeno novo no país e na região da SADEC, o que infelizmente afeta a população moçambicana no geral e em particular a nossa população no norte do país, provocando mortes, deslocação de milhares de pessoas e destruição de infraestruturas públicas e privadas, agravando a pobreza das populações, causando uma grave crise humanitária, sendo de destacar, mais uma vez, milhares de pessoas deslocadas nas, das suas zonas de origem, necessitando de ajuda e apoio multiforme urgente. A violência desencadeada em Cabo Delgado ganhou uma nova escalada quando grupos armados atacaram pela primeira vez a Vila de Palma, local onde hospeda os projetos multimilionários de gás natural, constituindo um grande obstáculo aos reforços do governo para o desenvolvimento e um constrangimento nas atividades do Parlamento. Maputo acolheu em abril do corrente ano a cimeira da defesa e segurança da SADEC sobre a violência armada no norte de Moçambique e o apoio no combate aos grupos armados que integra os países do órgão. A cimeira sobre segurança regional serviu para deliberar sobre a situação de instabilidade no norte de Moçambique resultante da ação dos grupos terroristas e do extremismo violento, bem como as modalidades concretas de apoio regional para a erradicação mormente, um controle rigoroso nas fronteiras, melhoramento da cooperação policial e judicial para detectar os suspeitos e encontrar formas eficazes para impedir o financiamento do terrorismo. Para o efeito, uma comissão técnica da SADEC esteve em Maputo para avaliar a dimensão da ameaça terrorista que o país enfrenta, de modo a, de, a determinar o tipo de apoio a ser prestado para erradicar o fenômeno que assola a província de Cabo Delgado desde 2017. Este grupo de trabalho elaborou e apresentou na sessão extraordinária da dupla troika da SADEC um relatório operacional que determina os mecanismos de intervenção ou assistência que se podem prestar ao país para fazer face ao terrorismo. Finalmente, no mês de junho corrente, na semeira extraordinária dos chefes de Estado e Governo da SADEC, voltaram a reunir We are trying to connect Mozambique, Honorable President. We have lost Mozambique again. <laughs> okay, Mozambique is back. We lost you for a moment, Mozambique, as you are concluding. Começa aí na cimeira. Na página que eu em abril. Não tem uma puta que eu em abril. Repetindo, voltando. Voltando ao. O último parágrafo. The last paragraph, yeah. uh, o, último. o último, no mês. Sim. Sim, estamos de volta mais uma vez. Dizia eu que no mês de junho, corrente, em cimeira extraordinária dos chefes de Estado e governo da SADEC, voltaram a reunir-se em Maputo, onde deliberaram 
haver condições para o acolhimento do apoio que o país, que os países da região podem conceder a Moçambique no quadro do combate ao terrorismo. Muito obrigado. Sim. Merci. Alô, e a... É que está distraído. E, e, e... j'aimerais que les collègues note tout au long des interventions que nous avons eues, euh, les collègues ont insisté, trois collègues ont insisté sur le terrorisme auquel la Mozambique fait face. Fait face. Et je poserai une question à la fin pour que euh, notre forum arrive quand même à proposer des solutions pour que les États de la région qui ont des problèmes de sécurité et surtout qui font face au terrorisme dans leur pays, que la, la SADEC au haut sommet prennent quand même des dispositions si notre Parlement, le forum parlementaire peut faire des recommandations au chef d'État à ce sujet-là. J'aimerais qu'on note ce point-là pour que nous en fassions un débat vers la fin. Ou même avant d'adopter euh, ce rapport. Je vous remercie. Il y a le collègue du Zimbabwe qui est resté. Il y a un collègue du Zimbabwe qui devait intervenir. S'il peut prendre la parole, s'il est disponible. Thank you. And honorable president, we have another hand from Botswana after that. That concludes the hands. Um, thank you, Mr. President. I would like to uh, tender my support to um, the mover of the motion. As I do so, I want to start by looking at uh, the committee's recommendation on page six, recommendation uh, number seven. Um, which says, age SADAC PF to consider developing a modern law on the role of parliaments in protecting, in promoting and protecting uh, constitutionalism and the rule of law in the SADAC regions and facilitate its domestication by member parliaments. Now that recommendation, I think may not pass because it is a contradiction to the nature and spirit of constitutionalism. The constitution itself uh, must have a provision that calls for its respect, promotion, and propagation. To that extent, I would like to share, uh, Mr. President, uh, the provision of our own constitution and that of South Africa as examples which clearly state that parliament must protect the constitution and ensure that the state and all its agencies must respect the constitution and be accountable to parliament. And in the same constitutions, there is the call for the propagation 
of the Constitution. It is therefore my humble submission that that recommendation number seven in the committee's report should be expunged. Having said that, Mr. President, constitutionalism as a tenet speaks to um, limited governmental power in which the executive must be guided by the dictates of the constitution in respect of the will of the people that have voted that government into power. At the same time, the constitution, the constitutionalism must be backed by the tenet of legality that the law does create obligations. And if those obligations are not fulfilled by persons, including corporate persons, there must be some censure. Another related tenet to constitutionalism is indeed the rule of law that all are equal before the, the law and the application of the law should not be discriminatory. discriminatory. Having said that, Mr. President, while the committee is calling for the members of parliament and parliaments at large, that they should protect the constitution. I think one of the glaring observations is that quite often members of parliament themselves don't study fully the constitution in order to understand the provisions that are in it. Parliaments and parliamentarians cannot protect the constitution if they don't understand it, if they don't follow it religiously. Another issue, Mr. President, is that as parliaments, we must ensure that there's access to the constitution. In that regard, Quite often, our constitutions are written in foreign colonial languages or the language of the colonizing power in that country. It is therefore important that the constitutions be translated into vernacular languages as we have done in Zimbabwe. Our constitution has been translated into all the official recognized languages, including Braille. Furthermore, we have a section in our constitution which demands that the constitution must be taught in our schools, in, in our tertiary institutions, and that the private sector and civil society organizations must have access to the constitution and must understand it fully. When all has been said and done, all constitutions that matter must promote the Bill of Rights. And the Bill of Rights is the anchor of and bedrock of a democracy. If the Bill of Rights is not protected, is not propagated and respected, we cannot speak about development. Let me turn to uh, the issue raised by my young 
sister parliamentarians, calling for the protection of the rights of parliamentarians. In this regard, Mr. President, we need to take a leaf from the Interparliamentary Union, which has a standing committee on the human rights of parliamentarians. And it is a watchdog to ensure that the rights of members of parliament are not violated, apart from the privileges which they enjoy through the Privileges Act. So perhaps we might take a leaf in that respect. Finally, I want to commend SADC, the heads of state and government of SADC, by finally deploying the standby SADC force to ensure that there is peace and security in the northern part of Mozambique. And in so doing, hopefully, the huge gas mine that was discovered and had been stopped by these terrorists will be will resume uh, its operations very soon. It is important that uh, solidarity therefore be expressed among such countries in the fight against such terrorist activities. Because tomorrow, if, for example, Zimbabwe discovers oil and uh, these terrorists who appear to be well-funded by external forces, they may start again destabilizing a promising enterprise in mining. It could be in South Africa as well. It could be in Namibia. It is therefore important that we leverage on each other's military intelligence and the other military uh, security services to ensure that the development projects that emerge to improve the socioeconomic position of our countries have the protection of our security services in order to guarantee positive development of sister countries within SADAG. I so submit and tender my full support for the motion proposed by our colleague. Thank you. The Honorable President is muted. The Honorable President is muted, IT. Kindly unmute the Honorable President. Merci. Vous m'entendez maintenant? Vous m'entendez? Indeed, Honorable President, you are audible. D'accord. Je donne uh, maintenant la parole à l'honorable secrétaire général. Après, je reviendrai sur ce que vient de dire le président Moudenda. Je, je, je vous remercie. Madame la secrétaire générale, vous avez la parole. Uh, thank you, honorable president. Um, we have Botswana and Seychelles, maybe before I'm called upon Honorable President. We have two hands, Botswana and Seychelles. They just, yes. Botswana raised earlier, Seychelles. Botswana, we have a Okay. Yeah, we say we're in. Thank you, Mr. President, for giving me this opportunity. Um, let me start by setting the record straight that no, Botswana, we are not murderers. We are a sovereign state. And this uh, must be noted. And uh, Mr. President, <clears throat> let me thank the head of states of the SADC region for what they have done by acting in time 
to secure the people of Mozambique. The other issue when supporting this motion, uh, Mr. President, uh, we must know that uh, what we are doing as a region, uh, the whole world is watching us in how we handle our matters, especially in our region. Then in the future, likewise, the international world will as well subscribe and help us if they see what we are doing to our people, ourselves, not by uh, always uh, wanting, wanting the outsiders to come and uh, resolve our issues. The other thing which I want to make it clear is that um, each and every country have got uh, its constitution. In case in Botswana, each and every one have got these constitutional rights. But uh, whether you are a citizen or a non-citizen, there's the rule of law, which must be abided by each and every one in the Republic, like in the case of Botswana. We don't ask you whether you come from North, South, East Europe, if there's something which is a uh, I've got, which is supposed to be done in terms of the law, the law will imply to all without any favor. By so saying, a lot, uh, my colleagues have uh, deliberated on this motion uh, with the understanding of what is happening in our region. Let me thank them and as well thank the forum. Thank you, Mr. President. My name is Paulson Majaga from Botswana, Mr. President. Merci, cher collègue. C'est le tour du collègue de la Sage de Seychelles. Le collègue de Seychelles peut prendre la parole. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, the, the, the report on uh, democratization, governance, and human resources has, uh, I should think, failed to include the small island, has failed to include the small island states. Um, what I'm saying in terms of terrorism is that uh, the small island states are being sort of uh, having a curb, uh, a huge surge in relation to the pirates. Um, from Somali. And uh, generally, the pirates threaten the Indian Ocean greatly, especially the trade activities. And on top of that, this, uh, their activities is mainly th threatening our livelihood, mainly fishing industries into the Seychelles, probably Mauritius as well. And on top of that, the countries have just adopted the African continental free trade um, area a zone, and we have just we had had report on the F AFCFTA, um, in, especially into relations to the post -co post COVID economic recovery into the southern Africa. So especially into the post COVID uh, arena, if our um, activities, our uh, trades, our food livelihood are being threatened then we should put a stop to it. And I will call a solidarity among SADC countries to curb terrorism, especially amongst the small island states. I believe the head of states should also include and ensure safe trades among the African countries, also from, from piracy as well, in accordance with WHO, uh, WTO uh, mandates. Thank you, Mr. President. Merci. C'est le tour de l'honorable Léon Ntumba de la République démocratique du Congo qui voudrait intervenir. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je dois noter que cette discussion autour du terrorisme 
qui concerne le, la Mozambique, c'est le même problème que la RDC est en train de connaître. Vous êtes sans ignorer que la partie est de notre pays connaît le même problème. Violation incessante des femmes, utilisation des enfants soldats, ceci est un frein à la démocratie. C'est aussi un frein à la consolidation de, de la paix. Et cela a beaucoup de conséquences et à beaucoup d'égards. Je crois que si on parle de la Mozambique en tant qu'État, il est aussi important de considérer que la RDC, qui fait partie de la SADEC, connaît le même problème. Ceci dit, nous devons travailler de commun accord. Nous devons travailler de telle manière à ce que si une solution est trouvée au Mozambique, eh bien, effectivement, qu'il y ait aussi une solution qui soit trouvée en RDC. Alors, ceci, à mon avis, serait une solidarité. Vous avez dit tout à l'heure, les présidents des pays de la SADEC ont eu à se rencontrer par rapport à ça. Mais je pense qu'il sera aussi important d'inclure dans les pays qui souffrent de cette histoire de terrorisme, la RDC. Et d'ailleurs, le chef de l'État est actuellement au niveau de, de l'Est pour voir dans quelle mesure on peut éradiquer cette violence. Cela a un frein sur beaucoup de choses. Alors, je pense que cette, cette solidarité entre les États de la SADEC serait une preuve de l'intégration régionale voulue et souhaitée par tous. J'ai dit. Merci, chers collègues. Je crois que les collègues de Seychelles a mis un accent sur les pirates de mer qui détruisent, qui empêchent les pêcheurs de ces pays de travailler et d'apporter le soutien nécessaire au développement de l'économie de Seychelles. Donc, c'est aussi un pays à prendre en compte parmi les pays de l'Afrique, de la SADEC qui font face au terrorisme et à toutes sortes de, de violences. Je crois, il n'est pas, il est, je pense, à ce stade intéressant que le forum parlementaire de la SADEC se penche sur la question et fasse même prenne une résolution à ce sujet, une résolution à transmettre ou une recommandation à transmettre au chef d'État de la région pour que des mesures soient prises contre le terrorisme qui commence à envahir et à perturber la paix, le développement et même parfois de bonnes relations entre nos différents États. Ce que je voulais dire à, à ce sujet-là, à présent, j'accorde la parole à ce stade à, à Madame la secrétaire générale pour une intervention. Thank you, Honorable President. Um, we note the contributions and the wisdom that has been infused into the, our resolution of this August Plenary Assembly. Honorable President, we will also go ahead to expunge as guided by this August Plenary Assembly. Allow me, Honorable President, in relation to the resolution on the annual conference on constitutionalism and the rule of law, I wish to assure this August Plenary Assembly, Honorable President, through you, that this initiative will be implemented by bearing in mind the sacrosanct principle of separation of powers. And the theme will thus be addressed from the lens of parliamentarism and the advancement of democratization through parliaments. The conference will thus not overlap or impinge on the work commonly conducted by the executives in the consolidation of the framework 
governing the rule of law. In fact, Honorable President, both the work of the forum in that regard and the initiatives of the executive will strengthen one another, but not duplicate themselves. I therefore wish to see, um, advance this clarity of the crucial link which exists between parliamentarism, democratization, the respect for the constitution, human rights, and the rule of law. I thank you, Honorable President. Merci. Uh, alors, le président Mudenda est intervenu sur le septième, la septième résolution. Et la septième résolution, euh, il a relevé quelques observations qui sont en fait pertinentes, mais je voudrais apporter une nuance. C'est vrai que chaque État a une constitution. Chacun de nos États dispose d'une constitution. Et si au niveau du forum parlementaire, nous estimons qu'il est important d'insister sur le rôle de la Constitution et sur le rôle et la fonction de la Constitution dans un pays, ce n'est pas mauvais. Ce n'est pas mauvais. Ce n'est qu'une insistance. Ce n'est qu'une insistance. Le honorables parlementaires peuvent insister sur ça pour donner que tous les, nos États membres de la SADEC accordent une priorité absolue à la Constitution. Ça ne serait que une une mise en évidence, souligner le rôle de la Constitution et sa place dans les États membres de la SADEC. C'est cette nuance-là que je voulais souligner, euh, ce qui a été dit par le président Moudenda est pertinent est pertinent, mais les, insister sur la primauté de la Constitution dans un État, son rôle, sa fon fonction ne serait pas euh, superfétatoire. Merci. Il n'y a plus d'intervenants. Il y a encore un intervenant Zimbabwe, encore une fois, il y a un intervenant. S'il y a un intervenant pour le Zimbabwe, vous pouvez prendre la parole. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, 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 Mr. President, uh, I accept uh, that um, recommendation number seven on page six of the report uh, has the intention to emphasize that uh, SADC parliaments, SADC peer parliaments uh, should uh, promote and protect constitutionalism and the rule of law. In terms of uh, lawmaking process, you cannot have a modern law instructing that exercise to take place. Uh, it, it is a contradiction of terms. And um, in terms of uh, 
uh, how the uh, legislative processes do uh, take place. Indeed, you cannot have a modern law uh, on the role of parliaments in promoting it. It's very clumsy and uh, um, I, I didn't want to use some um, uncivilized expression, but uh, uh, let, let, let's leave it as, as, as really as you put it, Mr. President, that parliaments within South Africa uh, countries should promote and protect constitutional and the rule of law, but not using a modern law. That is a contradiction in the legislative process. Uh, secondly, I, I was not very clear what uh, the uh, Secretary, uh, Secretary uh, General was saying uh, in terms of coming up with a resolution. And I'm not sure whether this is not implied um, right at the end of the order paper where it says considerations of members' motions. Uh, is it not a sum total of uh, resolutions that should emerge from the motions? And I don't think there's a harm in terms of separation of powers as we did uh, last time that uh, we make a, a, a resolution calling upon um, our heads of states and government for example, to expand, <clears throat> to expand their uh, responsibility beyond Mozambique. As a speaker from uh, uh, DRC, there's a problem of terrorism in Eastern DRC. There's a problem of pirates in the um, island, uh, island countries. There's no harm in calling upon uh, SADAC to look into this matter through its uh, organ of peace and security. It, it is well within our right as SADAC PF to make that uh, recommendation to our heads of state and government. And there's no infringement of uh, the doctrine of separation of powers. Thank you. Unless I misunderstood the Secretary General. Merci, merci, Monsieur le Président. Oui, euh, avec euh, la deuxième intervention de l'honorable président Moudoumda, il y a lieu effectivement de reformuler le, la, résolu, le, 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 la, la septième résolution. Élaboration d'une loi type sur le rôle du Parlement dans la promotion et la protection du constitutionnalisme. Effectivement, euh, la Constitution, il y a là un problème de séparation de pouvoir. La Constitution, elle se défend elle-même. Elle contient des mécanismes de sa propre défense. C'est la loi suprême d'un pays. Donc, on ne peut pas avoir en dehors d'elle une loi qui peut la protéger. Non, là, je suis d'accord avec le président Moudenda. Je suis d'accord. Il y a des notions là-dedans. Principe de séparation de pouvoir et le fait même que la Constitution est la loi suprême. Elle se protège en elle-même. Elle se protège. Donc, euh, là, je suis d'accord. Il faut peut-être reformuler pour garder l'essentiel, ce qu'il faut garder dans cette septième résolution. Merci, chers collègues. Il n'y a plus d'intervenants. Botswana. Botswana. Les collègues de Botswana et celui de l'Angola aussi. Hein? Namibie à la fin. 
Botswana, Angola. Namibia, la Si je t'ai intéressé. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. President. My name is Pandus Kalamani from Botswana. I had not intended to take the floor, but having listened to what the Honorable Advocate Jacob Francis Mudenda said, I thought I should give my own perspective. My understanding of moral law is that it is something for which different countries can lift what will be applicable to that country. It is not meant to force each country, each and every country to do what is in the moral law. I do not see any contradiction between having a moral law and having listened to our speaker Budenda giving examples of what the constitution of Zimbabwe and South Africa provide, I thought it would be very good for whoever produces the moral law to look at those two constitutions and see how they advise those of the other countries who may not have the same provisions. So my own view is that there is nothing wrong in what has been proposed to have a moral law for which we can then pick what we think is applicable to our different countries. Thank you, Mr. President. Merci, collègue. Le collègue de l'Angola, il sera suivi du collègue de la Namibie. Vous prenez la parole à tour de rôle. Le collègue de l'Angola. Muito obrigada, senhor presidente do Fórum Parlamentar da SADEC. Eu pedi a palavra para ir de encontro à uh, uh, posição do senhor de, de presidente uh, Mudenda, uh, tendo em conta essa proposta de, de elaboração de uma lei modelo sobre o papel dos parlamentos na promoção e proteção do constitucionalismo e do Estado de Direito. Me parece que, de facto, o, o senhor eh, advogado Mudenda tem toda a razão, porque, eh, ao fazermos isso, nós estaríamos, de facto, a criar outros problemas, sobretudo no que toca à transformação do... do do Fórum Parlamentar da SADEC ao Regimento, ao Parlamento Regional. Porque nós sabemos que há alguns países que já têm algum temor nessa adesão e com essa lei modelo isso poderia, de facto, criar ainda mais problemas e atrasar, atrasar o processo. Me parece que, de facto, a ideia de não, não aceitarmos ser reformulado esse ponto 7 da, do, do, da recomendação 5.2 é, é, é bem-vinda e como também já foi eh, dito pelo presidente desta sessão, que é o senhor presidente do Fórum Parlamentar da SADEC. Muito obrigado.
L'Angola n'a pas encore parlé. L'Angola vient de parler. Alors, les collègues de la Namibie. Je ne parle pas. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Am I audible? Oui, yes, thank you very much. Um, Vipo from Namibia. Yes, Vipo Kuyum Harukwa from Namibia again. Uh, we had a quick uh, um, Namibian caucus on the on the resolution in question. Um, we have to say we are in agreement with the learned advocate uh, Mungenga in that I suppose the president of SADC has uh, probably taken the words out of my or our mouth as such. The constitutions on their own of the respective countries should have those very protections. Otherwise, then we probably would be moving towards the United States of SADC with, with one single constitution or the United States of Africa with one single constitution. But perhaps what would or should be done is not necessarily taking out the whole recommendation as such. We also agree that there must be emphasis on the need to protect constitutionalism in every country. So that recommendation should perhaps be more geared more towards emphasizing on the principles of uh, the, protect, the constitutional protection. By that, we as a country, as Namibia, perhaps mean that as SADC, we must emphasize on the, the, the sovereignty of, of the independence rather of the judiciary we should emphasize on the separation of powers in terms of the, legis the legislature and the executive. Perhaps in the rephrasing of that very resolution, those are the things that must come out more um, expressly. Uh, for if we are to say we must model a modern, uh, we, we must have a model law, uh, uh, it, it wouldn't just be a single law, then that means the countries must modify the laws relating to the various courts. And our court system or judicial systems do not necessarily all operate in the same fashion. South Africa in its own has a constitutional court as the highest court in terms of constitutional issues. Namibia has the Supreme Court as the, uh, Supreme, as the highest court in the country. I'm sure other judicial jurisdictions would have uh, different uh, levels of, of, of judicial, judicial oversight over the constitution. So if we are to then have a model law, it, it wouldn't just be one law, it would be basically subject prescribing to many countries, uh, to, to all of us as to how all these facets that protect the constitution from the ombudsman to today the, 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 the anti-corruption uh, commission is that, that in, I suppose in some countries do not exist. So that um, we need to rephrase uh, the, 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 the resolution, that's one. But in that rephrasing, we must have, um, I'm summarizing, we, we must have the principles of constitutional protection in, in, expressed in, 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 that, um, in that resolution. In a nutshell, we, we agree with the president, we agree with the with the learned advocate. Thank you. <clears throat> Honorable President, there's another hand from Honorable Anilin Debele. It's 12 to 57. Okay. I, I just want to quickly say, if we get into the habit of developing model laws uh, just for the sake of it, which in itself is an expensive process, uh, it's highly likely that uh, model laws emanating from the SADC parliamentary forum will eventually lose 
their persuasive relevance. And as has been stated by my counterpart from Angola, this will have a negative impact on the process of moving towards a fully fleshed uh, SADC parliament. Just to emphasize the guarantees that are contained in every sound constitution that uh, the speaker advocate uh, Mudenda was referring to, I would like to quickly quote from our very own constitution, section 119 on the role of parliament, subsection one, parliament must protect this constitution and promote democratic governance in Zimbabwe. Section two, parliament has power to ensure that the provisions of this constitution are upheld and that the state and all institutions and agencies of government at every level act constitutionally and in the national interest. For the purposes of subsection two, all institutions and agencies of the state and government at every level are accountable to parliament. I believe coming up with a model law from SADC will virtually be ripping uh, the entire constitutions of member states. Madam Speaker, I so submit. Madam. Secretary General. Merci, merci, cher collègue. C'est fini. Hein? Il y a encore une dernière intervention, sinon. There's nobody on the on the who has raised the hand on our president. Zimbabwe. I don't see any other hands from my end. Merci. Merci. Nous avons pris beaucoup de temps sur ces rapports. Après, à présent, je redonne la parole à l'honorable pour rencontrer les préoccupations exprimées par Muito obrigada, senhor presidente. Antes de responder, como parlamentar sambicana, aproveito esta oportunidade para agradecer a solidariedade prestada aqui pelos colegas no que concerne o terrorismo que afeta o nosso país. Senhor Presidente, agradecemos todas as questões aqui, a todas as intervenções aqui apresentadas. Quero aqui acolher todas as observações feitas em torno do nosso relatório. Assegurar que as questões colocadas pela colega de Namíbia são todas pertinentes e serão analisadas em sede de comissão. Mas quero aqui ressalvar que algumas questões levantadas constam do relatório da Comissão Permanente de Comércio, Indústria e Finanças nos pontos 4.345.5 e nas deliberações constantes da página 9 do mesmo relatório. Contudo, acolhemos, senhor presidente, e pedimos a aprovação deste relatório. Muito obrigada. 
Merci. Pardon. Honorable président, chers collègues, honorable parlementaire, distingués invités, par ces réponses, les débats sur les rapports sous examen est clos. Je mets aux voix l'adoption du rapport du comité permanent de la démocratisation de la gouvernance et des droits de l'homme. Y a-t-il d'objection Y a-t-il d'objection Il n'y a pas d'objection. Moyennant des amendements, le rapport... It's not an objection, but that uh, recommendation number seven be recast as discussed. Ce que je suis en train de dire, moyennant des amendements, spécialement à la résolution 7, le rapport du comité permanent de la démocratisation de la gouvernance et des droits de l'homme est dûment adopté par l'Assemblée plénière. Je vous remercie. Nous passons au deuxième point de notre ordre du jour. Lève de la pause. Alors, vous êtes en train de regarder le monde. Ça signifie qu'on a droit à une pause. Madame la secrétaire générale. Combien de minutes? 15. Alors, on prend une pause de 15 minutes. Voilà, on prend une pause de 15 minutes. Midi et quart, hein? Midi 20, R de Kinshasa. Yes, nice time. 13h20, R de Johannesburg. On reprend les travaux. Quelques minutes de réponse. Hmm? Voilà. Ok. lunch please forty five minutes secretary general noted honorable speaker honorable president there's an appeal for a forty five minutes break I don't know if the honorable president has left the chair Je suis avec vous. Je suis en ligne. Vous voulez 45 minutes? Nous risquons de terminer tard. Nous avons encore cinq points à discuter. Après les 45 minutes, il n'y aura plus de pause. Hein? D'accord? OK, 45 minutes. Accordé.
Merci beaucoup. Thank you.
Doka Bamba Delta is a fragile ecosystem and remains one of Africa's most unspoiled and authentic wilderness areas. Its serpentine meanders from the Panhandle, resting deep in the Kalahari Sands, a home of flora and fauna, a host to many culture where men and beasts live side by side. Play the guitar. Let the sounds of your guitar resonate as I tell them about the beauty of my country. Ha. Declared UNESCO's World Heritage Number 1000, a receiver of many prestigious awards. Ladies and gentlemen, Botswana has it all. My brother, play the guitar. Let the sounds resonate as we tell them about the beauty of our country. Botswana has it all. Camping safaris, Mokoro safaris, walking safaris, cultural experiences, sporting events, hospitality unmatched. I am talking about the land of open skies. Ladies and gentlemen, as we will be going back to your countries, respective countries, go tell the world that Botswana awaits. Yes, we will be giving out the best, the beauty Botswana awaits. I am talking about the beauty. I am talking about the land of peace and tranquility, the land of our forefathers, our pride, your destination. Ha, 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 ha.
Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, thank you. Yes. You've been a wonderful team of tourists. Thank you so much. And I hope you have enjoyed your stay in Botswana. I hope that you have seen wonders, beauties. And I hope that I've been a wonderful tour guide. Yes, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Now that you have arrived at our final destination, the Kota, I will invite Chief Kos to say bye to you. Thank you so much. Mungwame. <laughs> ah! Ah!
Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you enjoyed the evening with us so far. We are pleased to invite you now for the reception hosted by the Republic of Botswana in Hall A. Please follow the stairs and escalators to the lower level of the CityQ building. But before that, please don't forget to return the infrared receivers and headphones to our hostesses before leaving the hall. Thank you very much. And now, enjoy the evening and have a successful ITB 2017.
very warm welcome to the dancers and musicians from the I Love Botswana Ensemble, directed by Andrew L. Kohler from the Mopato Dance Theater and the moderator of the show, Gabriel Ladies and gentlemen, Mondesi. and now follow us and now a day in the live show of this year's ITB partner country, Botswana. Please give a very warm welcome to the dancers and musicians from the I Love Botswana Ensemble, directed by Andrew L. Kohler from the Mopato Dance Theater and the moderator of the show, Gabriel Modizi. And now, let the show begin.
culture is a very good component of bringing together people of different ethnicities, but same entity. Culture, you will be delighted to find out bringing together people of different ethnicities, but same entity to come. You will be delighted to find out we still have our own culture. We call as but one even for generations. Talented dancers and actors who frequently give the world best cultural transition. We call it. Talented dancers and actors who frequently give the world together cultural transitions. But one. Our traditional beautiful hearts that craft and artifact made of talented women and men. But one. Ever hard work, beautiful men flowering up and artifacts made by talented women and men. Always adds flavor. Ever hard work, men flowering up the fields using oxen, providing for their families. The pounding sounds of mortar and pestle resonate as our mothers prepare traditional dishes. The pounding sounds of mortar and pestle resonate as our mothers prepare traditional dishes. For more, later we will our very own traditional come and have a bite. We live our very own traditional later. We will invite you to come and have a bite. All these things are found in all different parts of Botswana. Here, pick two leaves and chop it as a destination. All different parts of Botswana. Here, pick two leaves and chop it as a destination. We offer visitors a wide range of wildlife safari. Yes, appealing to game viewers. The Chobe National Park. We offer visitors a wide range of wildlife safari. Boat riders, game viewers, explorer of hidden photographers, and the love of Africa. Fishermen, and boat riders, spoiled, explorer of hidden places, yes. and the love of Africa. And its least spoiled state. Yes.
of our traditional dance renowned to the world over. It is the sound of Botswana. You have arrived. We could tell you that Botswana is the best place on earth to visit, that we have the greatest tourism offer and the rarest iconic African landscapes of a delta in a desert. We may also tell you that we're the vanguard in the management and conservation of our pristine wildlife, ensuring that it remains undisturbed in its natural wonder. Vous avez le rapport, l'autre rapport, vous donnez. Microphone. Il se cher collègue. Ok. Honorable président, cher collègue, honorable parlementaire, distingué, invité. Nous reprenons nos travaux. Après une pause de 45 minutes, je crois que nous nous sommes refait la santé pour une bonne reprise jusqu'à la clôture. Merci, chers collègues. J'invite à présent Madame la secrétaire générale à nous donner lecture du deuxième point de notre ordre du jour. Thank you, Honorable President. Notice of motion for the adoption of the report 
of the Standing Committee on Gender Equality, Women Advancement and Youth Development. No problem. Oh, apologies, Honorable President. Notice of motion for the adoption of the report of the Standing Committee on Gender Equality, Women Advancement and Youth Development. Merci, Madam Secretary General. À ce sujet, j'invite la vice-présidente du Comité permanent de l'égalité des sexes, de la promotion de la femme et du développement de la jeunesse. C'est l'honorable Marie Jeanne d'Arc Massi Koulamali a présenté la motion pour l'adoption du rapport. Ah, tu vas les Madame Marie. Marie. Euh, merci, Monsieur le Président, de m'avoir donné de parole. Euh, Massi Goulam, je me présente Massi Goulamali, député de Madagascar, présidente de la Commission du genre et du développement, euh, vice-présidente de la Commission euh, GUED du FP SADEC. Euh, rapport à la 49e session de l'Assemblée plénière, issue de la réunion en virtuel du comité permanent de l'égalité des genres, la promotion de la femme et du développement de la jeunesse, du forum parlementaire de la SADEC, tenu le 14 avril 2021 sous le thème « Travail domestique » des soins non rémunérés, pourquoi le Parlement devrait-il s'en soucier? 1.0. Préambule. Monsieur le Président, les comités permanents sur l'égalité des genres, la, la promotion de la femme et du développement de la jeunesse, guidé par son mandat, lui, conféré euh, en euh, vertu. Madame, s'il vous plaît. Oui, Président, je vous écoute. Oui, euh, j'aimerais qu'on respecte la procédure. Vous avez proposé la motion en votre nom. Et je voudrais ah. savoir s'il y a un collègue qui soutient la motion, notamment l'honorable... Euh, ah. Talita, je crois qu'il soutient la, la motion. Euh, Excusez-moi, Monsieur le Président. Euh, je croyais que vous avez, vous avez dit tout à l'heure de présenter. Donc, excusez-moi. Euh, je propose la motion à mon nom, Monsieur le Président. Excusez-moi. Merci, 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 cher collègue. Alors, y a-t-il un collègue, un autre collègue qui soutient la motion Thank you, Mr. Mr. President. I second the, the motion. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Merci. Merci, Honorable. À présent, je donne la parole à l'Honorable Marie-Jeanne d'Arc Massi Koulamali pour nous présenter la motion pour son adoption. Merci encore, Monsieur le Président. Masi Goulamali. Masi Goulamali. Goulamali. 
Merci, Monsieur le Président. Euh, bonjour, euh, chers collègues qui sont présents. Euh, je, ré, je répète, je refais encore ce que j'ai déjà lu tout à l'heure. Euh, rapport à la 49e session de l'Assemblée plénière, issue de la réunion euh, virtuelle du comité permanent sur euh, l'égalité des genres, la promotion de la femme et du développement de la jeunesse du Forum parlementaire de la SADEC, tenu le 14 avril 2021 sous le thème « Travail domestique des soins non rémunérés ». Pourquoi le Parlement devrait-il s'en soucier 1.0. Préambule. Monsieur le Président, les comités permanents sur l'égalité des genres la promotion de la femme et des développements de la jeunesse, guidée par son mandat lui conféré en vertu de l'article 42 alinéa petit a du règlement intérieur du FP de la SADEC, a tenu sa réunion virtuelle le mercredi 14 avril 2021 à l'occasion de la session des comités permanents du FP de la SADEC qui s'est déroulé du 11 au 16 avril 2021. 2.0. Pouvoir des membres du comité. Dix délégués sur les 15 représentants des parlements membres du FP de la SADEC étaient présents. Il s'agit de Honorable Maria do Carmo, Do Nascimento Angola, Honorable Talita Mona Gotla Botswana, Sénateur Bissi Siwe Damini Eswatini, Honorable Marie Jean d'Arc Masculamali Mali, moi-même Madagascar, Honorable <coughs> Loni Chijere Piri Malawi, Honorable euh, Maria Marta Fernando, Mozambique. Euh, honorable Kelly Samina Din, euh, Seychelles. Honorable Nessani Kate Bilankoulou, Afrique du Sud. Honorable Pondé Sunga Mesha, Zambie. Honorable Goudlouki euh, Kwaramba, Zimbabwe. Des excuses ont été reçues des représentants suivants. Honorable Piti Piti Ramoke, Les Autos. Honorable Anne-Marie Bilan Bagou, RDC. Honorable Marie-Jeanne Sabrina Tour, Maurice. Un représentant n'a pas encore été désigné après les élections générales pour Namibie. Et aussi, un représentant n'a pas encore été désigné après euh, les élections générales pour euh, Tanzanie. 3.0. Mot d'ouverture de la vice-présidente, dont euh, moi-même. Dans son mot d'ouverture, l'honorable vice-présidente Marie-Jean d'Arc Maskoulamali, euh, euh, je suis présente, à l'informer la réunion que l'autonomisation des femmes était devenue ces dernières années un point central dans l'éradication de la pauvreté. Elle a cependant souligné que l'autonomisation et l'indépendance des femmes ainsi que l'amélioration de leur statut socio-économique, politique et sanitaire étaient entravées par de nombreux facteurs parmi lesquels figuraient le travail domestique de soins non rémunérés. Rappelons que les comités permanents sur l'égalité des genres, la promotion de la femme et le développement de la jeunesse se réunissaient sous les thèmes « travail domestique » et des soins non rémunérés. Pourquoi les parlements devraient-ils s'en soucier? La vice-présidente a noté 
non sans grande préoccupation. Qu'en 2018, environ 606 millions de femmes en âge de travailler se sont déclarées indisponibles pour l'emploi. En raison du travail des soins non rémunérés, et c'est contre seulement 41 millions d'hommes inactifs pour les mêmes motifs. L'honorable vice-présidente était d'avis que cet état des choses compromettait les bien-être des femmes, favorisait leur dépendance financière et limitait leur possibilité de travailler décent au point de les restreindre à un statut inférieur. La vice-présidente a observé que les parlements nationaux avaient non seulement la possibilité, mais encore l'influence d'assurer une bonne compréhension de l'importance de la lutte contre les inégalités entre les sexes, notamment en ce qui concerne les travail domestiques et des soins non rémunérés. Et c'est en catalysant et en renforçant les mécanismes nationaux et régionaux compétents susceptibles de fournir des réponses à ces genres de travail. Elle a souligné qu'en qu reconnaissant, en réduisant et en redistribuant les travaux de soins non rémunérés, les femmes et les jeunes filles auraient dû, auraient du temps de s'engager dans des emplois formels et des activités de nature socio-économique et politique. Et la part des soins non rémunérés, un thème de dialogue avec les parties prenantes concernées et à promouvoir l'utilisation systématique d'une budgétisation sensible au genre comme méthode d'analyse de ces genres de travail et son intégration dans le programme de développement. 4.0 Travail domestique et des soins non rémunérés. Pourquoi les parlements devraient-ils s'en soucier? Les comités permanents sur l'égalité des genres, la promotion de la femme et le développement de la jeunesse a tenu réunion virtuelle le 14 avril 2021. La réunion a été organisée sous le thème travail domestique et des soins non rémunérés. Pourquoi les parlements devraient-ils s'en soucier? Les comités permanents euh, sur les GPFDG a reçu des présentations d'experts sur les thèmes si mentionnés faites par des personnes ressources suivantes. Petiti, Madame Chama Mwanda Lessa, responsable du programme des droits des femmes Oxfam, Zambie. Hum. Euh, deux Petiti, Madame Simasiku Kelly, Keti, excusez-moi, Sangande, euh, responsable des droits des femmes, Action Aide Zambie. Les comités ont noté qu'à travers le monde, environ 75 du travail domestique et de soins non rémunérés, euh, soins non rémunérés dans les foyers et les communautés étaient assurés par les femmes et les jeunes filles et que dans les contextes actuels, la plupart des économies ignoraient une large partie de ces genres de travail. Le comité a également noté le fait qu'étant donné que le travail domestique et des soins non rémunérés était en grande partie assuré par les femmes et les jeunes filles. Celles-ci avaient très peu ou pas du tout, de temps de poursuivre leurs études, de gagner leur vie décemment ou de participer aux affaires de leur communauté et ou occuper des positions décisionnelles. Le comité a pris conscience 
du fait que si le travail domestique et des soins non rémunérés n'était pas pris en compte dans les politiques de développement, il pourrait entraîner des graves retombées sur les résultats du développement. Dans ce sens, qui laisserait les femmes et les jeunes filles coincées au bas de l'échelle économique. Le comité a pas contre. Excusez-moi. Le comité a par contre apprécié le fait qu'en l'absence d'investissement du temps, des efforts et des ressources dans le travail domestique, de soins non rémunérés, les communautés, les lieux de travail et des économies entières seraient paralysées. Le comité a noté qu'à l'échelle mondiale, les femmes et les jeunes filles, représentées des deux tiers de la main d'œuvre rémunérée dans les secteurs du travail des soins. Depuis, le comité a, a noté qu'environ 12,5 milliards d'heures de travail domestique et de soins non rémunérés étaient effectués par les femmes et les jeunes filles par jour. Et que si évalué au salaire minimum, ces heures représenteraient une contribution à l'économie mondiale d'au moins 10,8 trillions de dollars américains par an, soit plus de trois fois la taille des industries technologiques mondiales. À cet égard, le comité a noté avec une profonde préoccupation que cette responsabilité dis disproportionnée pour le travail domestique et des soins non rémunérés soutenait et renforçait tous les aspects de l'inégalité entre le sexe. Le comité était très préoccupé par la manière dont ces travaux de soins lourds et inégaux et les normes sociales et sexaux spécifiques empêchaient les femmes d'assumer des rôles de prise des décisions politiques et de leadership et de participer à des actions collectives pour la promotion de leurs droits en matière de santé sexuelle et procréative, de travail décent et digne et de vie sans violence. Le comité a également noté avec préoccupation qu'en ce qui concerne les travaux domestiques et des soins non rémunérés, des opinions suivantes subsistaient. Petit a, il s'agit d'une affaire privée et non subtique. Petit b, cette question constitue une source de divisions et de controverses. Petit c, les soins non rémunérés sont complexes. Petit D, c'est une question insignifiante. Petit E, il ne s'agissait pas de devenus, pas de revenus ou de bénéfices. Petit F, c'est un terme trop long. Petit G, ce n'est pas une question urgente. Et petit H, il n'y a aucune preuve réelle pour appuyer l'importance du travail domestique et des soins non rémunéré. Cinq points zéro. Défi des réponses au travail domestique et des soins non rémunérés dans le pays et développement en développement au niveau politique. Les comités a noté avec profonde préoccupation que le travail domestique et des soins non rémunérés en tant que problème socio-économique et de développement étaient sous-estimés dans la plupart des pays en développement. L'engagement politique concret et des investissements financiers dans les dix travail et les infrastructures d'appui y afférents étaient conséquemment faibles. Le comité a également noté que les interventions politiques relatives au travail domestique et des soins non rémunérés tendaient 
assez limité au seul rôle des femmes dans la prise en charge de la santé familiale et celle des membres de la communauté, notamment en ce qui concerne les VIH SIDA. Le comité a pris conscience avec regret que les travail domestique et des soins non rémunérés étaient considérés en général comme étant une activité non qualifiée et improductive. Et puis, encore, comme n'était pas du travail comme tel, et c'est malgré le fait que ces genres de travail soient essentiels au fonctionnement des sociétés et des économies. Le comité a noté que, malgré la participation accrue des femmes au travail rémunéré et la non-pertinente pertinence plus en plus croissante du modèle de soutien des familles masculines dans le monde. La participation des hommes au travail des soins non rémunérés n'avait pas accru de manière substantielle. 6.0. Stratégie de lutte contre les travail domestique et de soins non rémunérés et leur incorporation dans les programmes de développement. Le comité a précisé, a apprécié la stratégie des quatre R des luttes contre les travail domestique et les soins non rémunérés tels que décrite ci-dessous. Reconnaître que le travail domestique et les soins non rémunérés est principalement effectué par les femmes, qu'il est un travail, un vrai sens du mot et un genre de production qui crée de la valeur réelle et que, ipso facto, il doit être reconnu comme tel dans les politiques pertinentes. Réduire le nombre total d'heures à consacrer au travail domestique et de soins non rémunérés en améliorant l'accès aux technologies et infrastructures d'appui abordables permettant de gagner du temps tel que l'eau, l'électricité et les transports publics. Redistribuer les travaux domestiques et les soins non rémunérés au, au sein des ménages. Transférer une partie des coûts, des responsabilités et des opportunités associées au travail domestique et des soins non rémunérés vers l'État et les secteurs privés. Représenter et efficacement les personnels soignants dans les processus de conception et de prise de décision, afin qu'ils puissent exprimer ses préoccupations et élaborer des politiques, budgets et programmes en conséquence. Le comité a également pris note d'autres approches qui pourraient être utilisées dans les cadres du traitement de la question du travail domestique et des soins non rémunérés, comme indiqué ci-dessous. Petit a, s'attaquer au patriarcat et promouvoir d'approche féministe en privilégiant la nécessité de partager les rôles et les responsabilités. Petit b, veillez à ce que les communautés et les citoyens comprennent et soient conscients du fardeau du travail des soins non rémunérés. Petit C, mise en œuvre des projets sociaux, des transferts de fonds et des services sociaux inconditionnels par les États qui puissent relever les femmes et les jeunes filles du travail domestique et de soins non rémunérés comme des garderies ou des coopératives pour assister les femmes qui œuvrent en vue d'accroître leurs revenus. 7.0. 
importance des enquêtes sur l'emploi du temps. La, comi la comité a noté que les enquêtes sur l'emploi du temps offraient un outil unique pour l'exploration d'un large éventail des préoccupations d'ordre politique, notamment l'évaluation de la qualité de vie ou du bien-être général. L'analyse de la répartition du travail entre femmes et hommes, l'amélioration des estimations de toutes les formes de travail rémunérées et non rémunérées, et l'estimation de la production ménagère et sa contribution au produit intérieur brut, PIB. Le comité a en outre noté avec préoccupation qu'en dépit du fait que certains pays aient fait des efforts pour comprendre la dimension et la contribution de ces secteurs non marchands. Des ambiguïtés entourant les concepts de ces gens de travail et les manques de, la, de sa compréhension semblaient s'ajouter à la mauvaise génération des données. Les enquêtes sur l'emploi, l'emploi du temps assuraient que le travail des soins non rémunérés soit compatibilisé, comptabilisé dans les statistiques et soit pris en compte dans les représentations de l'économie et dans l'élaboration des politiques. En ce qui concerne la collecte, de données sur l'emploi du temps en Afrique, le comité a noté avec une vive préoccupation qu'en 2018, il n'y avait que 16 pays africains qui disposaient des données nationales sur l'emploi du temps. Ces données leur offraient une bonne base pour débattre du travail, des soins non rémunérés en temps plus, en termes plus concrets et pour explorer la manière dont la responsabilité pour ces genres de travail interagissait avec d'autres activités comme les gains de revenus. Le comité a également noté que les données sur l'emploi du temps étaient de plus en plus pertinentes pour l'élaboration des politiques et développement. Les données sur l'emploi du temps, démontrer combien de temps, minutes ou heures des individus consacrés aux activités. Aux activités de travail rémunéré et de travail non rémunéré, comme les tâches ménagères et des gardes des enfants, les loisirs et les soins personnels. Ces données pourraient donc améliorer la compréhension de la manière dont les individus prennent des décisions concernant les temps et élargissant notre connaissance du bien-être. En outre, les données sur l'emploi du temps ont relevé partiellement en raison des normes et rôles de sexe la manière dont les hommes et les femmes passaient différemment leur temps, ce qui a résulté dans une répartition inégale du temps de travail rémunéré et non rémunéré. Généralement, les femmes portant une responsabilité disproportionnellement plus grande pour le travail non rémunéré et dépensant proportionnellement moins, moins de temps sur le travail rémunéré en comparaison aux hommes. Le comité a réaffirmé à quel point la collecte des données sur l'emploi du temps faisait partie intégrante de la cible 5.4 de l'objectif de développement durable 5 qui préconisait de reconnaître, de reconnaître, de réduire et de redistribuer les travaux de soins non rémunérés. 
comme condition euh, sine qua non pour atteindre l'égalité des sexes. Grâce aux données sur l'emploi du temps, il a été possible de déterminer en quoi, comment, pourquoi et en combien de temps les activités ont été exécutées. Cependant, le comité a noté avec une profonde préoccupation qu'entre 2000 et 2015, au total, 135 pays ne disposaient d'aucune donnée sur la proposition des temps consacrés au travail domestique et de soins non rémunérés, rendant ainsi invisible la majeure partie du travail domestique non rémunéré dans le pays en développement. Par conséquent, les comités sur la GPFDG décident par les présents documents de demander instamment aux parlements nationaux de commencer à déballer des politiques concernant les travaux non rémunérés, de renforcer et d'appliquer les lois et politiques en faveur des travailleurs domestiques et de demander des comptes à ceux qui auront violé les droits des dits travailleurs. Des politiques de travail reconnaissant les travail domestique non rémunéré devrait être mis en place pour la protection des femmes et des jeunes filles qui constituent en majorité dans le travail domestique non rémunéré. Convenu que la reconnaissance, la réduction et la redistribution du travail non rémunéré attirait l'attention sur les rôles des soins dans la société fournirait une base pour surveiller et évaluer les effets des politiques gouvernementales planifiées, libérer du temps pour permettre aux femmes et aux jeunes filles de s'engager dans des emplois formels et des activités sociaux, politiques, et porterait les femmes à un niveau où elles ne seraient pas les plus vulnérables. Demandez instamment aux comités parlementaires nationaux de commencer à délibérer sur les travaux domestiques non rémunérés, étant donné qu'il ne s'agit plus d'un problème social, mais d'un problème gouvernance et à trouver des approches, des approches pour éradiquer un traitement injuste et une répartition inefficace du travail grâce à la fourniture des services publics et sociaux abordables et de meilleure qualité tant aux hommes qu'aux femmes. Exhorter les parlements à initier plus structurellement et plus sérieusement des discussions portant sur les travail non rémunérés et exam examiner les indicateurs utiles, pertinents, qui pourraient être pris en compte lorsque des questions relatives au dit travail non rébattu. En outre, exhorter les parlements à demander au ministre responsable du travail de tenir compte du travail de soins non rémunérés. Recommander la réalisation d'études sur l'emploi du temps et l'adoption des politiques visant à promouvoir le partage des responsabilités entre les hommes et les les femmes ou au sein des ménages et des familles, afin d'alléger les fardeaux des rôles multiples joués par les femmes. Attirer l'attention sur ces types de travail 
en assurant la collecte d'informations quantitatives sur toute sa portée. Demandez au Bureau des statistiques nationaux et ou au comité de fournir les données nécessaires pour que les États puissent agir sur les implications du travail des soins non rémunérés. Implorez les gouvernements nationaux de mettre en œuvre des infrastructures comme les moulins, les puits, l'eau courante, les combustibles alternatifs tels que l'énergie solaire et l'énergie éolienne, afin de pouvoir libérer plus des temps qui permettraient aux femmes et aux jeunes filles de s'engager dans des emplois formels, des activités socio-économiques et politiques grâce à la réduction du travail non rémunéré. En effet, la lourde et inégale large charge du travail non rémunéré subi par les femmes et les jeunes filles a un impact négatif sur leur santé, leur bien-être et les postes de prise de décision. Faire appel aux femmes parlementaires pour qu'elles utilisent leur influence utilement afin de garantir que les parlements puissent commencer à approfondir la question du travail des soins non rémunérés et à influencer la façon dont ces types de travail peuvent avoir un indice une incidence sur les produits intérieur brut, PIB, de l'État, ainsi que les régimes fiscaux. Réitérer l'importance des données sur l'emploi du temps en tant que en tant qu'outil de plus en plus pertinent utilisé dans les politiques et développements concernant les travaux non rémunérés. Plus précisément, les données sur l'emploi du temps font partie intégrante de la cible 5.4 de l'objectif de développement durable 5, qui préconise de reconnaître, de réduire et de redistribuer les travaux de soins non rémunérés comme l'une des con conditions essentielles pour atteindre l'égalité des sexes. Encourager la redistribution du travail des soins non rémunérés, notamment au niveau des ménages, pour que tant les hommes que les femmes puissent jouir des bénéfices de, de, du développement qui résulterait du partage des responsabilités. Encourager en outre les décideurs politiques et les législateurs à tenir des débats sur les rôles des sexes et sur la façon dont c'est dit, ceci affecte la société, mais plus important encore, les encourager à éliminer les normes sociétales qui dictent que le travail non rémunéré est réservé aux seuls femmes et à veiller à ce que les hommes se fassent champions de celle cause. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Merci à vous, les participants. Merci, Madame le Secrétaire général. Merci, honorable Marie-Jeanne d'Arc Massi Mali. Merci pour cette brillante présentation. À présent, je vais permettre à l'honorable Talita Monaco-Tala de débattre de l'appui à la motion. Honorable, vous avez souhaité soutenir 
cette motion, vous avez la parole. I rest to support the motion to adopt the report of the standing of the standing committee on gender equality, women advancement, and youth development. So ably moved by the chairperson, Honorable Ramukai. Mr. President, I wish to echo the movers' sentiments that women social, economic, political, and health status has been hampered <clears throat> by factors such as unpaid care and domestic work. Unpaid care and domestic work undermines women's well-being, foster, fosters financial dependent, dependence, and limits the options for decent work. There is therefore need to ensure that women are empowered and their autonomy is improved by tackling the issue of unpaid care and domestic work. Mr. President, I wish to add my voice to the concern raised by the mover regarding the lack of data on unpaid care and domestic work. It is deeply worrying that between 2000 and 2015, 135 countries had no data on the proportion of time spent on unpaid and domestic work, rendering the bulk of unpaid domestic work in developing countries invisible. Mr. President, I concur with the movers of observation that this need for the national parliament in the Southern region and globally to provide insight into the import, importance of addressing gender inequality with regard to unpaid care and domestic work by strengthening effective national and regional mechanism that can develop responses to this type of work. I do agree with the mover that by recognizing, reducing, redistributing unpaid care work, more time will be freed for women and girls to engage in formal jobs, socioeconomics, and political activities where they in that regard, I welcome the proposal by the mover to make unpaid care and domestic work a dialogue issue within national parliaments and with the relevant stakeholders. There is a need for the promotion of systematic use of gender response budgeting as a method of analyzing this type of work and incorporating it into the development agenda. Mr. President, I further welcome the proposal put forward by the mover for individual governments to conduct time use studies and adopt policies to promote shared responsibility between men and women within the household and family to ease the burden of multiple roles played by women, thereby drawing attention to unpaid care and domestic work. Mr. President, I second the motion. Thank you. Merci, honorable, pour ce soutien. Après l'appui apporté à la motion par l'honorable Talita, je soumets ce rapport 
à débat. Les membres qui souhaitent débattre doivent l'indiquer en levant la main. Honorable membre, vous rappelons que pour des raisons de précision de l'enregistrement du procès verbal, vous devez toujours communiquer votre nom, votre pays, chaque fois que vous prenez la parole. Chers collègues, faites-vous enregistrer pour prendre la parole. Le temps de la parole est de quatre minutes. Zimbabwe. C'est Oh non, we put then Seychelles. Les collègues de Zimbabwe pouvez intervenir. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President, for allowing me time to add my voice to this very important topic. Okay, I am good luck, Kwaramba, member of parliament, parliament from the Zimbabwe parliament. And now this is a very important topic, which if you're not considered in developing, in developing policies, unpaid care work could have severe consequences, such as leaving women and girls trapped at the bottom of the economy. Uh, Mr. President, Women spend uh, about 75% of their time at home doing unpaid domestic work. In most cases, social services like water, health, energy, transport are not available. As a result, women spend time, uh, for example, fetching water, fetching firewood, hence reproductive time is lost. This impacts negatively on the women's ability to participate in public life. More money <laughs> will be channeled towards the social services so that women have a chance to improve themselves. The country's budgets should have a gender lens. <laughs> to, to, to address the needs of women girls and the disabled. This way, we can achieve gender equality when issues that affect women are adequately addressed. I thank you. Merci, cher collègue. Les collègues de Seychelles, vous avez la parole. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I do appreciate the, the report which was presented, but it was mostly focused on the um, underpaid workers. And my contribution or my uh, theories is that uh, gender inequality is a social process by which men and women are treated equally. What I meant was that a gender equality inequality is experienced differently across different cultures and also affects both all, everybody. Um, in Seychelles, I'm talking about the, the small island states. Um, uh, for example, we are having issues, social issues, social ills, amongst our young boys, which has not, uh, should be incorporated, especially in regards to illicit drug use. And secondly, we have seen that, that our HIV prevalence uh, for the small island states are higher amongst the male population rather than female population. And therefore, I would urge the, uh, the, the, the SADC co um, uh, community to include, to, to ensure that there is inclusiveness in regards not only to women, but only to boys, to ensure that all member states have the same say into whatever 
uh, resolution is being passed. Secondly, I haven't seen much in regards to um, youth development uh, because I know youth development is mostly geared towards the preparation of young people to meet the challenges of adolescence and adulthood and achieve their final or full potentials. And of course, there are barriers which affects the youths of today. So therefore, I tend to rest my um, theories. Mr. President, thank you. There are no further hands. Honorable Anna Marie, you have the parole. Thank you, Mr. President, for the parole. Je voudrais à mon tour euh, féliciter la commission qui a travaillé euh, sur la question du travail des femmes, ainsi que les hommes. Ma suggestion est par rapport à la rémunération. Nous constatons malheureusement que c'est un travail qui, qui ne suit pas la réglementation euh, au niveau national, même au niveau international. Je pense qu'au niveau de la SADEC, il faille que la commission puisse réfléchir Comment arriver à réglementer ce travail-là euh, <coughs> par rapport, excusez-moi, par rapport euh, euh, aux femmes et aux hommes qui sont utilisés. Et dans la plupart des cas, nous constatons que quand ces gens sont utilisés, ceux qui sont plus rémunérés, ce sont les hommes qui sont bien rémunérés que les femmes. Je pense que si c'est réglementé au niveau de chaque pays, et les gens devront suivre maintenant euh, l'orientation qui serait, n'est-ce pas, donnée par le ministère du Travail. À ce moment-là, on va valoriser ce travail-là qui est souvent euh, utilisé par les femmes. Donc, je voudrais suggérer à la commission euh, d'y penser lorsqu'on devra proposer au niveau de la SADEC euh, certaines orientations, peut-être... Euh, à échanger avec le, le responsable respectif de chaque, de chaque pays. Merci. Merci, honorable. Mais je ne vois que des de, de collègues femmes intervenir. Et nous, les hommes, pourquoi on n'intervient pas? Le sujet vraiment est important. La lutte contre les inégalités. Ouais. C'est ça, non? Ouais, ouais. Je crois qu'il faut remonter euh, aux entraves socio-culturelles, qui, à un certain égard, a fait des hommes de roi par moment. Mais si nous partons du principe que les hommes naissent égaux, en droit et en dignité, je pense qu'au niveau de nos différents parlements, nous devons trouver des solutions pour éliminer ces inégalités entre les gens. On peut y arriver avec un maximum de bonne volonté tout en n'oubliant pas la spécificité qui est reconnue aussi bien aux hommes qu'aux femmes, à certains égards. Ça, on ne peut pas l'oublier, mais nous devons lutter contre ces inégalités pour que la femme, nos mères, trouve leur place dans notre société. S'il si n'y a pas une élimination de ces inégalités, nous risquons de ne pas accéder facilement au développement. Ce sera un blocage. Moi, je suis de cet avis-là que nous devons au niveau du Parlement de la SADEC, au niveau de nos parlements respectifs, travailler avec la ferme volonté 
d'arriver à éliminer ces inégalités entre les hommes et les femmes. Merci. Alors, à présent, je redonne la parole à l'honorable Koula Mali pour rencontrer les préoccupations exprimées par les honorables. Um, sincere apologies, honorable president. <laughs> oui. Yeah, the, the three interventions. Demain. There are three interventions from Namibi, Lesotho, and Zimbabwe. Honorable um, Mpariwa from Zimbabwe and Honorable Sapang Tita Mosena from Lesotho. Thank you. And Honorable Marukua from Namibia. Thank you. Merci. Chers collègues, les collègues de Lesotho, vous avez la parole. Chers collègues, vous avez la parole. You are muted, Honorable Mosena. You are muted. Okay. Um, I think we need to switch off another device or the other microphones. Okay. There's still the Hello. Hello. Okay, we're having. Maybe, Honorable President, we may allow Namibia and Zimbabwe while Lesotho fixes their system, if it pleases the Honorable President. Go ahead. Honorable. Go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Thank you very much, uh, SG, Honorable President. Uh, my interjection will just be short. Firstly, I'd like to give appreciation to the committee for really coming up with a narrowed down uh, view on, on feminism on, in terms of trying to uh, reach to gender equality by zooming into the most vulnerable community, not just looking at women, but the general uh, ideology of some feminist work states that women come with structural classes. For instance, a middle income black or white woman in the city will have different struggles in comparison to that in the rural areas. And I believe this zooming down into unpaid domestic work um, looks into uh, the necessary challenges to strengthen some of this deprived, uh, economically deprived uh, sector within the woman. Um, it is very much progressive. progressive. It is one that we can really say that um, we are moving into the right direction in terms of gender equality, by not just looking at a whole scale and, 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 and making uh, generalistic uh, comments, but really trying to go to the nitty gritty of the issue. Uh, another recommendation that I could just bring into the report is that perhaps we can urge governments and civil societies to start being active in the member states um, to ensure that we uh, bring in an annual uh, census in terms of these domestic workers to see if they can be registered, if they can be a registry for this unpaid and domestic workers so that to make it easier for them to also fight for them in terms of human rights issues, in terms of uh, labor issues, so that they can also get a, a voice. In terms of 
President. Your name? Yes, Honorable President, I'm also informed that I didn't uh, state my name. My name is Utara Motu from Namibia. De los sotores. La comunicación es rétablie. Si la comunicación es rétablie, vous avez la parole. Ça va pas. Alors, en attendant que les Losoto soient en ligne, nous donnons la parole au collègue du Zimbabwe. Thank you, Honorable President, for the opportunity to speak to this very important motion, uh, which I also equally associate myself with as a woman. Honorable Speaker, Honorable President, you realize that uh, the majority of women are domestic workers, be it at work or in the, in the home. They are domestic workers, long working hours without any recognition, no social protection in terms of protective clothing, no pension, honorable president, and that's a woman. And can I make this declaration of saying, all women are working women. Our input into the economic development should be recognized and put in its rightful place. Honorable President, women's rights are human rights. We are all equal before the Lord. And I hope and trust that a Sadak will pay heed to the equal pay for work of equal value. Decent work has been mentioned in the presentation and in the recommendations of the committee. And the ILO defines decent work in various instruments of its uh, organs. Convention 189 on domestic workers, honorable president, takes into cognizance all the work that uh, women do, including children, including those who are actually formally employed. My core, honorable president, is that governments also should ratify this particular convention because it takes a lot of uh, cognizance in terms of all the problems that have been highlighted in the report and also other instruments to protect the rights of workers, women and children We are in the world of work. Member states after ratification should then consider domestication to ensure implementation. For with implementation, then we can formulate evaluation and monitoring so that we see what will be happening. I know some countries in the region have already ratified and they have instruments, but uh, political will to those we have not actually ratified is also key. So I'm, I'm appealing and I humbly submit honorable president that uh, member states also ratify the several instruments, especially convention 189 of the International Labor Organization. Uh, there is also need to expand social protection programs and safety nets to female-headed households, child-headed households, and several other groupings that are as vulnerable uh, groupings. Exten extension or introduction of free basic health care services so that we can actually assist in, in, uh, in the revival of, um, of our own um, communities. Finally, COVID vaccination to all vulnerable groups, honorable president, and um, to domestic workers, women are also an essential service. I want to thank you for this opportunity, honorable president. Thank you. Merci, cher collègue. Merci. 
Les collègues de Losoto, est-ce que la communication est rétablie? Thank si you, vous êtes Honorable en... President. Honorable... Yes, they are ready. May I kindly advise IT to mute Honorable Ritumet Monaheng in order to reduce the echoes from the side of Lesotho so that Honorable Sita Musina can take the floor without those echoes. Thank you, Honorable President. I'm not sure if I'm audible now. Am I audible, Mr. President? Yes, you are. Nous vous entendons. Maintenant, il est devenu inaudible. Hein? Il est devenu inaudible. I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. I think we are having problems. May I just skip this part when I try to solve it? <clears throat> Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, she can try again. Is it? Honorable oh. Masina, you are requested to try again. IT requests that you try again. Done. Kindly unmute and no no she's okay. Let us okay, don't unmute yourself. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you, Ronzi. Thanks. Yes, Ronzi, can you hear us? Voice to this a report that's been ably presented. Adding on to the comments that have been presented by the previous speakers, um, I think this is a very, very important report, which uh, fully is fully, fully supported, because it now brings us to assess, understand, and analyze the criticality of women, since they are the ones that are mostly involved in unpaid care work. And, and it's very important that we as member parliaments, we take note of this, um, the, 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 the challenges and the frustrations that women undergo by virtue of not being recognized and allowed to exercise their liberty in the economic space. If uh, women are very much used to uh, exercising their roles as women in the house, in the home, caring for their families, etc. But in the process, they are not remunerated. That is a frustration because culturally, the women themselves now, which is the, the item that I wanted to bring on board, the women themselves, we might find that we are actually discussing this issue right now, but since it's a social cultural problem, it's a social cultural norm that some of them might not necessarily want to be done away with because it is like their second skin. So as we deliberate on this issue, that it's really unfair on women to be exercising their role, that for some of them really represents who they are, we should take cognizance of the fact that even if we need men to get engaged in the topic, to, to have men engaged and help us to have women, women remunerated in their spaces that they're working in, we might be facing challenges that we also need to be prepared for. And to enlighten the women and to enlighten the men alike that it's really all about engaging equally in the economic space. And, and this, this item 
it's it's not really um, indicated in the report or really uh, you know, emphasized in the report that is one of the things that needs to be taken uh, with in the recommendations that have been presented in the report. But however, we do understand uh, the, the, the good message that uh, is brought by the report is the fact that as member parliaments, we also have to ensure that when we distribute funds, when we allow our nations to make use of the hard uh, taxpayers' monies, we should make sure that it is done to reduce the burden on women, the likes of roads, infrastructure that have been indicated in the report, accessible uh, potable water, all those, it is really our responsibility as member parliaments to ensure that we ease the strain and the burden on women. And these are just um, my few remarks to the report, um, Mr. President. I, it's, it's fully supported. Thank you very much. Merci, cher collègue. Merci. Alors, il n'y a plus d'intervenants. Il y a encore une intervention. Il y a eu deux personnes de Lesotho. Il y a eu deux personnes de Lesotho. Lesotho, y a-t-il encore un intervenant? It was only one. It was only one honorable president. Correct. Alors, il n'y a plus d'intervenants. Donc, j'avais dit au départ que par les réponses de, de l'honorable... Pour la Mali, les débats étaient clos. Les débats étaient clos. Et j'ai mis au voie l'adoption du rapport du comité permanent de l'égalité des sexes, de la promotion de la femme et du développement de la jeunesse. Y a-t-il encore d'objections Y a-t-il d'objections? There is a hand from Zimbabwe. I'm not sure if it's a mistake, Honorable President. From Honorable Mpariwa. There's a hand that just shot up. Yes, sir. It's, it's a hand up. Uh, Honorable Mpariwa. Yes, Honorable President. Vous avez la parole, collègue. Uh, thank you, Honorable President. May I suggest that uh, since all the reports were circulated in advance before this uh, plenary session, that uh, we may just focus on the, just the introduction, no announcement of the committee names, et cetera, because already we've gone through the reports. Then uh, the, the chairperson could just go through the recommendations so that we can take into consideration and we limit the, the, the time. And also let's stick to the four minutes and 10 minutes for presentation by the chairperson. Thank you, Honorable President, if it pleases you. Merci. Donc, si tous les collègues sont d'accord, nous passons aux recommandations alors. Pardon? Hmm? Oui. Non. Mais, mais je crois que nous avions adopté le rapport, non? 
Le rapport, nous l'avions adopté. Nous avons adopté des rapports. Donc, s'il faut revisiter les recommandations, on commence au point 7, c'est ça? The Honorable President, there's a hand from Madagascar. I think we omitted for the Honorable um, Mover to round up the motion and pronounce the adoption. Um, as a consensus, Honorable President, thank you. Collègue de Madagascar, vous avez la parole, collègue. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Euh, comme c'est un sujet très important pour nous tous, Monsieur le Président, euh, j'aurais aimé vraiment qu'il y avait des, des collègues hommes à part vous qui ont normalement pour soutenir notre motion de proposition. Mais malheureusement, non. Mais je crois qu'ils vont être d'accord pour l'adoption. Donc, je propose donc l'adoption de la motion. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Merci, Madame euh, Secrétaire générale. Euh, merci à vous tous, euh, chers collègues. Merci, euh, honorable. Merci, chers collègues. Chers collègues, y a-t-il d'objections à adopter ces rapports? Les collègues ont préféré que on passe aux recommandations. Mais l'introduction, évidemment, à part les Honorable noms. Honorable President, if I may clarify, um, the, the point of order from Zimbabwe was for reports that will come after this adoption. Um, the report was ably dealt with, and I believe it was a, a timing issue on the part of recognizing. Zimbabwe to intervene. Thank you. Ah. Merci, merci beaucoup. C'est clair. Merci. Donc, il n'y a pas d'objection. Les rapports du comité permanent de l'égalité des sexes, de la promotion et du développement de la promotion de la femme et du développement de la jeunesse et adoptée par l'Assemblée plénière. Je vous remercie, chers collègues. Pour la suite de nos travaux, il nous reste quatre points à l'ordre du jour que nous devons terminer. Ça demande de la célérité. Donc, nous devons économiser le temps pour y faire face, comme les collègues l'ont proposé. On présente, on introduit les rapports et on passe à l'essentiel vers les recommandations. On lit les recommandations. Le reste, on fait le résumé, on fait la synthèse. Est-ce que vous êtes d'accord avec cette méthodologie de travail pour le reste des dossiers? Madame la secrétaire générale. Indeed, honorable speaker, I see agreement from Lesotho. I see a hand from Madagascar. I don't know if it's a mistake, Madagascar or You'd like to intervene? You are muted, Honorable Messi. You are muted. IT kindly unmute. 
Merci, madame euh, la secrétaire générale. Euh, ainsi, euh, je vous demande de, euh, qu'on va en, nous excusant pour se retirer un peu euh, à cause de notre réunion à côté. Donc, euh, on vous laisse. Excusez-nous. D'accord. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Merci. Donc, c'est toutes les, les honorables collègues qui vont là-bas à la réunion, quoi. Une réunion des honorables oui, députés une... d'art. Oui, une réunion de, de l'Assemblée nationale qu'on va continuer à côté. On va faire réunion pour euh, notre euh, loi de finances rectificative. Okay. Ah, d'accord. Merci beaucoup. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Merci, merci, honorable. Merci. Du bon travail, merci. Madame la secrétaire générale, quant à la méthodologie, tout le monde est d'accord On procède de la même manière On fait la synthèse. Indeed, honorable rapport. president, it is progressive and given the paucity of time, it is in order. Merci, merci. Merci. Alors, nous passons maintenant au troisième point à l'ordre du jour. À cet effet, j'invite Madame la Secrétaire générale à nous donner lecture du troisième point à l'ordre du jour. Notice of motion of the report of the Committee on Human and Social Development and Special Programs. Merci. There's a hand from Zimbabwe. Madame la Secrétaire. There's a hand from Honorable Ndebele. I'm not sure if it's a point of order. Madam Secretary General, we have had uh, uh, Honorable President, we have had the benefit of uh, going through this report and uh, we have noticed that uh, there is an error in that uh, uh, at the very end of the report, the report does not uh, carry a prayer. So it will be self-defeating then if we ask the presenter to go straight to recommendations because there are none to consider if I may bring that to the attention of the house. Oui. Alors, l'honorable Débélé, il avait demandé la parole. Uh, uh, honorable President, uh, I will repeat myself again. We've just gone through this report and it's uh, noticeable that uh, at the end of the report, there are no recommendations. Uh, put differently, there is no prayer. What we have is a report comprising of uh, uh, preambles, so to put it. The, 
il, il peut nous donner une idée générale sur le rapport et puis nous pouvons passer point par point. Il nous fait une idée générale. Uh, honorable President, if I may come in as a point of order. At the end of the report, we were supposed to have recommendations uh, stating that now, therefore, this plenary is expected to do A, B, C. That is missing. So materially, the report is defective. C'est la présentation. Hein? Reconnaissance. All due respect, it's a substantive matter because the plenary cannot apply its mind to non-existent recommendations. Alors, il y a une partie de recommandations, mais elles ne sont pas euh, organiser son pêle-mêle demande, vous voyez point 4 et 10, demande au Parlement voilà et propose 5, 5, point 5, 5 c'est une recommandation implore Mm -hmm. Honorable President, yeah, okay. Honorable President, if I if I may. Oui, vous avez la parole, Madame la Secrétaire Générale. Yes, Honorable President, I wish to submit for your consideration that. The tenor of the report does include recommendations. And therefore, if we can um, probably overlook the fact that there is no section for the prayer, but admit that in the substance of the recommendation, the, uh, in the substance of the preamble, um, as indicated by Honorable Ndebele, there are recommendations. I believe that this report should be um, admitted for presentation, Honorable President. And in future, the uniformity of reports in that fashion will be duly considered. D'accord, Madame la Secrétaire Générale. Chers collègues, Je vous propose que euh, l'honorable Rossi nous présente le rapport, que nous fasse état du rapport de manière succincte. Et après, nous allons passer page par page. Yes, Honorable President, that is the import of my intervention. And I'm, I'm, I'm humbly recommending that uh, the report, the prayer is the fact that the re recommendation is that this plenary assembly do adopt the report of the plenary assembly. And in view of the fact that there's no rule 
or statutory provision which says that a report must have a recommendation for the plenary assembly. In other words, um, if that is not included, um, we should not discard mm -hmm. a report on the basis of the fact that there's no resolution or recommendation. These are synonyms in my view, honorable president, thank you. Merci. Chers collègues, pour gagner du temps, j'invite l'honorable Rossi Bistocket à présenter la motion pour l'adoption du rapport du Comité permanent de développement humain et social et des programmes spéciaux. Honorable Bistocket, vous avez la parole. Oui. Avez-vous une Mais... motion? Mais... Thank you, Mr. President. Um, uh, point, point, wrote... of order, point of order. Respectez la procédure, madame. Vous allez présenter. There's a, there's a point of order. Oui, le respect de la procédure, oui. Présentez la motion en votre propre nom et quelqu'un va appuyer la motion. Et puis je vous redonnerai la parole pour présenter le rapport. Allez-y, honorable. Do, do I continue? Do I My continue? Hand. Okay. Oui, do I continue? Start. Do I continue, there's, Mr. Yes. President? There's a point yes. of order. Yes. My hand. Mr. President, do I continue? There is a point of order. Allez-y, motion, oui. Rappel um, le règlement. Mr. Thank you, thank you, Mr. President. Um, it is unfortunate that uh, the Secretary General is advising that we proceed with the present with the presentation of uh, a report that simply has introductions or preamble. If you start from um, the ESCO report to the plenary, you will notice that each item that is being reported ends with recommendations that the plenary should note, that the plenary should take note of this, that the plenary should do this, that the plenary, should, you take the treasurer's report, the same, and the, all other reports, it's not a question of the rule, it's a question of precedent and practice. You cannot debate preambles where there are no recommendations. Mr. President, go through all the reports that have been given now. They end up with recommendations after each topic or subject matter. For action by member parliaments, very clear. Why should we depart from that, from those precedents? Practice, even our reports in the house from parliamentary committees, they state what has happened and end up with some recommendations for action by the house. If we have not done our job to the best of our ability, we should simply say the report should be withdrawn. We cannot be party to a process that is wrong. No. 
This is a very important institution and we must respect its integrity. Mr. President, I appeal to you. If you notice, for example, the, the coming report after this one, um, the report on um, the agency of continuous investments in child marriages in the COVID-19 context, you read that report at the end, it says, now therefore, the joint session of standing committees of the SDC Parliamentary Forum recommended the following to the 49th Plenary Assembly of the Forum. That, and there are there seven recommendations that we need to do as a member parliaments. Why, why should you deviate from that? Merci. Euh, en fait, c'est la présentation, l'écriture du rapport. La façon dont le rapport a été présenté. Mr. President, Mr. Pre Mr. President, can I refer you to the rules? Can I refer you to the rules? Oui. Oui, vous avez terminé. C'est le président. Vous avez terminé. Honorable President, if I may. Sorry. Before the honorable speaker um, takes the floor. Oui, ma oui. Okay. Vous avez yes, la parole. Thank you, honorable president. Um, I would like to indicate that um, I concede Honorable Speaker Mdenda is completely right. Indeed, every report must have recommendations. Procedurally, this is uh, being addressed through um, some of the resolutions in the HSDP committee. And um, I defer to um, you, Honorable President, to indicate that um, we we do take um, the recommendation that has been tabled that we must withdraw the report. I thank you. Merci, cher collègue. Alors, chers collègues, mettons-nous d'accord. Alors, je ne sais pas, y a-t-il un élément dans le statut qui présente la manière dont les rapports devaient être présentés pour la tautologie s'il y a un élément dans le règlement intérieur qui exige ou qui donne la présentation du rapport, comment est-ce que les rapports doivent être formulés Y a-t-il un modèle, y a-t-il une disposition qui réglemente la présentation des rapports S'il y a une réglementation à là-dessus, Madame la secrétaire générale, pouvez nous en donner lecture Madame la secrétaire générale, est-ce qu'il y a une disposition du règlement intérieur 
qui nous donne la présentation des rapports. Comment est-ce que les rapports doivent être présentés? Thank you, Honorable President. As indicated, there is precedence. And therefore, the expectation is that the plenary does endorse the resolutions of each committee. It is practice. There is no format that is really um, set in stone. Thank you. But there is a precedence which can be taken as such in this regard. It's a difficult place I'm in, Honorable President. Maybe I should defer to the wisdom of the plenary assembly. Mm. Merci. Uh, cher collègue, vous avez tous suivi qu'en principe, chaque rapport doit terminer par deux recommandations. Il y a quelques recommandations. J'en ai noté. Vous prenez à la page 4. Si le 5.410, c'est une recommandation. À la même page, le point 5.5, c'est une recommandation. À la page 5, le point 6.9, c'est aussi une recommandation, une exhortation. Voilà, j'ai noté qu'il y a des recommandations, mais ici, le problème, c'est la présentation. Tout simplement, un problème de présentation. Alors, je vous propose que nous puissions recevoir les rapports et l'amender. Le recevoir, l'examiner et y apporter des amendements. Si vous êtes d'accord, comme ça, on gagne du temps. We have three hands from Angola, Botswana, and Namibia. Botswana, Namibia. Angola, Botswana, Angola, and vous avez la parole. Okay. Angola, vous avez la parole. Muito obrigada, senhor presidente. Senhor presidente, eh, senhores deputados do Fórum Parlamentar da SADEC, eu quero também juntar a minha voz e eu estou completamente de acordo que a apresentação do documento não eh, prestou atenção à prática que tem sido, nesses casos, os documentos que vêm às ah, a reunião, a reuniões plenárias da SADEC para serem eh, adotados. Nesta, assim sendo, o entretanto, o documento passou por aqui, foi apresentado e foi discutido. Me parece que também não é justo nós retirarmos pura e simplesmente o documento. Me parece que o Fórum Parlamentar, a 49ª sessão, deveria eh, tomar conhecimento deste relatório e propor que ele seja transferido para a próxima plenária e ser aí então apresentado como deve ser, como é a prática, para, ver se, para ser adotado. Esta é a minha posição 
é a posição da nossa delegação em relação a esse documento. Muito obrigado. Então, é preciso, a tradução deve seguir, chers colegas, os interpretes. La tradition, l'interprétation doit suivre. Les interprètes. Nous n'avons pas eu tout le contenu de l'intervention du collègue de l'Angola. Les traditions. Hum? Les traditions ont été escamotées. Hum. Oui. Ah. Oui, oui, merci beaucoup. Interpretation kindly relay, or should Angola take the floor again, Honorable President? Maybe. Mm -hmm. Do we have interpretation? Yes. Dear, I can recommence, oui. Vou então oh, repetir aquela. The Honorable President is. Okay. 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 Uh, okay, a ideia é que considero que o senhor deputado uh, Mundenda tem toda a razão em achar que o documento não deve ser adotado, porque efetivamente há uma prática do Fórum Parlamentar da SADEC em relação aos documentos uh, que são adotados. Como esse documento não cumpriu com esse formalismo, Considero que sim, ele não deve ser adotado. Entretanto, o documento foi discutido aqui na, 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 no, durante a reunião, foi apresentado e foi discutido. Portanto, pensamos que o fórum, a 49 sessão, deveria tomar conhecimento do documento e propor que ele seja trazido na próxima reunião plenária já com o formalismo habitual aqui no Fórum Parlamentar da SADEC. Esta é a nossa posição, porque efetivamente o documento passou por nós, nós discutimos-lo e também não seria justo não se fazer nenhuma referência a isso, ser simplesmente retirado. Era essa, espero que de facto os intérpretes tenham feito a, a, a devida tradução para que os colegas entendam aquilo que é a nossa posição. Muito obrigado. Merci, merci, colegue. O colegue de Botswana. Thank you. Thank you. My name is uh, Dumelang Salishando, uh, Member of Parliament in Botswana. Mr. President, I tend to agree with what you observed earlier that even though there is no heading saying recommendations, when you read the entire document, you get a clear sense of what the proposals um, being uh, that are being put forward for our adoption and, and noting. Um, we, the document talks about the, the model law that needs to be domesticated by our different uh, countries. I, I think that, that those are things that we need to pick up. The monitoring um, of the adoption, the performance of our countries um, in certain areas are clearly highlighted in the report. So rather than stick with the technicality that the practice is that there should be a heading saying recommendations, and that if we don't see that, we will not adopt it. I think we are missing an opportunity uh, to make progress because this committee has met. In fact, they state that they met twice, and they are clearly, we read the entire document without see, looking for a particular heading saying recommendations. There's a lot for us to take home to note and monitor implementation in our respective countries. So I strongly suggest that let's adopt, let's adopt this report uh, as is. Thank you. 
Merci. Les collègues de la Namibie. Thank you, Honorable President. Vipak Kuyo Muharukwa from Namibia again. Um, we, as a Namibian caucus, tend to agree with the President and the colleague from Botswana who just spoke. We happen to think that the issues relating to whether or not recommendations are there are as a matter of presentation. And that brings one, as of course, a new caucus, as we, as we all are, to a question of as to when the appropriate time is to actually raise an objection to the content of a document that has not even started being discussed yet. Um, with that one wants to humbly perhaps state or dare to think that the appropriate manner in which we can deal with this issue is that the mover must move, it must be seconded and be discussed. Um, and after it is discussed and the format perhaps, or after such motion is moved and we realize that indeed there are no recommendations as visible, then we do not adopt and we rather opt to do what is suggested by the Honorable Colleague from Angola. So in a nutshell, Honorable President, Honorable Members, is that we are starting to discuss the content in, 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 in the format of the report, which report as yet has not been moved. That is the, the difficulty that we are sitting with. But we, all in all, we tend to, on a substantive issue, we tend to agree with the President that perhaps the recommendations are not couched as they should or as desired or as practice would be uh, that we, we don't hasten to, to disregard because we, we are new to the forum as such as a, as a caucus or the members of the caucus, but we tend to agree that uh, what the contents that are being discussed should rather be discussed after the motion has been moved and we can, take, uh, we, we can then say no, defer the, the matter back to the committee to couch the recommendations differently or we can amend it here as we tried to do in the previous motion with regards to the uh, issue of a model law. Thank you very much, Mr. President, honorable members. Merci, merci, cher collègue. Okay. Alors, il y avait le collègue euh, de Madagascar qui voulait prendre la parole, je crois. Botswana, les collègues de Botswana ont pris la parole. Il y a encore Botswana? Oui, la main levée. Ok, collègue Botswana, encore la parole, yes. vous l'avez. Thank you, Mr. President. I thought, my name is Pandus Karamani. I thought it is not surprising that we get documents in various forums, in various formats. The document, as you observe, does carry clear recommendations, uh, which we are supposed to affirm, to withdraw a document on the basis of some formality not having been followed will be, to me, most unfortunate. I think we should allow the committee to present this document, which in my view can be adopted because it is rich in what it proposes. And I don't think it will be proper for us just, just to withdraw it on the basis that there is no formality of a phrase say recommendations. I thank you. Merci, collègues. There is another hand from Namibia, Honorable President. 
Namibie. Ok, Namibie, vous avez la parole, collègue. This is Filippo's video, Catamelo, from Namibia. Uh, I was just saying, as a footnote, I think it's also imperative that we get these documents beforehand. And if uh, there are those administrative shortcomings that has been highlighted, I'm sure as SADC, as Africans, as brotherhood people, we can, we can inform each other and then along those lines, create the spirit of Ubuntu. It's an administrative error, it's whatever. And then we, we, we help each other along those lines in the spirit of what we want to achieve and what we want and to achieve the secretariat. Nobody is ever good not to error and nobody is ever too good not to have a flaw on himself. So I submit. There's another hand from Lesotho, from the Honorable Speaker. Vous avez la parole, cher collègue. Il y a la RDC qui demande aussi la parole. Cher collègue de Lesotho, vous avez la parole. Angola aussi. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. We have spent a lot of time on a very simple issue. Okay. Uh, am I coming in clear, Honorable President? Très bien, très bien. Am I coming yes, in clear? Good. My, my submission, Mr. Uh, President, is that we have this report before us. And every report that is before us is either for uh, for us to note or for us to uh, to adopt. So, in the event that we believe that there are no clear recommendations. We can take note of the report because the report is there already. But if we think uh, the recommendations are there, but not clearly spelled out, we can adopt the report. So whichever way we do, we will be safe in the the time and the labor the people took to deliberate on this issue. So let us use those two, one of those uh, avenues available to us in order to 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 rest to lay to lay to rest this matter. Thank you, Mr. President. Oui, la la l'Angola et puis la RDC. Les collègues de l'Angola qui avaient demandé la parole. Uh, oui, collègue, vous avez la parole. Uh, Senhor Presidente, da parte de Angola, a questão está, está ultrapassada. Me parece que 
há bastantes opiniões para que se tome uma posição, mas temos que ter em conta que a senhora secretária-geral já tivera uh, dito anteriormente que, de facto, o documento deveria ser retirado para ser melhorado. Uh, se a secretária-geral secretária já reconheceu que, de facto, há aqui um procedimento que não foi cumprido, uh, não estou a entender porque que há colegas que acham que o documento uh, deve ser adotado. Bom, de todas as formas, o plenário é, 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 é liberal e sabe o que tem que decidir, mas da nossa parte, a nossa opinião já foi aqui manifestada e, e reiteramos la Merci, uh, honorable, cher collègue. Um, la secrétaire générale s'est mis à la sagesse, s'est remis à la sagesse de la plénière. Elle s'est sentie très embarrassée. Elle s'est mis à la disposition, plutôt à la sagesse de la plénière. C'est comme ça que je l'ai compris. Alors, merci, les collègues de la République démocratique du Congo, les collègues Léon Toumba. Vous avez la parole, collègue. Merci, Président. Au vu des interventions, la majorité estime qu'il faille, qu'il ne faille pas retirer le rapport. Sinon, ça sera faire deux fois le travail qui a déjà été fait. Il est clair qu'il y a les recommandations qui ne sont pas explicites. Ceci ne voudrait pas dire qu'il n'y a pas de recommandations. Et étant donné que euh, la secrétaire générale s'est remise à la sagesse du président de la plénière, je suis d'avis qu'il faille garder le rapport, mais seulement en le clarifiant. Ça, c'est mon point de vue. Merci, président. Merci, chers collègues. Il y a encore un intervenant Bon, il n'y a pas d'intervenant. Si vous me permettez, nous avons deux tendances. La première tendance voudrait que les documents soient retirés. Voudrait que les documents soient retirés. There's a hand. Okay, there's a hand from Zimbabwe. Before you round up, honorable president, the hand just went up. Ok, Zimbabwe, vous avez la parole. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Only yesterday, only yesterday, when uh, an order, was it order number? Number six, I think, was put forward on a motion And uh, what was read by the honorable member from Seychelles indicated that, in fact, the motion before the House was incongruent or not in agreement with what was being read or put forward before the House. And only yesterday, we agreed that uh, the mover should withdraw uh, the motion so that uh, it complies with the observations that we had made. And the order number six was withdrawn accordingly so that uh, the mover would then come up with a correct motion that spoke to the item on the order paper. Only yesterday, we've forgotten that. Secondly, uh, we are not disputing the good work that has been done by the committee. What we are saying is we have ruled 30 which is very clear 
when you when you read subsection two and three together, you'll notice that it is possible for a motion to be withdrawn by a mover subject to amendments. And that withdrawn um, motion uh, can be presented again in the correct form. Let us read our rules carefully. Rule 30, subsection two and three, speak to the concerns that we are raising, uh, Mr. President. We are not saying throw away the whole report. We are saying follow the rules. It can be retabled again, but with the correct presentation. We don't deal with the implied recommendations in a preamble to um, a motion. It doesn't happen. Even within SADC itself of heads of state and government, a motion is there before, and then there's a decision that is to be taken. And that decision becomes part and parcel of the action to be taken by the SADAC summit through its appropriate organs. This, this, this is the precedent, this is the practice. And it's not written anywhere in the rules of the SADAC summit that uh, there must be a, 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 an introduction of the, of the subject and then in the end call for a decision to be uh, uh, brought before the summit and a decision made. And these decisions are numbered accordingly at the summit of heads, of heads of state and government. So we are not disputing the effort that has been put, but we are simply saying, let us be procedural in terms of rule 30, subsection two and three when read together. And I think the Secretary General can assist in the interpretation of that rule. Encore un intervenant? S'il n'y en a pas. Madame la secrétaire générale, est-ce que vous voulez avoir une minute ou deux, cinq minutes pour euh, voir dans notre règlement intérieur s'il y a une disposition contraignante qui exige la forme de présentation des rapports? Si vous avez besoin de cinq minutes, nous pouvons suspendre pendant cinq minutes. Vous voyez les documents. Euh, le président Moderne vient de citer, je crois, l'article 30. Vous pouvez avoir cinq minutes pour vérifier. Nous pouvons avoir cinq minutes pour vérifier les documents. Hmm? On peut avoir ça? Cinq minutes pour vérifier tout simplement notre règlement intérieur. Vous êtes d'accord, chers collègues? Pardon? Est-ce que vous m'entendez? Oui, quel que Botswana, oui. Thank you, Mr. President. Of course, it is a, a good thing to always consult. For my part, I am at a loss to understand what this consultation is about. Nobody who is presenting this report has said they want to withdraw it to put it up later. 
where we anticipated the report. We are trying to anticipate this report being put to the house. That is what we are trying to do. And I'm saying that is out of order. You can't do that. Even as the Abu Speaker of Zimbabwe, Abu Zenda, read the order which are trying to read to buttress this point, I don't find it relevant. We are trying to anticipate and block the presentation of a report. I don't think we are entitled to do that. Let the report be presented. Then if there are any issues, any flaws, by all means, <laughs> they can be raised. Not before, I don't think we should spend more time asking the Secretary General who has said to you, Mr. President, she leaves the matter into your good hands and the wisdom of the PF assembly. That is what I think you should do. Thank you, sir. Merci, colleague. Entendu, colleague. Merci. Um, les collègues de Lesotho voulaient prendre la parole. Vous l'avez. Prenez la parole, collègue. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable President. I simply wish to reiterate uh, what the previous speaker has just stated, that maybe we're anticipating um, uh, this issue was raised because the understanding is we should have read the report and understood or saw if there are any recommendations or not. But maybe if we wait, for the presenter to actually take us through the points because for myself, when I'm looking through it, I can clearly see some of the recommendations. And if the report is withdrawn, it is definitely going to affect some of the requests that have been made by the, by, 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 by the mover. So may we please allow them to make uh, the presentation and then we deduce from there, really this report is not usable. I'm also, at the report that has just been presented, the gay wide report, and really it does not have, a, it, it's not stated anywhere uh, the word recommendations, but we have adopted the report based on the recommendations in codes that have been made with, with the report. So I, I, I kindly request, um, Honorable Speaker, that we allow the mover to take us through the report. I thank you. Merci. Encore un intervenant? Non. C'est fini? Seychelles. Seychelles, les collègues de Seychelles. There's a hand from Seychelles. Les intervenants. Les collègues de Seychelles. Mr. Speaker. Les collègues de Seychelles, vous avez uh, la parole. Oui, Monsieur le Président, Monsieur le Président. Uh, Rosie, Rosie Vistoke, from Seychelles. I will agree with, I will agree with the last speaker last two speakers, and in fact, the whole congregation that has discussed on this matter, because we have to understand that the proceedings, according to uh, what was said, the proceedings of the motion of yesterday was in contradiction to the presentation of the report. This has been a mistake. We have corrected it this morning, but compared to this discussion, this is a different issue. And the speakers have spared their times, my dear colleagues, right throughout the weekends, Friday, Saturday, and Sundays. And we have spared our weekends instead of working for other issues for us to attend this plenary assembly. And I propose that we move ahead with the reports that will be, that, will be, uh, that has been and will be presented by all the, the reporters and then adopt it accordingly, even though there are no final recommendations for the plenary assembly, because there are some reports that have, have, that, that have highlights and affirmation based on the meetings 
of the different committees. So therefore, I do accept that we, we go ahead with the recommendations, with the reports, so that at least we will sort of finalize the report for this uh, final plenary discussion. Thank you very much. Okay, cher collègue, merci. Restons tous calmes et serein. Uh, cher collègue, il y a deux avis. Il y a des collègues qui voudraient qu'on retire le rapport rien que sur la forme. Sa forme, tout simplement. Et non pas encore sur, sa, sur le fond. Mais il y a des collègues qui tiennent à ce que le rapport soit présenté. Cette tendance-là est plus ou moins majoritaire. Parmi les collègues qui se sont exprimés, Chers collègues, je demande à mon collègue, le président Moudenda, et au collègue de l'Angola, de bien vouloir accepter que nous restions dans nos traditions. La tradition voudrait que d'abord un rapport est présenté, après on juge sur les fonds et sur la forme. Donc, nous ne devions pas juger sur le fond ou sur la forme avant que le rapport nous soit présenté. Nous risquons de créer un précédent fâché. Donc, restons dans la logique de nos traditions. Acceptons que le rapport nous soit présenté. C'est à la fin, quand il y aura des objections, on verra qui vont accepter ces rapports, qui vont les refuser. Mais d'emblée, de cette manière-là, euh, nous risquons de créer un précédent euh, qui, qui risque de nous créer des problèmes. Il se peut que dans le fond du rapport, il n'y a pas de recommandations à faire, il y a quoi à faire. Bon, il est clair, il est aussi vrai que chaque rapport doit avoir quand même une introduction, un développement et puis des recommandations ou des résolutions. C'est vrai. Mais celui-ci, nous ne l'avons pas encore examiné pour que nous jugions de la nécessité d'avoir des recommandations ou des résolutions, de la nécessité de l'accepter ou de les rejeter. Donc, acceptons que le rapport nous soit présenté et dans l'examen le, du, du fond, nous allons voir s'il est valable, s'il n'est pas valable. Mais d'emblée, comme ça... Euh, ce serait euh, judiciable, euh, imprudent pour la suite de nos travaux parce que nous risquons, nous allons avoir, j'ai l'impression que d'autres rapports sont aussi sous la même euh, forme, hein, sont présentés de la même manière et nous risquons de tout rejeter et de ne pas travailler, de passer tout notre temps à dire non, non, oui, non, non. Collègues, je vous en prie, acceptons qu'on nous présente le rapport. Je vous en prie. Je vous en prie. Merci. Nous sommes d'accord, je crois, tous ensemble, que le rapport nous soit présenté. Y a-t-il un avis contraire à ça je crois que laissons tomber les débats, allons gagner du temps. Alors, j'invite l'honorable Rossi, Ustoket. Hein? Tu veux encore intervenir? Zimbabwe, vous voulez prendre la parole? Um... Thank you, um, honorable, honorable President. Um, the founding fathers of Sadiq PF, in their wisdom, put a clause about withdrawal of motion. And in that clause, they clearly state how it can be done 
first why it can be done and how it can be done. Now, if this were not so, why do we have this uh, rule 30 about withdrawal of motions? Why do we have that rule? Why don't we respect our rules? It's not a question of liking. No, it's not a question of majority. No, it's a question of following the rules that were crafted by this august house. And this is constitutionalism. This is constitutionalism and the rule of law and the rule of law. There's nothing harmful, nothing is meant to um, uh, create some uh, disrespect for the mover or disrespect for the committee, nothing at all is there. The committee members are respected. What they've done is respected, but we have to be guided by the rules of procedure. And uh, just, just to, re to read subsection two, a motion or an amendment of the motion may be withdrawn at the request of the mover by leave of the house or commit before the question is put, before the question is put. Now, Mr. President, you want to put the question that if there are there any objection and the rule says before the question is put, we cannot put the question when it says, the, the motion can be withdrawn before the question is, is put by the chair, including asking for objections when you put the question. Uh, uh, posé, c'est celle-ci. Est-ce que la règle du retrait de la motion, ça s'applique avant ou après? Est-ce que ça s'applique avant ou après? Ça s'applique avant la présentation du rapport ou après la présentation du rapport? Vous avez le texte, moi je ne l'ai pas. My hand is up. My hand is up. My hand hmm? is up. Président, donnez la parole. Non, non. C'est chef. Il a jeté. Il faut dire au bout de toi. Botswana. Botswana, patientez que le président. Modende me donne la réponse. J'ai posé une question. La règle s'applique avant ou après la présentation? Et comme... Ou après la présentation? Um, before the presentation, as long as the motion is on the order paper. Alors, qui demande le retrait? Le motionnaire ou une contre-motion? C'est le motionnaire qui, qui demande la, le retrait ou une contre-motion.
Est-ce que vous avez les, les, les règlements Honorable President, it is the mover. But if you want the mover to move the motion, you can allow, provided in the end, we agree that a final decision is made through consensus. Because in our rules, there's no room for majority or my, my minority vote, as you had suggested. Je passe la parole aux Seychelles, Namibie et Botswana. We, Honorable President, we also have a hand from Lesotho, from Mozambique, and Namibia. And earlier on, um, the, the Honorable Speaker from South Africa had raised the hand before all the hands went up. So we have South Africa, we have Lesotho, Mozambique, Namibia, Botswana, and yes, in that area. Yeah. Et puis Afrique du Sud qui n'ont pas encore parlé. La parole est à, au collègue de Botswana. Thank you, Mr. President. My name is Asseri Pandus Kelemani. I, I don't like having to take the floor ever so often. It's not in my nature. But honestly speaking, I am at a loss as to what rule we have offended. I'm at a total loss. And I wish somebody can tell me which rule we, are, we have offended and in what way. The wisdom of SADC does not come anywhere into play in this discussion. SADC has not put for the SADC parliamentary forum any rule which it can be suggested now that we have broken. The rules of procedure, which are going to be accord with common sense, is that you hear somebody out. And then you can rule. You don't rule them out before you hear them. That's basic common sense to me. So we ought to allow the mover the opportunity to move their motion. Then, as you indicated, Mr. President, the mover can then say, for whatever reason, he or she wants to withdraw. And then it will be up to us to say whether or not we agree. Because if the motion has been moved and you think it makes sense, and the mover wants to, for some reason, we don't agree with, then I think we are entitled to disagree with the mover, even then. Those are the rules. Same as in our parliaments, I'm sure. So you had, I thought, Mr. President, ruled or suggested quite nicely that we should allow the mover, then in the end, we decide that whether we note or we adopt the report. Subject, of course, to the right of that mover to try to withdraw. I thank you, Mr. President. 
Merci, collègue. Collègue de l'Afrique du Sud. Thank you, Mr. President. The topic before us is important, but we have spent almost an hour deliberating on this matter. And I do think that uh, one, it demonstrates that the SADC Parliamentary Forum is democratic and we want to take decisions the right way. But I would actually urge that we, we tread with caution because spending an hour deliberating whether we want a report or we do not want a report is not in the interest of the region. Initially, I thought I would go with the Honorable, the Speaker from Zimbabwe and say, if there are no recommendations, I do not know what we are going to do. But I tend to say that we should allow for this report to be presented to us for us to then deliberate which direction we wish to take it, whether we want to say we are not adopting it and we are referring it back to the committee, or whether we say that we think that uh, as per the French version, maybe Mr. President, there are recommendations that are in there. In my experience, sometimes at this forum, the French and the English versions do not always give you the same um, sense of what is contained in the report. So I would say, let us find each other between the two positions. Um, let us then do justice by listening to the report and then allowing us to then refer it back or to adopt it. For me, that would be the best option, Mr. President. The other alternative, Mr. President, is for you to actually rule on the matter and put this matter paid. Thank you. Merci, cher collègue. Les Seychelles. Mr. President, my hands were not raised. My hands was not raised. Mr. President, oh yeah, I, I've completed Namibie. my intervention. Yeah. Merci Namibie beaucoup. qui avait demandé la parole, je crois. Merci, merci beaucoup. Merci, madame. Merci. Namibie. Honorable President, Vipak William Mahalkwa from Namibia. Rule 30 speaks of two things, Honorable President. A notice of motion and a motion. In either event, it is the discretion of the mover to withdraw the motion. That is now in, in, in absence of Rule 27 of the of our rules. Now, what we are dealing with here at this stage is the notice of motion. We seek the withdrawal of a notice of motion by the mover who he himself or herself has not requested such. That discretion is at this point in time still in that person's discretion, that's one. Two, the basis of our request for withdrawal is actually the content of the motion. Without that content of the motion being before us, what we have currently is the motion, is the notice of motion. The consensus, or I believe, yeah, and the speaker, uh, the Right Honourable Speaker of the Zimbabwean Parliament, uh, Advocate Mundenda, is quite correct. We should shy away from using the word majority because it, 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 it shuns consensus. The consensus that is being sought and the prayer that we advance to the speaker or the, or the, or the individuals or the honourable members who raise the point of order is for them 
to join the chorus of a consensus if that for a lack of a better phrase, so that we can hear the motion, so that through presentation we can indeed gauge whether there are clear recommendations. If it isn't, through debate we express as such, and then the mover of the motion accordingly withdraws the motion, which is now the report, withdraws the report, goes and amend it and bring it back, or we adopt it with amendments. So what we are seeking now is the withdrawal of a notice of motion, and it is not at the instance of the mover. As such, as an Namibian caucus honorable speaker, we seek and we implore the honorable members to allow the mover of the motion to move his motion for us to consider. Thank you very much. Merci, cher collègue. Cher, cher collègue, pardon. Mozambique. Mozambique. La Mozambique. Muito obrigada, senhor presidente. Moçambique quer juntar-se aos colegas que estão de acordo com que a moção seja apresentada. Correndo o regimento, não encontramos nada que diga que a moção não deve ser apresentada. Após a apresentação da moção, tomaremos a decisão de adotar ou não adotar. Tanto para simplificar, queremos sugerir à Sua Excelência, o Sr. Presidente, que prossiga com a reunião, dando palavra para que o colega ou a colega que vai apresentar a moção a seguir, assim o faça. E muito obrigada. Merci, colega. Je crois qu'on peut s'arrêter là. Hein? Il est déjà sur le Soto. Les collègues de Le Soto, vous avez la parole. Monsieur le Président, tu peux tomber le mot Mr. President, uh, after all those interventions, I don't want to repeat what other people have said. So I'm covered, please. Thank you. Merci, cher collègue. Merci, cher collègue. Merci, cher collègue. Je demande à nous tous, à nous tous, d'avoir une certaine prudence dans la matière. Comme c'est le motionnaire qui retire la motion, et comme aussi s'il faut retirer, il y a un problème de consensus, je vous prie, écoutons le rapport que l'honorable Rossi Bistoquet nous présente le rapport et nous allons l'examiner et nous déciderons en conséquence. Chers collègues, je n'accorderai plus de parole. Si vous me demandez, je ne fais pas de la dictature, mais gagnons du temps. Je invite l'honorable Rossi à présenter la motion pour l'adoption du rapport du comité permanent du développement humain et social des programmes spéciaux. Honorable Rossi, vous avez la parole. Entendez, l'Angola voulait parler Non, non, non. Honorable Rossi, vous avez la parole. Thank you, Mr. President. I beg to move that this plenary assembly do adopt the report on Standing Committee on Human and Social Development and Special Projects 
to the 49th Plenary Assembly virtual session on SADC Parliamentary Forum. I move the motion in my name. Thank you. Merci. Est-ce qu'il y a quelqu'un qui soutient la motion? Chers collègues. Qui soutient la motion, chers collègues? Elle a parlé, elle, hein? Elle a sollicité le soutien de la motion. Hmm? Ah. Hmm? Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. Honorable President, there's a hand from Zimbabwe. Oui, Honorable President. Chers collègues, vous avez la parole. Uh, thank you, Honorable President. I second the motion. Merci pour le soutien à la motion. Je donne la parole à l'honorable Rossi Vistoke de nous présenter le rapport. Honorable, vous avez la parole. Thank you, Mr. President. The Standing Committee on the Human Resource and Human and Social Development and Special Projects guided by its mandate in terms of the Rule 42D of the SADC PF Rules of Procedures held virtual meetings on Friday 16th April 2021 and on Monday 31st May 2021 respectively. The credentials, the Standing Committee on Human and Social Development and Special Projects held two virtual meetings and in both meetings, the attendance of the members reached the required quorum. As introduction, the SADC PF Standing Committee on Human and Social Development and Special Projects held a meeting on Friday 16th April 2021 and another on Monday 21st of May 2021. This report therefore covers the deliberations and resolutions of both meetings. Honorable Beta Ndebele, the chairperson and the official, officially opened the meetings and welcomed the original and national responses to the COVID-19 pandemic. She, however, stressed that this should not negate the fight against HIV and AIDS, tuberculosis, TB, malaria, and other communicable diseases. The advocacy against gender-based violence was also encouraged to continue. With reference to the annual report of the second year of implementation of this, the phase two of the sexual reproductive health and rights and HIV AIDS and the governance project 2020-2021, they achieved the objectives of the project in spite of challenges of COVID-19. Furthermore, she applauded the decision of the SADC PF's Regional Parliamentary Models Laws Oversight Committee of the forum to monitor the domestication of the SADC model laws by obtaining inferior data. In this regard, the committee had to consider and approve the scorecard, which would be used to obtain information regarding the domestication of the SADC PF model law on child marriage. So I will go to the uh, annual report. Whereas the committee received a presentation on the annual report for the second year of implementation of the second phase of the sexual reproductive health and rights, HIV AIDS and governance project 2021, which was presented by Ms. Pamela Nyika, the project's monitoring and evaluation consultant. The presentation was complemented by the briefing on the finances of the project by Mr. Raj Kambal, the project accountant. It has to be noting, noting with satisfaction 
that the projects in accordance with the work plan convened a number of regional meetings by virtual means, such as the gender in renewable energy that was done on the 15th of September, 2020, joint sessions of the RPMLOC and RWPC on the 25th of September, 2020, sexual reproductive health and rights researchers orientation, which was done on the 27th to 28th of January, 2021, Committee of Clerks sessions, 5th to the 6th of March, 2021, and the Sexual Reproductive Health and, and Rights Researchers Budget Analysis, which was done on the 1st of October, 2020. We further welcoming the programs made regarding the development of the model law on public finance management and gender-based violence and expressing support for the finalization. We had appreciation for the SADC PF's guidelines on COVID-19 to the national parliaments that enabled continuity into the implementation of the project and other activities. We also acknowledge the important contribution that the electronic and print media is making towards the achievement of the objectives of the project and urging the continuation of this in order to enhance the popularization of the sexual reproductive health and rights agenda. We also uploaded the national parliaments, the SADC PF secretariat, and all the stakeholders of the SADC PF's sexual reproductive health and rights, AIDS and governance projects for a good performance in spite of the formidable implementation challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic. We also acknowledged the significant progress made regarding the campaign to freely provide sanitary pads for the child, girl child across the SADC region and urging that this scaled up to ensure that the pads meet the hygiene and comfort requirements of the end users. We also encouraged the continuation of the good coordination and collaboration between the Office of the Secretary General, national parliaments and the researchers, which was instrumental in obtaining the remarkable project performance. This, important, this is important for the sustainability of the project. So we also welcomed the interest expressed by, the, by Madagascar to join the implementation of the projects and encouraging other parliaments to formally join suit as a project may be extended by a further two years. We also called on parliament parliaments to enable the committee to undertake exchange visits to different countries to share experiences and learn from best practices. And once the travel restrictions across the region are being lifted. We go to number five, which is about the scorecard deconstructing the SADC model law on child marriage and protecting children already in marriage of 2016. The committee appreciated the presentation received from Mr. Boemo Sogema, the Secretary General on the scorecard, which is aimed to monitor the domestication of the SADC law on eradicating child marriage and protecting children already in marriage. So the highlighting of this uh, um, particular uh, topic was that the proposed scorecard will seek to ascertain countries, that is number 5.6, countries' performance regarding important aspects such as legal recognition of the rights of the child and parental responsibility, prohibition of child betrothal and marriage, and the existence and effectiveness of punitive measures to deter perpetrators. Secondly, prohibition of child Thirdly, existence and implementation of practical measures and intervention to prevent child marriage. D, that is number four, mitigation measures against the effects of child marriage, intervention to protect children already in marriage, which may be placed. I've missed the other one, which is the existence and implementation of practical measures and interventions to prevent child marriage. And the last but not least, availability on formation and monitoring and evaluation system to place 
in place to ensure the protection of children. The committee affirms that the objectives of the scorecards initiative is not necessarily ranked and compare countries' performance, performances, but rather to monitor the regional progress being made and to collectively address any domestication challenges that may be encountered. We are also aware that the SADC has a scorecard system to monitor its own processes over which the SADC PF has no control or monitoring the mandate and that the forum therefore needed to design its own system that would focus on the model laws. And we also implored the relevant ministries into the SADC member states, SADC member parliaments, sexual reproductive health and rights researchers, and all other national and regional stakeholders to support the domestication and monitoring of the model laws. Last but not least, Mr. President, we confirmed that the committee considered and approved the scorecard and recommended and that it be presented to the RPMLOC for final approval and transmitted to the national parliaments. Mr. President, I do beg to move this motion for debates and furthermore for further approval. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, thank you. Merci, merci, Honorable Rossi, pour cette brillante présentation et brève. Merci. Je veux permettre à l'Honorable Paurima Pariwa qui a envie de soutenir la motion de les débattre à l'appui de celle-ci. Honorable Pariwa, vous avez la parole. Thank you, Honorable President. I rise to support the motion on the report of the Human and Social Development and Special, Special Programs Committee, ably moved by the Honorable Chair of the Committee. Honorable President, let me add my voice to the issue that, to the issues that have been raised by the mover of this particular motion. Honorable President, I would like to applaud the efforts by the SADAC Parliamentary Secretariat to successfully implement the sexual reproductive and health rights, HIV AIDS and governance project. The project is registering a number of positive impacts in the region, despite challenges posed by the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. Honorable President, it is also worthwhile to mention that the media through the digital platforms has played a significant role towards the, achieve the achievement of the project. For the past one year, most of the activities of the project were being carried out through online engagements. Honorable President, it is pleasing to note that the forum has endeavored to formulate a scorecard system that will assist to track performance regarding the different aspects of the model law on child marriages. And this has come to the right, at the right time considering that the region is still to check the domestication of the law by member states using the scorecard. Members will be able to monitor the progress in the domestication and implementation of the model law by member states. Allow me, Honorable President, to support and second this very important motion as moved by the Honorable Chair. I thank you for this opportunity. Merci, chers collègues. Après 
cet appui à la motion, je soumets ce rapport à débat. Les collègues qui souhaitent débattre doivent l'indiquer en levant les mains. En même temps, nous vous rappelons, chers collègues, que pour des raisons de précision de l'enregistrement du procès verbal, vous devez toujours communiquer votre nom, votre pays, chaque fois que vous aurez à intervenir ou à prendre la parole. Et le temps de la parole est de quatre minutes. Merci. Ceux qui veulent intervenir peuvent se faire inscrire. Qui Zimbabwe Hein Pardon Pardon Mais je vois Zimbabwe là. Non, non. Ça, c'est le micro. Alors, chers collègues, il n'y a pas d'intervention Les intervenants. Zimbabwe, finalement. <rire> Honorable President, we have two hands. There's a hand from Namibia delegation. We also have another hand from Zimbabwe, Honorable Anilin Debele. We have another hand from um, Angola, from Honorable Maria Nosemento. We also have another hand from Zimbabwe. Um, I'm not able to see it clearly. Uh, for, from the delegation of Zimbabwe, Honorable Anilin Debele, we have Namibia delegation, Honorable Angola. We also have another hand from South Africa. I hope I've seen them all. Merci. Les collègues du Zimbabwe, vous avez la parole. Nous avons cinq intervenants. Mm -hmm. Honorable uh, President, um, I just want to take you to uh, the introduction of that report. If I may quote, it reads, this report therefore covers the deliberations and resolutions of both meetings. As we have noted before, the resolutions are not expressly stated in that report. Therefore, we kindly request or ask the Secretariat to polish that report so that uh, its resolutions are expressly stated. As things stand, the plenary has nothing to adopt. That's my quick submission. Uh, Honorable President, thank you. Merci, cher collègue. J'espère que bien que le secrétariat a pris bonne note. We did, Honorable President. 
Merci. Le collègue de la Namibie. Thank you, Honorable President. I think one, one would have to apologize. Uh, being a newbie, one would have thought you would sit and uh, learn first, but it seems we, we are finding ourselves um, in, in, in the midst of things. <laughs> Nonetheless, uh, Honorable Members, Honorable President, um, my question is perhaps my question is perhaps to more directed or my intervention is perhaps more of a question directed to the movement. Having actually now heard the motion and having having the actual content of, of, of the motion, I, I note from the content there of that what the committee really here is doing here is progressing or reporting progress as to, to, to the plenary. And this intervention is perhaps rooted in what the Right Honorable Speaker of Lesotho, if, I, if I'm correct, said earlier, that the, the plenary has an opportunity to adopt or to take note. If we are to adopt, in, in, in my considered view, would, would then be a, a, a report like the ones that we've considered before that, that are prescriptive, that are telling us as, as countries to, to, to venture into specific things to reach the objectives of, of, of that specific report. But what I'm noting from, from this report, it is that it's rather a, a, a report that is being laid before the plenary for note taking and for us and then reporting progress to the, to, the, to the plenary. So my question is therefore that uh, perhaps the mover may clarify uh, or inform us as to what they're actually seeking from the plenary. Do you seek for the plenary to take note of the report and move on? Uh, debate it and move on, or do you seek the adoption? Well, and, and I suppose adopt it uh, and, 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 and move on. Or, or is it a report that you have specific recommendations that you seek for us as nations to, 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 to implement in, in, in our countries? I happen to think or, or note that it's perhaps the former, but you can clarify that. Thank you very much. Merci, chers collègues. Les collègues de l'Angola, vous avez la parole. Muito obrigado, senhor presidente. Excelência, presidente do fórum, senhora secretária geral do fórum parlamentar da SADEC, senhores deputados e deputadas, senhor presidente da Assembleia Nacional da Angola. Muito boa tarde. Obrigado por me ter dado a palavra. Eu gostaria, em primeiro lugar, felicitar a proponente, a deputada Rosi das Seixelles, e concordar com o relatório que reflete, em certa medida, o que foi discutido durante as reuniões das comissões permanentes com a presença dos, parte... dos parceiros sociais. Uh, penso que o relatório deveria ser adotado pelo... pela 49ª plenária. Muito obrigado. Merci. Les collègues de l'Afrique du Sud. Thank you, Mr. President. The report clearly deals with two serious issues. One, it takes us back to the, to the discussion we had earlier on, on metal laws. For us as women in SADAC and women in this continent, the issues of sovereignty are important, but the issues of the safety of women, of equality, of poverty, of violence against women and children is more important to us. So, the issues of model laws for us has always meant that SADAC actually is not interested in interfering with each country's sovereignty. We as women in this region are more interested 
in reaching a minimum standards and the laws which will protect us as women and children across the region. And for that, I want to support the report. The report also deals with child marriages, a very contagious report across Africa and across the world. I think that the report has not gone far enough to actually be prescriptive on the support and on the stand of the region against mm -hmm. child marriages. But I do want to say that on those two bases, Honorable Chairperson, I support this report. And perhaps it does need a little bit more of um, clarifying what we need to do as different um, uh, countries in SADAC. But for on those two, I do support the report on behalf of South Africa. Thank you very much. Merci, chers collègues. Alors, il y a d'autres collègues qui veulent intervenir? En Afrique du Sud? I do not see any hands, Honorable President. Oh, there's a hand from Angola, Honorable President, from Honorable Ruth Mendes. D'accord, Colleague Mendes, vous avez la parole. Oh, sí. Muito obrigada, Senhor Presidente. Uh, após a apresentação deste relatório, uh, estou, como disse há pouco o senhor deputado da Namíbia, de facto uh, o documento está a mostrar que ele é mais informativo, é mais do que para uh, ser adotado já nessa plenária. E aí eu vou buscar o que já referi uh, nas intervenções anteriores. Nós podemos, o documento está apresentado, para tomarmos conhecimento e se tivermos que o adotar, seria numa próxima oportunidade. Nós pensamos, ele traz matérias muito importantes, matérias relacionadas com as nossas, e oportunas para as nossas realidades, o caso da tuberculose, o caso da HIV SIDA, os casos da igualdade de género, de facto são questões muito importantes, que é para nós passarmos por elas como estamos a passar e adotarmos um documento assim. Me parece que esse documento, até pelo, pelas matérias que ele apresenta, deveria ser melhorado que é para o adotarmos. Esta é a minha, a minha posição. Não está em causa a adoção. Só não está, o que está em causa, de facto, é a forma como o documento está apresentado e se, se o adotarmos assim, eu acho que nós vamos perder. Ganharíamos mais se dessemos algum tempo, o proponente melhoraria o documento, porque me parece que há aí algumas limitações no documento, e aí sim, então, poderíamos aprovar o documento. Esta é a minha posição. Muito obrigada. Ok. Merci, honorable Mendes. Merci. Há outros intervenantes? Il n'y en a plus, donc je redonne la parole à l'honorable Rossi Bistoquet pour rencontrer les préoccupations exprimées par les collègues. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the concerns have been noted. It has to be uh, stated or express clearly that the report um, includes or harmonizes different areas in terms of the model laws to protect the women and the girls into the SADC region and of course the child marriage. And at the same time, the report or the committee introduced certain measures, especially in regards to monitoring and evaluation measures to ensure that these indicators 
are being invented fully or where, wherever there are any uh, mishap, then we can go back to the, uh, uh, to the subjects. The other thing is that it is critical, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Mr. Uh, President, uh, that it is the plenary assembly does not, uh, not only the reports, it has to adopt the reports that are tabled under rule 6.3, whether they are recommendations, resolutions or nothing to the effect. So therefore I still submit the report for approval by the uh, plenary um, uh, session. Thank you, Mr. President. Merci, cher collègue, par ces réponses du motionnaire. Le débat sur ce rapport est clos. Je soumets donc aux voix l'adoption du rapport du Comité permanent de développement humain et social et des programmes spéciaux, moyennant deux amendements qui ont été proposés. J'ai demandé à Madame la secrétaire générale de bien noter. Elle m'a dit qu'elle avait le secrétariat général a pris bonne note, moyennant tous les amendements. Il y a les Zimbabwe qui veulent intervenir. Um, Mr. President, if I read your mind correctly, uh, although, although the mover was not explicit, but I read your mind very correctly, taking, which is taking into account what South Africa said, what Namibia said, and also what uh, Angola said. It is very critical, for example, when you talk about uh, early modern law on early marriage, uh, child marriages, we would have loved to see a resolution which uh, calls upon member, uh, member parliaments to indicate how far uh, uh, the, the member parliaments have gone in ensuring that um, the scourge of early marriage uh, challenges is being addressed by our parliaments. And whether or not the existing laws have taken into account the early child modern role, and also the issue of gender uh, violence against women to find out if member parliaments are coming up with laws that address the question of gender-based violence against mainly the women, although there are some men also who are violated. Something in that regard. If I am reading your mind correctly and the admission by the Secretary General, perhaps at our next plenary, at our next plenary assembly, uh, the committee will be more prescriptive as South Africa is, uh, sorry, as the Honorable Speaker of South Africa has indicated, to be more prescri prescriptive so that we are gingered towards taking appropriate action. With, with those observations, and if I'm reading your mind correctly, Mr. President, I have no objection per se, as long as those issues are taken into account. Thank you. Merci, Monsieur le Président, et chers collègues. C'est tous ces amendements qu'il faut intégrer dans le nouveau document, disons dans le document qui sera Enrichi. Donc, nous proposons son adoption moyennant 
des amendements tels que vous venez de les dire et ceux des collègues qui ont aussi des amendements peuvent déjà les verser au secrétariat général de notre organisation pour que les comités puissent prendre ces amendements et les intégrer. Je suis d'accord avec votre proposition. Nous pouvons adopter ces rapports moyennant ces amendements-là. En ce qui concerne de loi type dans les différents pays, je voudrais dire à l'Auguste Assemblée que la République démocratique du Congo a une loi qui protège les enfants et qui protège les femmes contre la violence sexuelle. Alors la peine, c'est 20 ans. 20 ans. Les 20 ans, si on vous attrape, vous resterez en prison jusqu'à l'accomplissement de 20 ans. Il n'y a pas de réduction de peine. Les peines ne sont pas commuées en matière de violation sexuelle en République démocratique du Congo. La loi est très sévère. Il y a une loi pour la protection des droits des enfants et il y a une loi contre les violents, la violence sexuelle ici, qui protège les femmes. Voilà, chers collègues, tous en accord, en étant accord avec les amendements, s'il n'y a pas d'objection, nous pouvons adopter ces rapports, moyennant, bien sûr, les amendements, les, en les enrichissements qui vont intervenir. Y a-t-il d'objections Honorable secrétaire général, si vous pouvez nous garantir que vous, on va intégrer tous les amendements avec les comités euh, dirigés par l'honorable Rossi. Pardon Il est content. Hum. Honorable secrétaire général, je vais avoir, nous tous nous voulons avoir des garanties. Honorable President, thank you very much. And I would like to thank the plenary for his wisdom. We would um, further call for interventions from countries so that we are able to improve on the report. Um, as um, we would, <laughs> it's a difficult one, but we will consult countries in order to improve on the report. And based on those submissions, we will make those improvements, Honorable President. Merci, Madame la Secrétaire générale. Nous avons toutes les garanties que les améliorations des amendements vont être intégrées pour que nous ayons les textes tels que nous l'aurions voulu. Merci. Mais c'est un rapport bilan hein, qui fait l'évaluation des politiques qui ont été mises en place j'ai lu quelque part que les objectifs ont été atteints avec tout ce qui a été mis, moyennant certains manquements aussi qu'on a relevés. Merci, chers collègues. Il n'y a plus d'objection. Les rapports. du comité permanent du développement humain et social et des programmes spéciaux et dûment adoptés par la plénière moyennant deux amendements.
Merci. Merci, chers collègues. Honorable président et chers collègues, honorables parlementaires, distingués invités, nous passons au quatrième point à l'ordre du jour. J'invite Madame la secrétaire générale à nous donner lecture du quatrième point à l'ordre du jour. Thank you, Honorable President. Notice of motion for the adoption of the report of the joint session of the SADC Parliamentary Forum Standing Committees and the Regional Women's Parliamentary Caucus. Merci, Merci. Madame la Secrétaire Générale. J'invite à mon tour l'honorable Rossi Bistoquet, membre du comité permanent des programmes spéciaux, à présenter la motion pour l'adoption du rapport de la session conjointe des comités permanents du Forum parlementaire de la SADEC et du caucus régional des femmes parlementaires. Je tiens au respect de la procédure, madame. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I beg to move that this House to adopt the report of the joint session of the standing committees of the forum held under the theme, the urgency of continued investments in child marriage in the COVID-19 context, the role of parliamentarians in advancing access to COVID-19 vaccines, medicines, and diagnostics laid on the table of the House of today. I thank you, Mr. President. Hmm? Bon, qui appuie la motion? Il y a, il y a un collègue qui appuie la motion. Le collègue de la Namibie, président Moudenda. Honorable président. Thank you very much. As, as a man, I second this motion. Okay. Your name, honorable. <laughs> From Namibia. <rire> Collègues, les noms, les noms. On voudrait bien inscrire les noms dans le procès verbal. Collègues, déclinez votre identité. Président, from Namibia. Merci, chers collègues. Wow, quoi. Merci, collègue. Alors, avec l'appui de cette motion, je donne la parole à l'honorable Rossi Istoke pour présenter les rapports. Thank you, Mr. President. 
as has become the norm drawn from the international best practice, the SADC Parliamentary Forum, in conjunction with its partners, hosted a joint session of standing committees and the Regional Women's Parliamentary Caucus on Thursday, 15th of April, 2021, under the following themes, the urgency of continued investments in child marriage in the COVID-19 context, and the, right, the role of the parliamentarians in advancing access to COVID-19 vaccines, medicines, and diagnostics. Given the global Is prevalence, given the global prevalence of the COVID-19 pandemic, it was only benefiting that the focus of the joint session to be on the- Apologies, um, Honorable Bisco, Bisco, okay. Honorable President, there's a hand from Honorable Daud Ndiweni from Zimbabwe. I'm assuming it's a point of order. We honorable Zimbabwe. Thank you, Mr. President. Can I go ahead with my point of order? Vous avez la parole, cher collègue. Thank you, Mr. President. Just uh, a while ago, you made a ruling that in the interest of time, we should go to recommendations on these reports. So I was wondering if we could do the same on the reports that are following. Thank you. Exact, cher collègue. Nous, nous présenter brièvement les problèmes, puis on passe aux recommandations. Exact. Motion adoptée. Vous avez la parole, honorable Rossi. Yes. Synthèse, et puis vous passez. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. That is what I was going to do. I was just going to go through the introduction, the objectives, and then the recommendation. Will that suit the assembly, the virtual assembly? The plenary session? I think so. Mr. President, should I proceed? Oui, vous avez la, la okay, parole. I'm Wait, I'm just I'm just doing the introduction. I'm just doing the introduction to give the gist of what the papers is all about, and then I'll go through the objectives of the sessions and the recommendations. Thank you, Mr. President. So, in, in that areas, um, it was also benefiting that the focus of the joint session be on the COVID nineteen pandemic and attendance issues. Indeed, the forum and its partners could not have picked on a more relevant and timelier theme given the shocking increase in cases of early and unintended pregnancies and child marriages during the subsistence of the COVID-19 pandemic in the region. For example, in Malawi, for example, the Ministry of Gender had recorded over 40,000 teenage pregnancies within a space of six months between March and April 2020, over 5,000 girls have dropped out of school in Zimbabwe in 2020 due to unintended pregnancies, while between 15,000 to 16,000 were recorded in Zambia annually. Projections by the United Nations Population Fund, the UNFPA, in April 2020 showed that the COVID-19 would disrupt efforts to end child marriage potentially resulting in an additional 13 million child marriage taking place globally between 2020 and 2030 and could otherwise have been averted. Given these shocking statistics, it was both urgent and imperative for the region 
to continue investing in the fight against child marriages, which had been worsened by the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, the objectives of the session was mainly to explore and raise awareness to the members of the forum on the impact of COVID-19 on the efforts to end child marriages into the region, raising awareness and strengthening the knowledge of the members of the forum through showcasing of the weight to weight uh, videos. Thirdly, to provide an opportunity to members of the forum to interact and share with their counterparts on the implementation of the child marriage related laws in their respective countries. Fifth, fifth, to share with members of the forum the progress that has been made by some of the SADC member states in efforts to review, revise, and install progressive intellectual property, patent laws, and national policies, and to provide an opportunity to members of the forum to interact and share with their counterparts on the role they are currently playing and can play to improve access to COVID-19 therapeutics in their respective countries. So I will now go to the recommendations, Mr. Speak, Mr. Chairperson, Mr. President. Now, therefore, the joint session of the standing committees of the SADC Parliamentary Forum recommended the following to the 49th Plenary Assembly to the Forum. That one, the 49th Plenary Assembly of the Forum calls upon member states to integrate child marriage in the COVID-19 response and recovery plans to the fullest extent possible. Number two, SADC parliamentarians must make sure of the SADC model law on eradicating child marriage and protecting children already in marriage as a benchmark and protecting children as a benchmark in improving national regula regulations or legislations to protect the girl child against a child marriage. Thirdly, SADC parliamentarians may ensure that sufficient resources are allocated to the fight against child marriage to adopt adequate budgetary allocation. Number four, lobbying and advocating um, advocacy efforts against child marriage must be targeted after the traditional and religious leaders, parents and guardians, particularly parents in the rural access who do not seem to appreciate the intrinsic value of educating the girl and the girl child and adopt instead to marry them off as a means to emancipate the family. Number five, SADC members of parliament must advocate for the development of legislation or policies that facilitate access to medicine and remove barriers to access. Number seven, parliamentarians must push governments to develop national intellectual property policies that encompass the regulation of all international property rights in the member states. Last but not least, Mr. President, the 49th Plenary Assembly of the Forum implores the SADC region to take advantage of the leeway granted by the TRIPS flexibilities to develop a regional pharmaceutical hub to enhance access to medicine by the poor and the vulnerable groups. Mr. President, I beg to move. Merci, Honorable Rossi pour cette brillante présentation et si concise. Merci. Je vais maintenant permettre à la personne qui appuie la motion, l'honorable Vipakouje. Muharukwa, Honorable Muharukwa, thank you. Battre de la Puya la Motion. I believe the president has, has uh, pronounced the name correctly, like the, like the interpreter. Thank you very much. 
Now, in that of the time, uh, Mr. President, honorable members, I will try and be as brief as possible and whiz through my statement uh, or summarize my statement as such. Honorable members, I rise to support the report so ably tabled by the Honorable Bistoki. It is of cardinal importance when we hear the numbers of young ladies impregnated whilst at school in Zimbabwe and in, 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 Zimbabwe, in, in Zambia. For men in the Sadek peers, for Sadek parliamentarians and African parliamentarians to raise our voice. For these girls do not get pregnant on their own. I would tend to believe 110 times or percent of the times there is always a man behind that pregnancy. That is why it is important that men must rise. Equally, uh, Mr. President, the need for member states to integrate the child marriage in the COVID-19 response and recovery plan to the fullest extent possible cannot be overemphasized. Considering that the incidences of child marriages in the region are still rampant, therefore there is a need to integrate the matter into the response mechanism for, for emerging issues like COVID-19 pandemic. As a child of two grandmothers who were married off to their husbands at a very young age, as a child of a community, this is now being myself, where this practice is still practice, it is important for one to raise one's voice against child marriage and the, all the practices that goes with it. For it cuts short the future of young women. For it infringes on the human rights of a woman to choose who to love. It is not a woman issue only to raise. It is for us to raise and advocate. It is also important that we don't just speak about it when we are at political rallies, when we are sitting on international forums. It is important that our parliaments, when we sit in our national parliaments, we advocate for the allocation of sufficient funds to lobby or to, or to, or to all the machinery of the lobby against this practice. Through this, being a culturalist, being a person who is deeply rooted in, in my culture, one is not necessarily saying that these practices were devoid of relevance back then. But the question is, is child marriage still relevant today? I would beg to say it is not. For the social safety nets that it provided in yesteryear are not is not needed today because it is catered for in many other ways. Honorable Speaker, uh, Honorable Members, Honorable President, let me leave the issue of the child marriage there. We are faced with a pandemic. I want to just briefly touch on the issue of intellectual property. Africa and SADC is rich with knowledge. We are endowed with natural resources that we can use in many ways, including medicine. It is incumbent on national parliaments to protect those who possess this knowledge. Two examples that I want to use. Namibia, we have various plants. One of them in my vernacular we call the Chingangwe, uh, which is, uh, yes. It's a medicine that is used for many other things. And I must say, from a personal perspective, I had the COVID-19 virus in December. Uh, this is the medicine that I took, of course, including with others. And I believe when I started taking this, my condition improved. Now, this medicine or this plant is used for so many other things in the Republic of Namibia in terms of the health of individuals. What happened a few years back is that Americans came to Namibia, saw this product, 
Uh, and then they took seeds. Now they are planting this product in America. Whereas had we had the protection of this plant and the knowledge of how it is used and registered relevant patents to protect our knowledge, this indigenous knowledge would have indeed not just healed our people as Africans, but it would have helped us to enrich. It would have helped us to trade accordingly with the Western, with the Western world. As a result, Honorable President, I support and second the motion. Thank you very much. Merci, cher collègue. Merci pour ce soutien. Avec ce soutien, cher collègue, j'ouvre le débat sur la motion. Les membres qui souhaitent intervenir doivent se les signaler en levant la main. Et je vous rappelle également, pour des raisons de précision, l'enregistrement du procès verbal, vous êtes tenu de communiquer votre nom, votre pays, une fois que vous avez la parole. Chacun a quatre minutes. Merci, collègues. Faites-vous inscrire si vous désirez intervenir. Honorable President, there's a hand from the Namibia delegation, another hand from Botswana delegation, and Zimbabwe, Honorable Tombozani Mohadi. Those are the three raised hands that I see for now. Botswana aussi? Oui, oui, monsieur. Oui. Namibi, Botswana, Zimbabwe. D'accord. Namibi, vous avez la parole. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm Paula Cooper from Namibia. Mr. President, allow me to also support the joint session of SADAPIA Standing Committees of RWPC report, and the motion is moved by Honorable Bistu Kuwait. Mr. President, the themes, and I quote, the agency of continued investment in the COVID-19 context, quote unquote, and the role of parliamentarians in advancing access to COVID-19 vaccines, medicines, and diagnostics are befitting at a time that our nations and the world are facing the, this pandemic. Firstly, allow me to thank the forum for the efforts put into developing the modern law. And I hope and pray that we as nations will work tirelessly towards fully domesticating it into our respective legislations to once and for all eradicate child marriages. Secondly, Mr. President, honorable members, we as leaders and representatives of the people who voted us into these positions need to take a stand and pull our resources together collectively as a region to ensure that our citizens have adequate access to COVID-19 medical care and support, starting from testing, vaccines, medicines, infrastructures, isolation facilities and quarantine facilities, ventilators, oxygen, education, and all that is needed to fight this as a region. In conclusion, Mr. President, honorable members, I fully agree with the second of the motion for sufficient budgetary allocation and would also encourage that we source additional funding 
from our social partners to supplement those budgetary allocations. With these few words, I support the motion. And I thank you. Merci, chers collègues. Les collègues du Botswana, vous avez la parole. Thank you, Mr. President. Once again, my name is uh, Honorable Paulson Majeha from Botswana. Um, Mr. President, I stand to support this uh, important motion, which has come at the right time post um, <coughs> COVID era. Mr. President, I think when it comes to such issues, as a region, we must stand up together and find ways of um, protecting our children or our people. We must have such a modern law, which will make it easier for the region to know what is happening from one country to another. And some of the, these states, uh, they've gone beyond what we are now. Uh, if you see these um, cases uh, of uh, uh, violence, um, child marriages, et cetera, et cetera, you find that they've got specialized courts which are specifically dealing with uh, such cases, which is a, a milestone uh, towards going to the right direction. The other thing uh, which I support this uh, model law looking at is the issue of uh, medicine. Uh, not only looking at the COVID-19 as we are currently faced with that challenge, but uh, we've got the uh, other social ills which uh, affects our region or even the whole uh, world. So as a region, we must make it a point that maybe in the future as well, Mr. President, we must have a, a common way of doing a, a such challenges, like uh, contributing as a region, so that um, if we vaccinate people from Lesotho or from Namibia alone, leaving the Botswana and the Zimbabwe, we will not have done anything because uh, inter-border, we are one people. So we need just to make sure that the, the medications will support our region. By so doing, I think we can achieve something for the betterment of our people at uh, once. And uh, e education, uh, I think, that's the time now for all these programs, which we see that uh, they can make our region uh, take in the good direction. As a member state, we introduce some of these uh, education um, modules to our countries, especially so that people can understand. Taking, for example, the issue of uh, uh, child marriages and uh, the barrier of cultural activities. I think it's now time to look at those things and uh, try to lie with one another and help uh, our sister countries yeah. pertaining these issues. By so saying, Mr. President, I support the, this important motion. Thank you. Zimbabwe. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. President. I also rise to <laughs> add my voice to this important, uh, important motion put forward this August House. Mr. President. So the, 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 the monitoring, the monitoring is being done. Should I start again? Okay, monitoring. I will start. I will start again. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I just want to add my voice to this important motion, which has been put uh, okay. in this August House, Mr. President. Shutting down of economies and and they stay at home orders have caused an unspoken and a damaging effect of the spike in child marriages. The pandemic has managed to disrupt the efforts made by countries to end child marriages. And it is estimated 13 million girls would be would be forced into early marriages between 2020 and 2030. Mr. Par Mr. President, the role of parliament <laughs> is to strengthen monitoring mechanisms to prevent child marriages. Have policies aimed at improving girls' educational attainment, health, as well as increased earnings have decision-making power and control over their productive rights. Mr. President, in 2016, the Con Constitutional Court of Zimbabwe ruled that child marriages are unconstitutional. So there's need <clears throat> for us as parliaments to encourage people or parliamentarians to have awareness meetings with people in the, to create awareness to the people so that if every, each and everyone should not be left behind, they should know the consequences that follow after these child marriages, because they are not all who are going to be married. Most of these children will suffer because they will have left school and they will be carrying babies maybe who do not even have fathers to look after them. So this is a very important motion. I so support. I thank you, Mr. President. Merci, chers collègues. Il n'y a plus d'intervenants. Plus d'intervenants. Merci, chers collègues. Je repasse la parole à l'honorable Bistoquette pour rencontrer les préoccupations exprimées par les différents collègues. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I'm so happy that uh, most of the members have uh, supported the motion because um, if we had read both reports, the previous one that I presented and uh, this one, there are linkages. The model law is just there to ensure effective implementation, especially when it comes to monitoring. Because indicators have been there, have been invented for the past, since 2008. But uh, we, to ensure all the countries are on par, the scorecards have been implemented. 
to monitor the model law. But over and above, I would like to reinstate to all members that um, in response to the uh, COVID-19 epidemic, um, I'm sure that most of all countries, all member states have envisaged so many issues, difficulties in regards to the, the violation of our rights, especially the rights of our population, namely the right to have a decent job. Most people have lost their jobs um, during the epidemic. The right to have the, 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 the health care, health care services, and of course with the uh, um, issues of the hospitals, um, uh, people access to the health facilities have not been denied, but the access is quite um, limited. The right to food, people cannot do what they should do in, in terms of our economic situation because of the COVID-19, unemployment. And of course, our children, we have been denied the right to education because the schools are closed with all the lockdowns and the rights to social economic welfare by the people of the, the SADC member states. And above all, Mr. Mr. President, I also uh, been uh, part, uh, going through, uh, our countries have gone through the same issues. The people have been denied even the, uh, the rights to the a decent burial, which has been, go, uh, a world, which is a worldwide issue. Therefore, Mr. President, I assumed member states have sort of related this motion to the current pandemic situation. And I thank all of you for approving and ensuring that uh, SADC region remains free of COVID-19, maybe in the next century. I thank you, Mr. President. Merci par ces réponses. Le débat sur ce rapport est clos. Je mets aux voix l'adoption du rapport de la session conjointe pour les comités permanents du Forum parlementaire de la SADEC et le caucus régional des femmes parlementaires. Y a-t-il d'objections? Il n'y a pas d'objection. En conséquence, l'Assemblée plénière adopte dûment les rapports de la session conjointe pour le comité permanent du forum parlementaire de la SADEC et le caucus régional des femmes parlementaires. Je vous remercie, chers collègues. Honorable président, chers collègues, honorable parlementaire, distingués invités, nous passons à présent au cinquième point à l'ordre du jour de notre session. J'invite Madame la Secrétaire générale de nous donner lecture du cinquième point à l'ordre du jour. Thank you, Honorable President. Notice of the motion for the adoption of the report of the Regional Women's Parliamentary Caucus. Merci. Cela étant, j'invite la présidente du caucus régional des femmes parlementaires l'honorable Anne-Marie Anne Mbilambangu 
à présenter la motion pour l'adoption du dit rapport. Merci, euh, Président, pour la parole m'accordée. Monsieur le Président, j'ai l'honneur de vous demander que cette Assemblée plénière procède maintenant à l'adoption du rapport du groupe parlementaire régional des femmes à la, 40, à la 49e session de l'Assemblée plénière du Forum parlementaire de la SADEC déposé depuis le 25 juin 2021. Merci, honorable. Chers collègues, qui appuient la motion? Qui appuie la motion? Les Losoto. Collègues, vous avez la parole. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'm Honorable Tapan Sita Mosena from Lesotho. I'll be seconding the motion, Mr. President. Thank you. Merci, cher collègue. Par cet appui, je donne la parole à l'honorable Anne-Marie Bilambangu pour présenter les rapports. Honorable, vous avez la parole. Merci, Président. Monsieur le Président, le groupe parlementaire régional des femmes, guidé par son mandat, lui conférait en vertu de l'article 40 alinéa 2 du règlement intérieur du Forum parlementaire de la SADEC, a convoqué sa réunion statutaire virtuelle en date du 17 juin 2021 à l'occasion des réunions de comité permanent, permanent du Forum parlementaire de la SADEC en préparation de la 48e, 49e session de l'Assemblée plénière sous les thèmes « Période post-Covid-19 dans la région de la SADEC, réponse aux besoins de femmes dans un contexte de défis multipliés ». Honorable Président, je vais essayer aussi de faire un exercice, comme l'a fait euh, ma collègue euh, Rosine. Trois points étaient inscrits à l'ordre du jour. Il s'agit de la présentation et délibération sur les données des pays sur les, les violences basées sur le genre depuis mars 2021. Présentation sur les résultats découlant de l'impact du COVID-19 sur l'égalité de genre et l'autonomisation des femmes en Afrique de l'Est et Australie. Présentation sur le vaccin anti-COVID-19, responsabilité politique pour assurer la sécurité et l'accès. Concernant le premier point, quatre pays ont exposé sur les présentations et les délibérations sur les données des pays sur les violences basées sur le genre depuis mars. Il s'agit de l'ESETO, Botswana, Zimbabwe et la RDC. La LESETO a partagé son expérience sur le fait que le LESETO a connu un accroissement dans les cas de violences basées sur le genre depuis mars 2020. Elle a signalé que la COVID-19 a eu d'incidence sur les violences basées sur le genre et ces cas ont été connus grâce aux médias officiels, privés et sociaux. Le ministère de la Santé collabore avec la police pour intervenir et aider à résoudre les cas de violence basées sur le genre. Les parlementaires ont été convoqués pour libérer pour délibérer sur le projet de la loi contre la violence qui est maintenant au niveau de la commission pour examiner. B, le Botswana. À Botswana, le COVID-19 a causé beaucoup de chômage qui, à son tour, a été contributeur majeur 
à la recrudescence des violences basées sur le genre. Le ministère de la, de la Défense, par exemple, a introduit des cours de sensibilisation à l'égalité des sexes dans les écoles de police, ainsi que des programmes de formation relatifs à la création de points focaux pour des problèmes de sexe dans les postes de police. Le ministère, le ministère du genre a mis en, a mis en œuvre une formation sur le genre et a élaboré la stratégie nationale pour mettre fin aux violences basées sur le genre. Il s'est efforcé à intégrer les violences basées sur le genre dans les droits coutumiers au niveau des chefs locaux et traditionnels dans les zones rurales. Le Parlement, à son tour, s'est efforcé de mettre en pratique des lois et recommandations qu'un budget sur l'égalité des sexes soit mis en œuvre au niveau national et local et que le gouvernement travaille en étroite collaboration avec les organisations de la société civile. Le Zimbabwe, à son tour, le COVID-19 a fait accroître les violences basées sur les genres au Zimbabwe à la suite du confinement et des restrictions de mouvement qui en découlent n'ont pas permis de signaler les cas de violence basées sur le genre. Grâce, grâce à la police et les organisations de la société civile, qui est donc leur partenaire, ont pu avoir des données sur les violences basées sur le genre. Donc, les violences basées sur le genre se sont accrues à 70% au niveau des Zimbabwe. La RDC, le président de la République de la RDC a préconisé des politi la politique de zéro violence concernant les temps de violence basés sur le genre en RDC et le débit des campagnes basées sur, le, basées sur briser le silence en 2019 impliquant les organisations de, de la société civile. Le ministère de la Justice et l'Armée a été mis en place pour traduire en justice tous les, tous les militaires qui ont commis des crimes sexuels dans l'ordre, dans les cadres plutôt du conflit armé. Un aspect important de lutte contre les violences basées sur les gens en RDC, c'est la réhabilitation et la réintégration dans la société de victimes, des anciens prisonniers et les soldats. Des chirurgies, des chirurgies de reconstruction générale à la réintégration économique sur le marché du travail. Lutte contre les violences basées sur les genres en RDC a été le mélange de réussite et de défis. Au niveau de l'Assemblée nationale, une loi a été votée au niveau du Parlement contre les violences sexuelles et qui protège en même temps les enfants. La deuxième présentation. Le deuxième point à y faire, sur les présentations et les délibérations sur les données des pays sur les violences basées sur les genres depuis 2019. Excusez-moi, je suis revenu sur le premier point. Le deuxième point a été à la présentation sur les résultats des couleurs de l'impact de COVID-19 sur l'égalité des genres et l'autonomisation des femmes en Afrique de l'Est et australe par, présenté par le FINUA. En ce qui concerne ces deuxième points, je m'en vais vous lire les recommandations qui s'en est sorties. Les principales conclusions et recommandations pour chaque domaine d'intérêt de l'étude sont les suivantes. 1. En ce qui concerne la gouvernance, la plupart des pays avaient plusieurs, avaient plusieurs mesures d'ordre général visant la protection sociale et la réduction des chocs économiques, mais très peu de mesures politiques d'intervention visant spécifiquement les femmes. 
Les recommandations soulignent la nécessité de produire et d'utiliser des données et des statistiques spécifiques au genre. Pour ce faire, il faudrait donc il, faut, il faudrait donc effectuer plus de recherches sur divers, divers aspects liés aux gouvernances et au développement dans la région. Le point 2, la deuxième recommandation, concerne considération socio-économique. L'étude a révélé que le COVID-19 augmentait la probabilité pour les femmes et les jeunes filles de vivre dans l'extrême pauvreté. Pour contrer cette situation, l'étude recommande de relier le genre, en particulier les femmes, aux opportunités d'emploi. L'étude recommande également de prêter attention aux leçons qui peuvent, qui peuvent être tirées de la pandémie du COVID-19 et d'intensifier les efforts pour étendre la couverture des, des, des inclusions sur les femmes. L'étude recommande enfin de poursuivre les efforts pour renforcer l'accès des femmes et des jeunes à l'éducation et à la formation professionnelle. L'utilisation du temps. Troisième point, l'utilisation du temps. Les termes utilisation du temps se réfèrent aux différents temps consacrés au travail des soins non rémunérés. Pendant la pandémie, beaucoup de femmes ont été contraintes à des travaux de soins non rémunérés en étant confinés à domicile pour s'occuper des familles et des proches parents malades. Le quatrième point a concerné la recommandation, c'est au niveau des services de la santé et des soins sanitaires. Tu dois examiner l'accès et la qualité des services de santé, même si l'accès des femmes et des hommes aux, aux services a été affecté, par la pandémie, l'étude a révélé que les femmes étaient touchées de manière disproportionnée. La principale recommandation est qu'il qu doit y avoir un investissement accru dans la santé maternelle et infantile, la santé sexuelle et reproductive, ainsi que dans les services des personnes handicapées et des groupes vulnérables. Le cinquième point a concerné la recommandation a trait à l'éducation. Le COVID-19 a exposé et exacerbé les inégalités existantes entre les populations rurales et urbaines, les riches et les pauvres, et l'impact très spécifique des fermetures des écoles sur les jeunes filles. La période a vu une recrudescence des violences domestiques de l'exploitation sexuelle, des mariages précoces, des, des mutilations d'organes génitaux féminins, une augmentation des travaux domestiques et des soins non rémunérés et la pression de contribuer économiquement aux revenus des ménages. L'étude recommande les transferts en espèces, des bourses et autres incitations pour que les filles continuent à aller à l'école et les programmes d'études ciblant les intérêts des filles et l'éducation sexuelle pour les protéger de l'exploitation sexuelle. Il est également important de permettre aux écoles d'orienter au mieux les filles vers l'âge adulte. Le sixième point, les recommandations ont trait à la violence basée sur le genre. L'étude a tenté de mesurer les sentiments de sécurité dans le ménage, les sentiments que les violences basées sur le genre avaient augmenté et les pourcentages de personnes qui connaissent quelqu'un qui avait été victime de violences basées sur le genre. Chez les femmes comme chez les hommes, les chiffres étaient similaires et dans l'ensemble, les chiffres étaient élevés. L'étude a également révélé que plus de femmes que des hommes pensent que la violence basée sur le genre, c'est un problème important. L'étude recommande de poursuivre les plaidoyers autour de la prévention et des services de violence basés sur le genre et augmenter la disponibilité d'espace et des mécanismes sur, qui s'occupent des victimes et survivants de la violence basée sur le genre. Le troisième point, le troisième point a, 
a eu trait à la présentation sur les vaccins anti-COVID-19, responsabilité politique pour assurer l'immunité et l'accès. Je m'en vais seulement vous lire les recommandations. L'honorable Trou a commencé par déclarer que le continent plaidait pour que les vaccins populaires dissuadent le développement de la partie du vaccinal. Les plaidoyers exigeaient qu'une fois qu'un vaccin sûr et efficace est disponible gratuitement pour tout le monde, il soit produit rapidement. Les plaidoyers exigeaient un, les, un les partager, les partages obligatoires de toutes les technologies liées au COVID-19 ainsi que l'intensification de la fabrication. Ce contexte a été une bonne opportunité pour l'État africain de collaborer et de proposer un vaccin pour les Africains. Malheureusement, un manque de responsabilité politique des maires. Cela a été très bien illustré par l'honorable Flou en déclarant qu'en 2021, conformément à la déclaration d'Abuja, les États africains ont promis de consacrer 15 de leur budget aux soins de santé primaire, ce qui n'est pas tout simplement le cas aujourd'hui. Recommandations. Quelques recommandations ont été, for ont été formulées à ce sujet. 1. Respecter les engagements des soins de santé primaires qui mettent l'accent sur la santé maternelle et infantile, la restauration et l'inclusion des groupes vulnérables et négligés. 2. Assurer la participation de la communauté à tous, à tous les aspects de la santé en particulier l'inclusion des femmes et des jeunes dans les groupes de travail sur la vaccination, garantissant l'éducation et le partage de toutes les informations disponibles pour dissuader l'hésitation vaccinale. 3. Investir dans la recherche, participer aux essais cliniques mondiaux pour dissuader les données nationales limitées et la collaboration limitée dans, les, dans la recherche, afin de ne plus créer, créer plus de terrains fertiles pour la naissance des théories du complot. Enfin, quatre, développer un fonds mondial COVID-19 dans lequel tous les pays contribuent un pourcentage de leur PIB pour aider à garantir que le vaccin COVID-19 soit fourni gratuitement à tous et partout. Pour conclure, il est important de souligner que l'humanité est toujours à la recherche de vaccins efficaces et sûrs, mais il est tout aussi important d'éduquer les communautés de la région de la SADEC afin de garantir l'adhésion. La société civile doit être engagée et financée pour garantir les droits humains et l'accès pour tous, en particulier les femmes. Le succès du Forum parlementaire de la SADEC comprend les plaidoyers pour la responsabilité politique qui adhère aux soins de santé primaire, l'investissement dans les systèmes de données, la collaboration dans la recherche sur le vaccin et l'investissement dans le financement national. Il n'est pas exagéré de viser à réunir les ministres de la Santé de la SADEC pour délibérer et déterminer l'accessibilité au vaccin et peut-être même une politique de vaccination COVID-19 de la SADE. J'ai dit, Président. Merci, Honorable Présidente, de cette brillante présentation. Je vais maintenant permettre à l'Honorable Mossena de débattre de l'appui à la motion. Honorable Moussena, vous avez la parole. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. President. I, I rise to second the motion on the report of the Regional Women's Parliamentary Caucus, so ably moved by the chairperson Honorable Bila Mbangu. 
Honorable President, I wish to add my voice to the concern raised by the mover regarding the urgency for women's needs and voices to be included in post-19 recovery strategies and the importance of research and accountability to guarantee access to COVID-19 vaccines for all, especially women. Mr. President, I echo the mover sentiments that failing to do so would mean a conscious and continued violation of the rights of women, which is a breeding ground for underdevelopment of societies in general. As the aspiring SADC parliament, we really must live by our commitment on gender equality. We need therefore to be seen by those we represent and the citizens of the region as being on the forefront, promoting gender equality and the inclusion and equal participation of all citizens, independent or irrespective of gender and age. Studies by experts and our partners have shown us that the well being and welfare of women, girls, and other vulnerable groups have been deeply affected by the pandemic. And we cannot miss this opportunity to make things better for all. We can and we must be more creative and daring in our approaches to ensure the protection and empowerment of women and girls in the region. We should not refrain from being audacious. I therefore welcome the proposal put forward by the mover of the motion for SADC Parliamentary Forum to devise innovative strategies on how it can continue to promote gender equality and inclusion at all levels and to mitigate the challenges being experienced by national parliaments, which have resulted from a feeble design and implementation of policies focusing on women's issues. The recommendation is to tackle these issues prag pragmatically without taboos or with the direct influence of outdated social norms. And um, this situation must be taken full advantage of. Mr. President, I second the motion. Thank you. Merci, collègue Mosena, pour le soutien à cette motion. À présent, je mets cette motion à débat. Les membres qui souhaitent débattre doivent l'indiquer en levant la main. Je voudrais vous rappeler aussi, chers collègues, que pour des raisons de précision de l'enregistrement du procès verbal, vous êtes prié de communiquer le nom, les pays, chaque fois que vous aurez l'occasion de prendre la parole. La durée de l'intervention est de quatre minutes. Merci, chers collègues. Vous pouvez vous faire enregistrer pour intervenir. Le débat est ouvert. Quel pays? Hmm? Seychelles. Hein? Il n'y en a pas. There's, there's a hand from... There's a hand from the Honorable Speaker, uh, Mozambique. There's another hand from Honorable Rosie Bistoke. I only see those two hands, Honorable President, for now. In that honor, the Honorable Speaker, Mozambique, and Honorable from the Seychelles. Alors, le président de la Mozambique, l'Assemblée nationale, vous avez la parole.
maybe it's from the delegation of Mozambique, honorable speaker. Thank there you. seems to be yeah. Mozambique. Okay. It's from the delegation of Mozambique. Thank you. Sim, não é propriamente a presidente da Assembleia, sou eu. Meu nome é... Indeed, Carlos. honorable speaker. Yes. Meu nome é... Dá-me a palavra, colega. Posso falar? Fala, fala. É, Posso meu falar? nome é Carlos Moreira Vasco, de Moçambique. Senhora presidente, senhor presidente, eu quero... Em primeiro lugar, saudar a proponente da moção, a digna deputada Bilambango, se pronunciei bem o nome, pela forma pragmática como a apresentou a moção. Em segundo lugar, quero manifestar o meu incondicional apoio à moção pela oportunidade pertinência e mérito, visto que falar da mulher é falar daquela, que, daquela pessoa que desempenha um papel bastante importante na sociedade moçambicana, nas nossas famílias e, sobretudo, naquilo que nós designamos por célula, que é a família, aquela que em muitos perfis familiares, acumula tantas funções, tais como as de trabalhadora, as de doméstica e até as maternas, ficando muitas vezes sobrecarregadas. É Moçambique, meu país, olha para este gênero como companheiro inseparável do homem, sem o qual não seria possível a sua existência e o seu desenvolvimento. Como exemplo disso, no nosso país, a mulher desempenha um papel muito importante e desempenha também várias funções nos diversos órgãos de soberania, desde o executivo, o legislativo e o judicial. E há um combate cerrado contra a violência criada no gênero. O parlamento moçambicano já aprovou uma lei sobre a família, onde o epicentro do legislador é a defesa do gênero, que é a mulher, neste caso particular. Por isso, eu apoio esta moção de forma incondicional para que seja aprovada, por ser também uh, um tema sempre atual e inesgotável. Finalmente, que quero propor a retirada da lista das presenças. Na lista das presenças consta o nome da senhora Arminda Ro Rosa, por achar que foi um lapso. No novo romano. No novo romano do, do relatório. Porque ela não é deputada, ela é funcionária parlamentar. Senhora Presidente, falei. Muito obrigado. Senhor Presidente. Senhor Presidente. <risos> Até escrevi, Senhora Presidente. <risos> Merci, Monsieur le Président. Merci, cher collègue. Les collègues de Seychelles, vous avez la parole. J'ai apprécié votre attachement à la lutte pour l'égalité entre les hommes et les femmes. Vous avez souligné l'importance des femmes dans la société. C'est important, chers collègues. Merci. Thank you very much, Mr. President. We have to promote, we have to support our women in the African countries. If we women do not support each other, who will? Because it is a man's world. Anyway, my contribution, I totally support the, uh, the motion presented by Madame Anne-Marie 
and uh, especially because uh, as a as a woman as a as a mother as a grandmother i totally support it because it is a it unites the family and uh, that is my main it sort of inclusiveness inclusivity of the family so my contribution were are as follows one in regards to um, uh, sexual reproductive health um, in uh, crisis. There is a package called the MISP, all the minimum initial service package for sexual reproductive health. That is uh, normally is a framework under the UNFPA, which has been in implementation, I think for quite a while. But since COVID-19 has presented a lot of issues a lot of uh, in relation to the families, especially to rural areas where the mothers, pregnant mothers, uh, needs the attention of the health serve, healthcare service uh, uh, professionals. And uh, it is quite crucial, which required, this package is quite crucial, which needs required um, uh, um, essential uh, response to sexual reproductive health needs uh, to the population, especially in humanitarian crisis. So I don't know whether this report or the committee can sort of relook at it um, since now we are into the pandemic and I don't think this pandemic will go uh, away in 2022, 24 or 25, but at least we should sort of uh, resurface or revamp this activity for women who are in needs of sexual reproductive health um, uh, services in rural areas. Secondly, I will support the, uh, the motion. And at the same time, probably uh, the standing committee should at least look at uh, um, Africa or the SADC region as a hub for research and best practices because normally we know that the European countries, the Western blocs, they are doing it, but we should now invest it into our own regional um, uh, countries in response to the COVID-19 epidemic in terms of treatment, vaccination, and even manufacturing vaccines uh, so that we can curb the epidemic. And currently we know uh, worldwide, and I know in Africa, because in Seychelles we are facing this issue, we have the anti-vaccinators, or we call them the, uh, the hesitant groups, who are not readily accepting the vaccination of COVID-19. And this hub will sort of provide advocacy um, frameworks or policies for us to ensure, especially when it comes to NGOs, to ensure that the population are being vaccinated against um, uh, the COVID-19 um, vaccines. And of course, for, for future pandemics or epidemics that may um, invade our small uh, regional space, which, which is the SADC region. Thank you, Mr. President. Merci. Merci. Il n'y a plus d'intervenants. Merci. Je passe la parole. Honorable President. Okay, sorry, there are no <laughs> interpretation. Je suis désolé. <laughs> There are no hands. D'accord. Merci. Il n'y a pas de main levée. Il n'y a pas de combat, faute de combattants. Alors, <laughs> merci. Donc, le... je passe la parole à l'honorable. Mbilambangu pour rencontrer les préoccupations de deux collègues qui sont intervenus. 
Merci beaucoup, Président, pour la parole. Je commence d'abord par l'honorable Carlos. Je voudrais lui dire merci infiniment pour les éloges qu'il m'a adressés. Et j'ai tout simplement constaté qu'il a plus parlé de contribution. Il a fait un constat par rapport au rôle de la femme dans, dans la société de la République diplomatique. Comment la femme accumule ses fonctions, comment elle peut concilier les, les, les travail, le ménage et, et tout ce qu'il a comme, comme rôle dans dans la famille. Effectivement, nous, les Africains, nous sommes habitués. Sinon, nous n'allons pas prétendre à une... Quand nous parlons de l'émancipation, c'est aussi savoir concilier tout, tout ce qu'il y a comme rôle de la femme au niveau de la maison, au niveau du travail. Donc, c'est un peu notre quoi à nous. Nous, au niveau du Congo, nous disons, bon, les genres, oui. Il faudrait que les femmes soient compétitives à ce qu'elles veulent, qu veulent faire comme, jouer comme rôle. Donc, merci beaucoup, euh, honorable Carlos, pour ces constats qui est du reste une réalité. Donc, nous sommes appelés à concilier notre rôle. Ce n'est pas, pas facile. Euh, de pouvoir concilier le tout, et, mais nous essayons de nous forcer, de nous efforcer hein, pour arriver euh, à jouer juste euh, l'équilibre. Ce que euh, nous demandons, euh, nous demandons que vous puissiez nous appuyer avec les lois genre au niveau du Parlement. Parce que souvent, euh, les lois pro-genre n'arrivent pas à atteindre l'unanimité dans la salle. Dans la plupart des parlements, vous allez constater que les hommes sont, sont majoritaires par rapport aux femmes. Alors, pour faire passer une loi euh, pro-genre, il faudrait vraiment l'accompagnement de nos pères, euh, de nos pères euh, hommes. J'ai constaté que vous êtes un homme genré. Je vais seulement vous demander hein, que vous puissiez continuer à nous appuyer dans le dans les, les lois qui sont pour elle, pour Jean. Bon, quant à ma collègue Rosine, je voudrais également euh, la, la remercier. Hein, son apport, c'est par rapport surtout au droit, euh, au droit de, des droits sur la santé maternelle et infantile. Effectivement, euh, c'est quand même un problème. Ça nécessite beaucoup de sensibilisation. Ça nécessite beaucoup de sensibilisation. Et nous devons inviter nos pays respectifs à consacrer un budget spécial par rapport à cette sensibilisation, surtout dans les milieux ruraux. Ces femmes adhèrent difficilement à, à suivre, par exemple, les vaccinations pendant des périodes prénatales. Et pendant des, des, des périodes euh, prénatales, disons prénatales, elles suivent difficilement les consultations médicales. C'est ce qui fait que nous continuons à enregistrer en Afrique le nombre élevé de mortalités infantiles. Donc, ce sont des choses auxquelles nous devons nous accrocher au niveau de nos, euh, de nos parlements respectifs pour que ces lois qui ont été votées par rapport à ça soient réellement appliquées. Nous constatons, nous, nous constatons aussi qu'il y a beaucoup de lois qui sont proposées, mais les problèmes se posent maintenant au niveau de l'application de ces lois. D'où nous, en tant que parlementaires, nous, en tant que euh, forum de la SADEC, nous sommes dans l'obligation de booster les propositions, nous sommes dans l'obligation d'inciter nos états respectifs pour que ces lois qui sont mises à notre disposition soient appliquées. Je pense que c'est voilà quelques, euh, un résumé, euh, mes réponses, ma réaction, en fait, 
par rapport à vos observations. Merci. Merci, honorable Anna-Marie Mbilambangu, pour ses réponses. Avant de soumettre aux voix l'adoption du rapport, je constate avec plaisir que mon collègue de Mozambique sort avec un diplôme. Vous êtes déclaré prongeant. Alors, nous, nous nous sommes mis de côté. Quelle discrimination! Voyez-vous, vous avez une médaille prongeant et le président Modenda et moi-même, nous sommes et les autres. Nous sommes mis de côté, courons pour que nous devenions tous prongeants. Là où il n'y a pas de femmes, il n'y a pas de vie. Voilà. Après ces réponses, je soumets aux voix l'adoption du rapport du caucus régional des femmes parlementaires. Y a-t-il d'objections, chers collègues Je crois qu'il n'y en aura pas. Hein? Il n'y en aura pas. Vraiment, il n'y a pas d'objection. L'Assemblée plénière adopte dûment le rapport du caucus régional des femmes parlementaires. Merci, chers collègues. Honorable président, chers collègues, Honorable parlementaire, distingués invités, nous passons au sixième point de l'ordre du jour. Je crois que c'est le dernier point de notre session. J'invite Madame la secrétaire générale à nous donner lecture de ce sixième point. Point. Thank you, Honorable President. Notice of motion for the adoption of the report of the Regional Parliamentary Model Laws Oversight Committee. Was I audible? Okay. Je vous ai suivi, uh, honorable Madame la Secrétaire Générale. Je donne la parole à mon tour à l'honorable Léon Toumba pour présenter sa motion. Je notif... Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je notifie qu'en ce jour, je demande que la 49e Assemblée plénière adopte le rapport du Comité parlementaire régional de surveillance des lois types. Merci. Merci. Qui soutient la motion? Quel collègue soutient la motion? President. Zimba okay. Zimbabwe Honorable President. Vous avez la parole, chers collègues.
You are not audible, Honorable Ndebele. Honorable oh. Ndebele, vous avez la parole. I second the motion, Honorable President. Vous avez la parole, collègue. Mm -hmm. Merci, collègue. Avec cet appui, je donne la parole à l'honorable Léon Toumba pour présenter le rapport. Merci, Monsieur le Président. J'en permets de faire comme cela a été souhaité, c'est-à-dire en lisant un filigrane et par contre euh, euh, lire plutôt les, les recommandations. Exposé sur le rôle des parlementaires dans la domestication des lois, avec un accent spécial sur les lois types de la SADEC, sur le VIH SIDA et les élections, ça c'est le professeur Obuyane Kei Dingake. Le docteur Dingake a fait une présentation informative sur le rôle des parlementaires dans la domestication des lois types. Les points saillants de sa présentation sont présentés ci-dessus. Que la vision de la SADEC de l'intégration de l'harmonisation éventuelle des lois subirait un sérieux revers sur le fossé de la mise en œuvre n'était pas comblé. Le forum parlementaire SADEC était en pleine évolution et se dirigeait vers un organisme supranational doté des pleins pouvoirs d'élaboration des lois types. Une aspiration pleinement acceptée par les parlements nationaux et peut-être moins par les exécutifs euh, nationaux. Que l'échec ou la réticence des parlements nationaux à adopter des lois types du forum suggère que l'institution vit peut-être en avance sur son temps. Qu'il est nécessaire de tenir compte du fait que les États sont souverains et que pour que l'introduction des lois étrangères dans leur système juridique soit acceptée, l'approbation des souverains par l'intermédiaire de leur Parlement est nécessaire. Que les systèmes juridiques des États membres de la SEDEC étaient soit dualistes, soit monistes, ce qui avait une incidence sur la domestication des lois. Que les lois types sont formulées dans un, temps, dans un contexte flexible qui permet aux États membres de les adapter à leur système juridique et que même en l'absence de, domi de domestication, les lois types peuvent devenir des lois non contraignantes de, de nature persuasive. Je vais directement aux résolutions du comité. Le comité parlementaire régional de surveillance des lois types du forum parlementaire de la SEDEC s'est réuni virtuellement le 9. Rappelant son mandat, tel que défini dans l'article 16, de la constitution du forum était d'encourager la, domestica la domestication et la mise en œuvre des diverses lois types en tenant compte du fait que la plupart des systèmes juridiques des États membres de la SEDEC sont dualistes par nature, ce qui exige que le droit international soit adopté par la législation nationale, par le biais des législatures nationales souveraines pour être appliquées et mises en œuvre dans les juridictions locales. Conscient de la mise en œuvre complète des lois types par les États membres de la SADEC n'est pas encore achevée, bien que des progrès sensibles aient été réalisés grâce aux diverses initiatives du Forum, telles que le modèle de surveillance sensible du au genre, le Parlement, le Parlement des femmes aux Seychelles ou les activités dans le cadre du projet SRHR. Notons que la vision de la SADEC de l'intégration et l'harmonisation éventuelle des lois subirait un sérieux revers si le fossé de la mise en œuvre n'était pas comblé et que la coopération régionale dépend fortement du fait que tous les États membres de la SADEC aient des lois nationales cohérentes et qui fournissent la même norme de traitement ou une norme équivalente aux citoyens de la SADEC qui traversent les frontières d'un État à l'autre selon les principes de la libre circulation des personnes et de la main d'œuvre. Pleinement conscient que les États membres de la SADEC sont souverains et que pour que l'introduction des lois étrangères dans leur système juridique soit acceptée, l'approbation des souverains par le biais de leur par Parlement est nécessaire. Cela impliquerait la promulgation des lois au niveau national par le biais des processus parlementaires habituels et de leur publication. Notons en outre qu'à moins que les lois types ne soient domestiquées 
et que mises en œuvre, elles n'auront qu'une valeur, per qu valeur persuasive en tant que référence pour les États membres. Considérant que le format parlementaire SADEC est en pleine évolution et qu'elle se dirige vers un organisme supranational pardon, doté des pleins pouvoirs d'élaboration des lois type au fil de temps, une aspiration à laquelle adhèrent pleinement les parlements nationaux, mais un travail continu et encore nécessaire pour que les lois type influencent le processus législatif du Parlement. Étant donné que les lois type sont formulées dans un texte flexible qui permet aux États membres de les adapter à leur système juridique et que même en, en l'application, les lois qui peuvent devenir des normes non contraignantes, mais de nature persuasive. Notons que la loi type sur l'éradication de mariage des enfants et la protection des enfants déjà mariés était une réponse à une résolution de la 35e session de l'Assemblée plénière du Forum qui appelait à des efforts concertés pour éradiquer les mariages d'enfants dans la région de la SADEC et était le produit d'un long processus de consultation soutenu pour n'être finalement adopté que par la 39e session de l'Assemblée plénière à Etsuatini en 2016. L'Union le rôle des parlementaires en général et des députés du Forum parlementaire en particulier pour assurer un contrôle efficace en tenant l'exécutif responsable de la domestication de la loi type sur l'éradication des mariages d'enfants et la protection des enfants déjà mariés. Le comité parlementaire régional de surveillance des lois type a résolu de manière suivante. A apprécié et salué les domaines et activités prioritaires proposés par la, pour l'année 2021 tels qu'ils tel qu sont proposés. À cet effet, le comité a exprimé son désir de tirer des enseignements du processus de domestication des pays de la SADEC, indiqué dans son plan de travail, et de développer des outils de suivi, de suivi pertinent qui pourrait servir de support pour accélérer les processus dans les pays de la SADEC qui conduiraient à une domestication complète et satisfaisante des lois types élaborées par le Forum parlementaire SADEC. A mis en évidence le besoin urgent de prendre des dispositions pour que le nouveau mode de fonctionnement virtuel, conformément aux exigences de la pandémie mondiale de la COVID-19, afin d'assurer un fonctionnement sans faille du comité a souligné que la collaboration avec les différentes parties prenantes devrait être renforcée afin de consolider le cadre de partenariat entre les parties prenantes et de plaider en faveur d'une domestication progressive. A réitéré qu'une approche de collaboration avec les parties prenantes qui ont exprimé leur volonté de travailler avec le comité devrait être adoptée par le forum, car elle est susceptible de faire avancer le programme du comité en mettant un plus grand nombre de ressources pertinentes à la disposition des parlementaires qui participent à des initiatives de domestication. A affirmé que les personnes les plus touchées doivent être associées à l'effort de domestication de la loi type sur le VIH SIDA et de la loi type sur l'éradication des mariages d'enfants et des mariages précoces afin de garantir la légitimité du processus. A souligné que les outils de suivi de la transposition des lois type sont nécessaires à long terme afin de rassembler une base de données et d'être en mesure d'identifier avec plus de précision les lacunes de la mise en œuvre et les, et les domaines de réforme. Monsieur le Président, je propose que ce rapport soit adopté par la 40e, 49e Assemblée plénière. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Merci, chers collègues. Merci pour cette brillante présentation est très concise. Merci, chers collègues. Je vais permettre à l'honorable Anel Ndebele de débattre de l'appui à la motion. Honorable Ndebele, vous avez la parole. Uh. Thank you, Honorable President, for the opportunity to second this motion. In doing so at the outset, Honorable President, I wish to note that without implementation, model laws remain paper tigers with no tangible outcome for the intended beneficiaries. If that were to be the case, 
all the work that goes into the development of model laws would come to naught. In fact, it will be a blatant waste of resources. The cost of inaction in terms of domestication and implementation of model laws is therefore immeasurable. In the premises, the work of this committee provides a critical cope in the process of actualizing the ultimate purpose of the model laws, which is to foster development and improve the status of the people of the Sadiq region. Mr. President, allow me to also briefly elaborate on the need for the committee to collaborate closely with various stakeholders in the course of its work. As members are aware, no. as legislators, we do not necessarily speak for ourselves, but for the people we represent. Therefore, it is only right that we consult the people we speak for on a regular basis on various issues affecting them. One effective way to do this is to engage meaningfully with various stakeholders and have a cross-pollination of ideas. This will open the minds of the legislators to new perspectives and give us new impetus to speak for the people of the region. It will also lend credence to our role as representatives and give legitimacy to our work. In light of this, the call by the committee for enhanced collaboration with various stakeholders is timely and must be deliberately followed up. In conclusion, let me end by reiterating the chairperson's call for inclusiveness in the domestication and implementation of model laws. In particular, groups and individuals directly affected by the issues addressed in the model laws must always be accorded an opportunity to interact with the legislators. This will enable the legislators to have a more intimate understanding of the scope and impact of the issues under discussion. After all, as noted earlier, we are mere representatives. Let us leave no one behind as we march resolutely towards domestication and implementation of model laws. With these few words, Mr. President, I beg to second the motion and I thank you. Merci, cher collègue. Après ce, ce soutien à la motion, je soumets ce rapport à débat. Les collègues qui souhaitent débattre doivent l'indiquer en levant la main, comme d'habitude. Nous voulons également vous rappeler que chaque fois quand vous aurez à prendre la parole, vous êtes appelé à communiquer votre nom ainsi que les pays pour permettre un enregistrement du procès verbal correct. Le temps de la parole est de quatre minutes pour chaque intervenant. Collègues, vous pouvez vous faire enregistrer maintenant pour ceux qui veulent intervenir.
Ils appellent. Hmm? C'est peut-être l'effet de la fatigue. Il n'y a plus d'intervenants There is a hand from Honorable Rosie Bistroke from the Seychelles. I'm scouting for more names, Honorable President, before. I finally submit the last names, but it appears that is the only hand that is up for now, Honorable President. Thank you. Merci. Honorable Rossi, you. vous avez la Thank you, Mr. President. Um, uh, um, based on the presentation, well, I will sort of adopt and uh, Appreciate. I've appreciated the presentation, and I will give my full support to uh, the mover of the motion. But one thing is that it has been noted into the report that two countries have been identified for such programs, namely Zambia and Zimbabwe. I would like to know what about other countries, and what about the, the supports that will be given, knowing. Um, ensuring uh, whether it's quite feasible, what is the flexibility in regards to the implementation of the model laws in the SADC member states, especially uh, with, for countries with different um, cultures, um, different humanitarian principles, different religious beliefs, and different economic uh, situation. So this is my question before I support the uh, the motion. Thank you, Mr. President. Merci. Il n'y a plus d'intervenants. Je repasse la parole à l'honorable Léon Toumba pour rencontrer la préoccupation exprimée par la collègue. Je note euh, avec satisfaction ce qu'a dit la, la collègue, qu'il est d'abord important que nous puissions, nous, à notre niveau, c'est-à-dire les par parlements nationaux, nous puissions renforcer ces lois. Et quand ces lois seront renforcées, c'est alors qu'on peut les, 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 les transposer au niveau de la SADEC. Donc, je note cela avec satisfaction. Donc, c'est un travail, à mon avis, ce n'est pas un travail qui doit être fait par un seul pays, c'est un travail qui doit être fait par beaucoup de pays qui sont membres de la, de, de la SADEC. Voilà un peu ce que je peux dire. Il y a des éléments importants que j'ai trouvés dans ce, dans, dans ce rapport sur les enfants, sur les marais des enfants jeunes, mais aussi ceux qui sont majeurs. Donc, c'est à nous, parlementaires, de devoir travailler au niveau de nos parlements locaux. Quand on aura travaillé, c'est à ce moment-là que nous allons prendre cette expérience-là, la transposer au niveau de la salle. Voilà un peu ce que je peux dire en, en grosso modo. Merci. Merci, collègue, par ces réponses. Les débats sur les rapports sur l'examen est clos. Je mets aux voix l'adoption du rapport du comité parlementaire régional de surveillance de loi type. Y a-t-il d'objections Certainement, il n'y a pas d'objection. Il n'y a pas d'objection. Les rapports du comité parlementaire régional de surveillance de loi type est dûment adopté par l'Assemblée plénière. Je vous remercie. Si, chers collègues. Honorable président, chers collègues, honorable parlementaire, distingués invités, nous avons terminé le point inscrit à l'ordre du jour de la 49e session virtuelle de l'Assemblée plénière.
Permettez-moi par conséquent de prononcer mon discours de clôture. Honorable vice-président du Forum parlementaire de la SADEC, honorable président et chers collègues, honorable parlementaire, membre du Forum parlementaire de la SADEC, madame la secrétaire générale, distingués invités, mesdames et messieurs, je voudrais tout d'abord exprimer ma profonde reconnaissance et le grand plaisir que j'ai eu à présider et à participer à ma première assemblée plénière en tant que président du Forum parlementaire de la communauté de développement de l'Afrique australe. En mon nom et au nom du peuple congolais, la République démocratique du Congo, je souhaite exprimer notre gratitude pour l'opportunité qui, qui nous a été donnée de présider cet auguste forum et cette institution qui est la clé du tissu politique de la région de la SADEC. Au nom du Forum parlementaire de la SADEC, je souhaite remercier notre invité d'honneur, le président du Botswana, son Excellence, le président docteur Mongwechi Massisi, de nous avoir honoré de sa présence et de s'être engagé avec nous sur la zone de libre-échange continentale africaine. Je souhaite également remercier le Parlement du Botswana et féliciter en particulier le président de l'Assemblée nationale du Botswana, M. Padou Sekelemani, non seulement pour la qualité de l'organisation de cette Assemblée plénière, mais aussi pour avoir veillé au bon déroulement des travaux. Les interludes entre les réunions étaient remplies de vidéos informatives et divertissantes qui nous ont laissé en admiration devant les traditions du peuple du Botswana et nous ont fait, nous ont fait entendre, attendre avec impatience le jour où nous pourrons visiter physiquement ce beau pays. Nous vous sommes redevables, Monsieur le Président, ainsi qu'au peuple du Botswana, dans leur ensemble. Honorable Président, chers collègues, honorable parlementaire, distingués invités, le thème général sous lequel nous avons tenu cette plénière et été tiré parti de la zone de libre-échange continentale africaine pour la reprise économique post-Covid-19 en Afrique australe. Le rôle du Forum parlementaire de la SADEC et des parlements nationaux. Alors que je réfléchissais aux engagements de ces trois 
derniers jours, au cours de cette 49e Assemblée plénière, il devient évident que nous devrions faire beaucoup en tant que Parlement et parlementaire pour assurer la mise en œuvre des résolutions que nous avions prises sur diverses questions d'importance régionale et les préoccupations soulevées dans le rapport du comité exécutif, des comités permanents et du caucus parlementaire régional des femmes. Suite à nos discussions intenses de ces trois derniers jours, nous avons adopté de nombreuses résolutions qui nécessiteront que nous mettons tous, toutes les mains et toutes les ressources ensemble pour nous assurer que des mesures appropriées seront prises pour leur mise en œuvre. Parmi les résolutions que nous avons prises, nous appelons tous les États membres de la SADEC à éliminer les murs invisibles qui entravent la capacité de l'Afrique à accéder aux vaccins et à faire en sorte que chacun ait accès à ces médicaments qui peuvent sauver des vies. Nous implorons en outre les États membres de la SADEC de procéder rapidement à l'intégration du protocole de la SADEC sur la santé et de mettre en œuvre avec succès le programme pharmaceutique de la SADEC qui préconise la création de centres pharmaceutiques régionaux. Ces mesures contribueront grandement à réduire les inégalités d'accès aux médicaments et aux vaccins essentiels. En outre, nous appelons tous les parlementaires de la SADEC à demander à leurs gouvernements respectifs et aux autres acteurs impliqués dans la lutte contre la COVID-19 de prendre en compte le genre dans le cadre des campagnes de vaccination dans les régions de la SADEC en vue de l'amélioration de l'accès des femmes au vaccin. Honorable président, chers collègues, honorable parlementaire, membres de la SADEC, distingués invités, suite aux présentations éclairantes des personnes ressources que nous avons invitées à nous équiper sur les thèmes pendant le symposium, nous avons décidé, entre autres, d'appeler le gouvernement de la SADEC, en plus de la ratification de la zone de libre-échange continentale africaine, à domestiquer, à mettre en œuvre et à se conformer aux dispositions de l'accord de la zone de libre-échange continentale africaine. Nous implorons le gouvernement de la SADEC de créer délibérément et collectivement un environnement paisible et sûr pour leurs citoyens et de devenir un phare de paix tout en favorisant un environnement propice au développement du commerce régional. Nous exhortons tous les parlements nationaux, en collaboration avec le secrétariat du Forum parlementaire de la SADEC, à former les parlementaires sur leur mandat législatif et de contrôle afin d'assurer 
la mise en œuvre effective de la zone de libre-échange continentale africaine et de construire une région de la SADEC plus inclusive et équitable au-delà de la pandémie de COVID-19. Honorable Président, chers collègues, honorable parlementaires, distingués invités, nous encourageons en outre tous les parlementaires de la région de la SADEC à profiter pleinement de la zone de libre-échange continentale pour développer des programmes visant à donner aux femmes le moyen de participer pleinement au commerce et à faire en sorte que le commerce améliore les opportunités pour tous. Nous appelons également à une collaboration étroite entre le Parlement de la SADEC et le secrétariat de la zone de libre-échange continentale africaine, ainsi que d'autres parties prenantes, afin de s'associer aux femmes de la région de la SADEC pour promouvoir des politiques commerciales favorables aux femmes et pour sensibiliser aux défis auxquels les femmes sont confrontées dans la conduite du commerce, en particulier à travers nos frontières. En ce qui concerne les postes frontaliers à guichet unique, nous demandons instamment au gouvernement de la SADEC de faire preuve d'un leadership et d'un engagement fort dans le développement des infrastructures qui facilitent le commerce transfrontalier, comme les postes frontaliers à guichet unique et les routes, entre autres, afin d'améliorer la facilitation du commerce et de faire progresser l'intégration économique régionale. Honorable Président, chers collègues, Honorable parlementaire, membre de la SADEC, distingué invité. Conscient de l'importance de la technologie pour combler les lacunes, nous implorons le gouvernement de la SADEC de veiller à ce que les questions relatives aux technologies de l'information et de la communication soient gérées de manière adéquate par les parties concernées dans chaque poste frontalier à guichet unique avant le début des opérations, afin d'éviter toute perturbation des processus de facilitation du commerce. En outre, nous recommandons vivement au gouvernement de la SADEC à veiller dans les mesures du possible à ce que les agents frontaliers des pays impliqués dans un poste frontalier à guichet unique particulier soient soumis à une formation commune et à d'autres programmes de renforcement des capacités afin de fournir des services uniformes et professionnels aux commerçants et aux voyageurs. Nous pensons que des postes frontaliers à guichet unique, correctement et suffisamment équipés, joueront un rôle clé dans l'exploitation du tourisme intérieur à travers les frontières de nos pays. Par conséquent, nous encourageons les États membres de la SADEC à soutenir la mise en œuvre du visa unifié de la SADEC afin de faciliter la circulation du tourisme dans la région. Nous exhortons en outre les États membres de la SADEC à rationaliser les procédures de visa et d'immigration afin de garantir la circulation fluide 
de touristes dans la région. Nous appelons également le Parlement et les parlementaires de la SADEC à plaider en faveur d'une augmentation des allocations budgétaires au secteur du tourisme afin d'accélérer le redressement du secteur. Honorable président et chers collègues, honorable parlementaire membre de la SADEC, distingués invités, les résolutions de la 49e Assemblée plénière doivent conformément à l'article 6, alinéa 3 du règlement intérieur du Forum parlementaire de la SADEC, être soumises au secrétariat de la SADEC et aux ministères nationaux concernés par l'intermédiaire des parlements nationaux. En conclusion, je souhaite remercier la secrétaire générale, Madame Boemo Sekogoma, les secrétaires généraux de parlement nationaux, les secrétariats du forum parlementaire de la SADEC et tout son personnel, sans oublier tous les personnels de soutien des parlements de la région qui ont fait un travail remarquable pour que cette 49e Assemblée plénière soit un succès. Merci à vous tous, chers collègues, honorable président et honorable membre, pour votre présence et votre soutien. Jusqu'à notre prochaine rencontre, que Dieu bénisse la SADEC et tous ses pays membres. Je vous remercie. Honorable Président, et chers collègues, honorable parlementaire, membre de la SADEC, distingués invités. Ouais. Honorable secrétaire général, je vous donne la parole si vous avez un mot ou un autre collègue qui a un mot à dire pourra aussi prendre la parole. Hmm? Oui, je vous donne la parole avant de clôturer pour les annonces. Vous avez la parole, honorable secrétaire général. Thank you. Thank you, honorable president. I have nothing to say save to appreciate uh, the wisdom and the support of the plenary assembly and to commit that the secretariat will be committed to ensuring that we forever um, deliver as expected by this August plenary assembly session. We will improve on our elegance and efficiency regarding harmonizing the reports as indicated. I thank you, Honorable President, and we appreciate your leadership. Thank you. Merci. Un collègue qui souhaite aussi intervenir. Madame Rossi, vous voulez parler? <laughs> Honorable président, no, chers collègues. Really, no, not really, Mr. President, but I would like to thank the, uh, the assembly itself and um, being a new member of the uh, um, uh, 
assembly. I have enjoyed and uh, uh, ensure that I've uh, sort of put my experience into the, the first assembly that I've accepted, this meeting that I've attended. And I'm sure my participation, my um, inputs have been uh, accepted uh, by uh, other colleagues and other honorable members. And I thank you, Mr. President, for your leadership and the SADC Secretariat. And above all, I should thank the Seychelles delegation who attended the meetings under the leadership of our um, speaker, Mr. Roger Massien. Thank you very much. Merci. Un collègue qui souhaite intervenir pouvait prendre la parole à tour de rôle. Merci, chers collègues, honorable président, chers collègues, honorable parlementaire, membres de la SADEC, distingués invités. Nous sommes arrivés au terme de nos travaux pour la 49e Assemblée plénière. Nous sommes arrivés au terme et nous attendons la 50e session de l'Assemblée plénière qui aura lieu à Lusoto. Ça sera le tour du Parlement de Lusoto de nous accueillir à une date qui sera fixé ultérieurement. Ceci étant, chers collègues, merci encore une fois pour le travail que nous venons de réaliser. Nous l'avons fait avec beaucoup d'enthousiasme. J'ai beaucoup apprécié les interventions des uns et des autres. Chacun de vous et chacun de nous a été à sa place à ces 49e Assemblée plénière. Merci. Que la SADEC aille de l'avant. Je vous remercie. La séance est clôturée. À la prochaine, chers collègues. Que Dieu vous bénisse et vous protège. À vous, nos compatriotes, nos électeurs, à nos présidents, à nos collègues parlementaires, et à nos familles respectives, merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, IT. IT kindly terminate. Thank you.